shit. <laughs> can I still smoke even with this thing on there? <laughs> I don't even know if y'all can hear it. <laughs> I don't even know if y'all can hear me. Can you even... <laughs> Let me just take one more puff. Let me see. Can, can I smoke right through this thing? Let me just test. I just let me just test it. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. What's up, everybody? Cheers, cheers. <laughs> oh shit. Oh damn. Huh? Cheers. Happy Friday, everybody. Huh? This, this is a good day. This is a good week. This is sick. You saw me post that right before the end of the close, right? We actually get a hold 15, then for it to close exactly at 15. Oh my god. It's like it was meant to be. So funny, huh? Hilarious. So. Right at 15, right? Now, no, not, that's not material big news or anything like that, but just that, just that, I always talk about the round numbers and everything like that. That stuff matters just a little bit, really not that much. But 15, isn't it just nice to see? It's like, we haven't seen 15 since, uh, it hasn't closed above 15. We saw 15 a couple weeks ago, right? Um, but it hasn't closed above 15 since January 2019. Then once you break 20, if you, if you close above 16, then we haven't seen that since 2018. So that type of stuff's a little bit meaningful. It hits people's radars when it's closing above these new levels. Still below a billion though, right? Still below a billion. That's kind of the price point that I've been keeping my eye on too. Like I keep on thinking that 16, $17 range, which happens to coincide with a billion dollars. Like I say, some institutions might not be able to get involved until you get to that point. But um, importantly, too, so I, I obviously I tweeted this out. You know, I'm keeping an eye on this. This chart, I mean, this chart looks fantastic, right? This looks incredible. Um, this is the weekly. Wait, wait, I mean, you're breaching 80 now on the weekly on the RSI, getting above there. And it gapped up just a little bit, not a big gap up or anything like that. But holy Toledo, right? And um, it just keeps going up every damn week. And then you back out to the, and then uh, I, I, oh, I had that chart up somewhere. Oh, I tweeted it out. What the hell did I do? With the, I had all these uh, all these lines in here. More volume, blah, blah, blah. It's the same chart I tweeted out last time, but just an updated one. Where now it's, I mean, it's still in this little rectangle here. And that's something to bear in mind. We're kind of in that 11 to $16 range in my analysis for what that's worth. And so we're still in that little box area. So that's why that $16, $17 range, that's what I'm kind of keeping an eye on. But boy, to end the week at 15 every week. I mean, we've had, what is this, uh, three weeks in a row where it keeps on and up. That's why we got these happy Friday. Cheers, everyone. That's why we got these happy Friday ones, right? This is sick. And what else? What else? What else? What else? Oh, what was the volume today? Oh, not that much. Six million. I do, were people talking about Uber? Was Uber talking about the bid ask spreads too? So that's something I was like, mm, I wonder if something like this volume is drying up again. Well, it was up a little bit yesterday, right? We're at the 16 because it was up. And uh, but this is quite a bit lower. Just something if there were, you need a reason that people would want to buy the stock, right? Technical analysis alone, like I said, it's a little bit marginal. Some people, some incremental buyers might be piling in because they start to new 52 week high today. We're at the closing price, new closing price, 52 week high, 21 month high. And uh, so some that hits some people's radar. But if you really want people to be buying in, you need something that uh, kind of changes their expectations about GameStop's long term future. That's why a whole bunch of us trying to keep an eye out for PR. Didn't get anything this week, right? I know some folks were talking about about that. Didn't get that. We uh, maybe next week, maybe not. We don't know. You just keep an eye out for this stuff. That's it's all about that optionality. There's that potential for some type of not so much game changing news, but just that incremental news that again starts reframing how people are thinking about this. And uh, and I think that I think that that stuff's coming. I don't know the timing of anything of it, but I there's too much optionality to not see uh, to not see this down the line at some point. And I do think there's going to be a larger number of people who might be interested in, uh, in in buying this stock given what's unfolding here. I still I still think that it's just a matter of what that news looks like, how long it takes, that type of stuff. You don't know that stuff, but I, I keep on leading toward it with the consoles coming up that maybe around that time. But who knows? I re I did I obviously we've pulled this up. Dimitri, cheers, Dimitri. We pulled this up on Wednesday. I didn't have a chance to go through it before uh, the, um, last week's stream, but I did today. Terrific article. Cheers, Dimitri. I re like I say, so a, the a legitimate, like full thesis. You need pages and pages. As as Justin knows, he's been on the stream before, and uh, you see all the articles he's written. But Dimitri's written a bunch too. Like a full thesis to talk about all the different. Um, aspects of the uh, of the thesis, it can go on forever and ever and ever. So Dimitri's taking a new approach, kind of approaching it from this, um, like the uh, the long term value, the the lifetime value that uh, GameStop brings to the table for some of these vendors, and just did a great job of approaching, like a full article dedicated dedicated to this. I thought was sick. I thought this was terrific, and I'm reading it. And a lot of this stuff I kind of already bought into, but to see it laid out in this full thesis, and again incremental to all the other thesis that's been published out there. There's so much. That's what I mean. This isn't cover every single aspect of this thesis. This is a bolt-on to what he's already published and what 
so many folk, Kingdom Capital adjusted and so many folks. And uh, in that, so I like that. I always like that type of stuff, right? Because it adds a little bit more to it. And I go, oh, yeah, that's my thinking. And I got to say, after reading this article, I think it's very grounded. It's very reasonable. There's some stuff, there's a little bit of Aztecs that I don't totally agree with. But um, for the most part, I do. And it kind of reminded me of, of how much GameStop adds, for, uh, how much value it adds for its vendors, for its partners. And it like... It increased, in my mind, and it kind of increased my, the probability I'm assigning to um, additional partnerships. Of course, I, I am expecting that, right? But everything's a probability distribution. Nothing's certain. So as I read this and I'm reminded how much GameStop brings to the table and how it can be, it's mutually beneficial, these different types of partnerships. I'm like, oh, this is sick. And I love those quotes from last year. I mentioned that in the last stream, which I'm glad I did. But how he brings up quotes from the Q2 fiscal year 19 conference call. Oh, this is great. Like tying it all back. It's terrific. Brings up some Sony quotes in here too. How they've already been testing. I, I tossed out that tweet. What the hell did I say? I, I did my best to try to boil it. How many characters are there? 140 characters? Whatever the hell they are. I, tried, I did my best to try to boil it down to a couple uh, points. Like um, they've already been testing these. I mean, they came right out and said it. They, they've been testing these since late 2019, since Q4. Some of these things are implemented. And that's kind of what he was talking about. Like some of these are already in play. He talked about, uh, and I think Uber added too from his talking with IR, that some of the vendors they already have partnerships with so far are smaller vendors. But that's the point. There's other, there's digital partnerships out there already with some vendors, and that should be promising for some folks. I think some folks are starting to come around that, uh, come around to that. So I thought that was great. What else? What, uh, sorry, I'm, I, I, so I really went through this article today, so that's why I brought up a couple things. The other thing he does that I like that he does, uh, Dimitri here, he, he includes these links to outside sources and just to read a bit more about stuff. I like that. I always like included those things, so it drives me somewhere else to read a bit more. Has this nice chart in here, the breakdown of a $60 physical game. And his point being, there's room here. There's room here for um, discussion between GameStop and these vendors. They have a little bit of flexibility with these digital games where there's, there's <laughs> GameStop can add some value here and... Uh, uh, just check to check out this article. I really like this because talking about how, in theory, a potential percentage that GameStop could get percentage of that uh, revenue stream, a percentage of that um, of that revenue down the line could be uh, upwards of like 30, 40 percent, and it could still make sense in theory. Of course, I agree with him that it probably wouldn't get that high, but his point still stands. I understand where he's coming from because you uh, once you whack out some costs by going physical, there's a little bit room there for uh, some profitability, and then it ties into he he also cited this article. I I sent out a tweet last week from Gavin Baker too about. About how uh, some of these brick and mortar retailers who dominate a particular category are, are could be potentially thriving in this environment from here on out. And here's another one by Gavin Baker. I thought this was sick. Scale and loyalty. How GameStop's always talking about it, the scale and loyalty that he has with his customers. He's got this nice table here. Again, a lot of stuff that most of us on the stream know, but just put it in a table and toss it out there. Oh, that's great. That's great. And just going through loyal repeat customers, all these different things that GameStop brings. And I like that. But this article goes a bit further into it. Not even related to GameStop. Um, and kind of goes into uh, uh, the, the lifetime value of customers and stuff. I just some nice articles. Like I like that. It can, if you're looking to educate yourself on these topics, these links are good because like, oh, maybe I've seen this, maybe I haven't. Let me read a bit more about it from someone who isn't just talking about GameStop, kind of put on coming at it from a different perspective. So I just thought that was great shit. And uh, I didn't quite get through this. Uh, <laughs> I didn't get through this interview yet. I'm only about like halfway through, but that was uh, kind of interesting. Um, that's pretty much it, right? We get the, I mean, 15, huh? 15, sick, this is sick. And now at this point, I mean, it's just a price target, right? All else, like the stream, I, I keep on saying this. It could have been at 12, could have been 11. It might have been the same stream, maybe a little bit less celebratory, you know what I mean? But the content of the discussion is the same because I feel like we're just in this box right now. But even still, all else equal, above 14 on the last, after the last stream, above 15. Imagine above 20, can you imagine? I mean, then, oh man, it's just, uh, it's party time, you know what I mean? Once you start getting there. I'm going to need a bit more news on that front. So cheers, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Who do we got here on a Friday, huh? JG, someone knows something that I don't, Badza. Yeah, I always think that too. That uh, Is there something to this trade or something to this setup that I'm missing? That's why I always ask that. So you're not alone, JG. Just wondering, is there something going on here I'm not fully appreciating? There's certain elements you might not be able to grasp. There's nothing wrong with that, JG. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Happy Friday. Johan, what up? What up, Johan? Cheers. Henry, welcome. Welcome back, Henry. Okay, looking good. Nice to see the price creeping higher. Looking forward to PBF. Oh, they got earnings next week? I didn't even realize that. Thanks for the heads up. <laughs> All right, Henry. And don't forget to check out CPE. Oh, I'll pull that up right now. I'll come back to it, but let me just pull that up. That's uh, Is that Callan? Oh, I got it. Yes, Callan. Okay, I'll pop, I'll pop that up. I'll come back to it later. Uh, waiting for the Sony GameStop partnership announcement. Yeah, we might. I... Uh, I I, I, I know, so that article, that was the big thing, is he seemed pretty convinced that there already is one, which kind of, I understand why he's saying that. 
whether or not, uh, like, would it be, um, like, I don't know how, if it's going to look like a Microsoft partnership. I don't even know if you'd get PR in this front. Is it, I don't know enough about that. So I don't know if it's coming, what the timing of it would look like. I, I, I know some people talk about this week, then you don't get it. You got to be prepared for that. Like, you don't, uh, I, I like the discussion, like I say, but you never know with this stuff. And um, so um, waiting for the Sony Game Stuff partnership announcement. Yeah, I mean, I, um, I any announcement. I think I said on the last stream, too, where um, it, really any type of partnership I would like to see because it's not so much the Sony partnership, but even if you got like a, a, like a publisher-type partnership, I'd like to see that just so I could come at the different partnerships from different angles. It would kind of help me try to value what that future free cash flow... I mean, it's still going to be messy, but try to value what that future free cash flow stream looked like. If I saw it, what different types of GameStop partnerships could look like. I, ca I can understand the Microsoft partnership, right? And I can understand the Sony partnership, but I'm like, are there any other types that I w that could help me round up my thinking? So I, ca I would look forward to something like that, but you never know. Maybe we don't get anything. You don't know. Uh, but that's why. It comes down to those free cash flows, right? But these types of PRs are helpful for kind of changing changing the perspective a bit. So we'll see. Again, I'm keeping my eye out for this stuff too. You never know. <laughs> uh 15 close today cheers cody welcome back jen yo 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 what up polygon hello hello friend got a, yeah i saw that anthony oh i saw you tweet that too anthony said you gotta move this bad boy to thursday as the official day of gamestop right because it always said although it was up yesterday right it wasn't up that much was it no it broke 50 then it came back down you know that's kind of just noise that's that noise action right there's not much going on let me back back down to, oh we're back overbought in the daily i know uh uber was mentioned in that um and we've kind of broke out oh yeah i didn't do this one these are good these are good oh it's black let me try to change it to green Can I change it to green hey it kind of broke out on the rsi is that is that a thing <laughs> that mean anything to anyone i don't know uh so uh but overbought in the daily overbought in the weekly not quite in the monthly not quite in the monthly not just yet but that was good to see I, again all else sequel right oh let me get the monthly sorry oh it's coming it's at 64 oh damn is, is we have one more week of October left? That'd be nice if it could get overbought in October, right? I mean, I th is this updating daily? I'm actually not sure. <laughs> is this updating daily? I think it updates daily. I think it updates daily. Even though it's a monthly chart, I think it updates. I think. I actually don't know. <laughs> I should know. Uh, see you. Cheers. Welcome back. See you. Cheers, cheers, cheers. You made it in before the intro tonight. All right. See you. He makes it on time. Sick. About 50 out of 15. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. All right, who else we got? Henry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see you. Only about 50 cents until we hit that. Oh, yeah, so see you says the same thing. He, he was noticing that $1 billion market cap too. What would you say, 50 cents? Is that what it is? 15.50? Roughly 15.50. I just figure 65. Yeah, that's right. Really, just 50 cents. You're right there. And we So we were above that. We're real, we must have been above a million yesterday. I just missed it, right? Kind of just popping all over the place. Uh, where's that daily? That's what I wanted to check. I mean, it's not like the billion dollar itself is some... Uh, yeah, so we were above there briefly yesterday, right? But that's the thing. Keep an eye out. It's the fundamental news that will drive this stuff. It's that it, this is this marginal stuff. But the, I, the reason I bring this up because it catches people attention, right? But that real big, any big potential move, if at all, would come from some some fundamental change in people's perspective, right? But I agree with you. I'm keeping an eye on this stuff too. Let's go. Oh, Jed likes there. <laughs> play a fall. Oh, this reminds me of play a fall. <laughs> oh, there you go. So Uber. Oh, 1535, one bill. Yeah. Say, oh, you, oh, Uber's got the exact share count. Cheers, Uber. I was wondering what that share count was. Here you go. <laughs> Cheers, Hugo. Cheers, Hugo. Welcome back. Welcome back. Yeah, what a retail. I didn't know she had revenue share. Oh, there you go. Yeah, some people don't. Some people might not even know about the partnership. That's why it's good to talk about this. Ted, welcome, Ted. Welcome to the channel. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Even better. Well, Markel, welcome back. What's up? What's up? Cheers, Daily. Cheers, 15. Let's go. Oh, and oh, is Sony earnings next week, too? Oh, that's interesting. What day of the week is that one? Just curious. Is it the 28th? Just curious. Just curious. I wonder if it... Henry, Henry. <laughs> I like the kitty. I don't even know if y'all can hear me, right? Oh, you like that shit? Oh, so dumb. So dumb. Oh, man. It'll be fun. I think, I think that article was supposed to come out next week, next Thursday. I think that's it. I think it put a hole. Can, can you even see anything? Yeah, where's some holes? Oh, there were some holes up there. Let me grab it. Apparently, these are eye holes. Check this out. You can see those eye holes right now? <laughs> Is there a mouth hole? Nah, not really. Wait, is there? Nah, not really. So I, if you couldn't hear me, my bad. Uh, that's why I figured I'd take it off just in case. I don't know if I could get caught up. I should put a hole in it. Yeah, maybe I cut a hole. Can I put a hole in this? Let me keep this close. I could probably put a hole in that. They're, they're kind of, it, it looks funky enough, you know what I mean? Put a hole in it. It's going to look... 
it's gonna look ridiculous. Like it doesn't already look ridiculous, right? Give me a break, huh? Shit. No, oh, hungry. Yeah, the aisles. That <laughs> oh, I'm glad you like that. <laughs> but, hey, we broke them up 15. I'm like, let's celebrate just a little bit, huh? No crazy news. Let's have a little bit of fun with this. You know what I mean, huh? Fancy today, musical felony. Happy Friday, man. I'm in my real form. Yeah, this is the mask. This is the mask. Take this mask off, huh? Remember, like, uh, like Men in Black? Oh, that was sick. <laughs> the real form. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, oh, they <laughs> A bit, oh, yeah, I put this out of the I'm like, is this even going to stick? This probably come off when I take the mask off, right? My daughter's been walking around. I go, I got some fools. My daughter's been walking around tossing this on, kind of walking around. The it comes with paws, too. There's paws here. You could, I couldn't buy it. <laughs> it doesn't come as just the mask. So I had to get the full costume. Actually, this one's not a full costume. It's just, it's just the hat and paws. But I'm like, yeah, the paws. I think the paws might be too much. <laughs> Shit. Happy Friday, right? Damn. Arthur, what up? What up, Arthur? Cheers. Has it, what, another, <laughs> there's another costume on the name. <laughs> oh, costume. Costume. We were talking about Cupception, right? Cups on cups on cups. Oh, yeah. What's that intraday look like? Did I look at this today? I looked at this today. Oh, yeah. I charted about it. I tweeted about it. Oh, I, t I tweeted about it yesterday, right? Cups on cups on cups. Cupception. Uh, the, uh, costumeception, right? Exactly as 15, so the 15 can't... Act oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Is there the double gang? <laughs> oh, yo, hilarious. Saw 15. Oh, saw the 15 flat. Yep, yep, yep. Refinery, welcome. Welcome, refinery. Yeah, so we're talking about what with the, with the upward possibilities are. That's for sure. We don't know for sure. Uh, oh, shit, it jumped. Oh, I'm not doing too bad. 666. Yeah, I saw it close at the 15.03 too. Sometimes it does that though, so I don't know. I, I wouldn't read too much. It sometimes it, sometimes it goes a little bit above. I don't know. I don't know enough about that stuff. I did see 15.02 or 15.03, but I, I wouldn't look. That's some of that like that noise type stuff. But I don't know. That's a, that's a. Uh, I plead ignorance. I plead ignorance. I, I don't know enough about this stuff. That's that structural stuff. I don't know. Nah, I wouldn't say. I wouldn't go down that manipulation path. Just generally, not just with this thing, but I hear a lot of people toss around that word. I feel like there's some stuff. Where it could just be we don't fully understand it. You know what I mean? That's kind of like my default. Eh, it's just something I don't fully maybe comprehend or understand why it works that way. That's what I would think. Um. Okay, okay. B BCG, welcome back, welcome back. Cheers. Oh, y'all looking for filings? There's no, there's no filings, is there? <laughs> Keep on refreshing. Yeah, where's Fox to make fun of me for that one, huh? Oh, damn. Oh, I saw. Oh, see you. Oh, yeah, I see you. Did you tweet this out? Did, did everyone see that Microsoft is teasing xCloud streaming sticks that will not require a console? I think I, yeah, I think uh, I think you were the one who mentioned it. I think I saw that. Yeah, I'll, I didn't read that article yet, but I'll keep an eye out. With Phil Spencer hitting at it. Transient bit. What up? What up, Transient? Cheers. Happy Friday. Let's go. Let's go, right? Damn. This is the thing. So an additional thing here is just that this... Even yesterday morning, yesterday morning when it popped, yesterday morning when it popped and it went up, right? That was on low volume. This was on low, there was not much volume. It was, uh, what's that say? Two million shares. Now, in, in a short period of time, you could argue it's a lot of volume, but for a GameStop tech company, not that much volume. So that was on low, that was on volume, um, a very little, it turned out to be 16 million on the day, but there wasn't, it didn't do much after that. So that popped. Maybe there was some buying going on or some closing. I have no idea. It doesn't matter. My point is just I did notice that it was on low volume. And then today, not a move. Today it was flat. It's just funny that it ended above 15. But no volume. So that's what I mean. If you got no no low volume, you just like it. It's, it's nicer. But it could go down. And then it's important not to overthink it. It's the same on the upside. You don't overthink it too much. But you got to have a laugh. If you close it at 15, what you going to do? You got to. But uh, like I say, all oh, the you like to see that. But it's important. I noted this. This low volume is a little bit meaningful to me because then I'm like, yo, what if they do announce something that really, that more and more folks get a bit more bullish about it? What if they do announce that and then you have, then you have tremendous buying, what if you do have tremendous buying pressure, then it could be a little bit more explosive. That's not a prediction. That may not happen. Like I said, maybe we don't get any news, right? I, I know we're all kind of leaning toward, maybe you do get some, I, I lean that, I lean that way too, but I'm just saying I, um, it's all uh, without the volume is still going a little bit higher. That might be this incremental stuff. Like, uh, people seeing the charts, seeing like the uh, short interest and seeing this other stuff being like, what's going on here? Seeing who's involved. 
And so that's why it's nice. And then you have this higher base. You have that higher base. So if it pops off of that level, it's up even more. That's, I mean, a lot of people saying that, right? That's nothing big. I get that. But it's 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 worth just reminding folks of that. You like to see this higher and higher base over time. Because if you pop off, you pop off after that, then it's even higher. You're up over 20. Whereas we were just at nine. You know what I mean? We're just at nine. So it's in there. There was there was one big announcement, right? And then the Senvest, I guess there's been two kind of one and a half big announcements as far as I'd say. And then we're up 50% on that. So Shit, now we're only 33% away from 20. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't even know why I said that. Okay. What up, makeshift? Welcome back, makeshift. Cheers, 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 mate. Alex, Alex, welcome. Yeah, I so, yeah, so sure. Yeah, even at these levels, not sure whether. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alex added that short squeeze requires capital constraints. Yeah, like I said, a little bit of a, who knows? We don't really know what it takes or maybe they may, may not even have to close. Or I, I mean, I just like, I keep on saying that price action. I, uh, if it pops off from here, then it seems to me like it starts to get an expensive position. But again, I like as what JG kicked off the chat, like maybe there's just something here. And I don't know, but I agree. And how long can it persist? And ah, it's con it confuses me. It confuses me. But fortunately, I feel like I say that you get those fundamentals. <laughs> we get the fundamentals on our side. Of, that's the real thesis, as all of us here know. And then it's like, but that that could be potential fuel. There's no denying that. No denying that. Even though we don't really know what um, if there's a, a tipping point or anything like that, I really just don't know. Again, like, like that seventeen dollar level eighteen. That's what I'll be curious. Like right now, I'm like still like I don't know. But if we get like to like seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, then I'm gonna I'm gonna be watching closely what's happening. Does it result in uh, acceleration on the upward movement? Or do we start to see the shorts closing? That's the thing you don't really know. But that's my test. Like right now, I, I'm still in quite a bit of uncertainty mode. But uh, with more data, with more information on the price and the volume and that type of stuff, maybe I'll reassess and have a higher conviction. Um, okay. Yeah, so uh, insufficient share liquidity, right? Had this conversation before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the thing. That's if there, if for some reason, whatever that is, there's tremendous demand for these shares. Look out! I, I don't know. Yep. So Uber says the same thing. Seventeen, eighteen level. Oh, I was saying more from like the chart perspective. So I, for the seventeen, eighteen dollar level, just so y'all know, I'm coming at it from uh, this level right here. Let me back out even further. Just this, just this box right here. That's all. Just not significant resistance, but a little bit right here. Boom, boom, boom. Not much, but that's something on the charts. But again, you get fundamental news, big news. This is irrelevant, erroneous, erroneous on all accounts. Um, but you get to that 17, 18, you get to 18 and stuff. That's where I'm going to be. That's like the real, that would be educational for me. Because I'm like, yo, what's going to happen here? What, what? Let's see. Then the overbought range, it just looks so bullish. Everything continues... I can't say this enough. If the price action changes and it heads out and it goes, if we're down to 12, 13, we'll reassess and I'll rethink this stuff. And that stuff, that, that's why I see this is marginal analysis. This isn't like super high conviction, but as it stands, the data is saying this is bullish. It's a bullish setup, a bullish setup. Wow. Okay. Um, <laughs> makeshift. Cheers, makeshift. Yeah, I did see some other retail uh, cyclicals that were heading up too, right? We talked about, uh, was it Dillard's and uh, Bed Bath & Beyond? Some of these retailers who were heavily shorted, they're starting to pop up too. In fact, let me just pull this up. I didn't pull it. DDS? Kind of settled down a bit. Kind of settled down a bit, but Bed Bath & Beyond, they're all kind of... Remember that, that chart I pulled up? Where the hell is it? Damn. Above 25? Wow. There you go. It's already a five-bagger on that one. <laughs> so this is the thing. So this, uh, this is kind of a all marginal analysis, right? But you know how when you're analyzing an industry or you're analyzing a company and then so you back out, you start analyzing all the companies in the industry to try to get a feel for are people bullish toward this um, this sector or this industry right now? It's kind of the same. This is a, a variation of that where, to, to who just said this? Um, Alex, right? Where it's a variation of this. Where it's like, well, the stocks with these types of characteristics, are they kind of in favor right now? That's kind of what they're getting at. And also this chart too, I have it somewhere here. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Oh, where was it? Oh, did I like it? Oh, right here. This is that Goldman Sachs basket of the most shorted stocks. They're kind of in favor right now. doesn't mean they'll be in favor next week or the week after. That's not the point. But the backdrop, I talk about the backdrop. Backdrop here is a bit bullish. It's a bit bullish right here, right? And so all else equal, you like to have that as a, as a minor, a, 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 a tail end, albeit minor, right? But um, so these kind of stocks at the moment, and or so far for the past couple months, maybe they've been a bit in favor. Something to bear in mind. But if it persists, then that's a little bit of a tailwind, just a touch. Oh, it jumped on me. Okay. Oh, it jumped. Okay. Get 
Can you hover it up? Well, I don't know. I mean, we don't know who the... That's why I keep saying the shorts are... Beep, boop, 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 boop. I mean, I don't know. I saw the put, but I don't know who... I just keep saying it's, it's got to be the ro <laughs> some robots, right? Having a laugh. I don't know who it is. But uh, I just because of the setup, it kind of looked like it was larger ones. But I, I yeah, I don't know. And I, uh, they're, they're, the, the interest, uh, the... Uh, yeah, I don't know enough about the, the the opposite side. Ryan, 15. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Oh, okay. Did I miss this? The shares are already short. If it, yeah, those increment. If you get, if the, that's what I mean. If there's buyer, if there's incremental net law, if they keep on coming up, they, they need to, there needs to be a reason for them to buy. This is the the, the charts are uh, are supportive of a move. It supports it, but they need to have a reason. And that's I think a lot of us are kind of on the same page. I think soon enough there there's going to be even more demand for this stock. I think it's it's even taken a little bit of while. Like it has started. The conversation has started, but it, I mean, what have you? Been? It's, I feel like it's been a good six seven weeks where I thought, well, this stock's up quite a bit. So there's this definitely turning around, but I think there's room to run. And uh, I think there's uh, a sentiment shifts uh, ahead of us. Uber saying, yeah, expects it to happen uh, right, right over the next month. And again, in my mind, too, I've been thinking about those consoles and stuff. More people are going to be talking about it. People are actually going to be buying it, going to the stores. Black Friday, the, the, the sale, the, or the, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Y'all know. Come on, let me keep going. Oh, so I'm talking to a T1 shop bros. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, stock Twitch folks. Cheers, everybody. That's right. Uh, Alex says uh, that's what Uber was just. If supply is low, it doesn't take much. That's why Uber was talking about those spreads. I, I mean, I don't think too much about that, but it's uh, it's something worth sharing for sure. And the quick moves up on the low volume, like I said, even I discount that too, but I'm still sharing. And I still say it, just sharing observations. That's what a lot of us are doing. And like I say, that helps us round out our thinking. And if, that, if, if, if it is reflective of... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> lower supply of shares to be sold than if there is I, mean, I keep on repeating myself you all know let me keep going oh so markel asked about that 17 level arbitrage uh, uh, there's my rationale for that 17 18 level and that kind of coincides with the 1 billion that's my thinking anyway for what that's worth which is let's take that with a grain of salt of course right oh yeah there was a gap here it gapped up too right that's nice. Uh, okay. Breton, hello, hello. Welcome back, Breton. Russ, what's up? What's, remember that, uh, remember, that is remember that Budweiser commercial? What's up? Remember that? Oh, now I'm dating myself, huh? Damn, that shit's gonna be 20 years old. You should do it, my friends. Okay. If they sell the X Cloud sticks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I gotta read that article. I gotta read that article. Oh, I didn't see the order imbalance. Nope, nope, nope. I didn't see that stuff. Again, that's that stuff too. I don't think about it too much, but worth noting. I think Uber mentioned that last week too. Or Justin mentioned uh, that he had seen something, I think. Okay. Just reading through some of this. Exactly why the agreement discusses bringing devices into the ecosystem. Yeah, yeah. We were talking about that. What is the definition? We were like really ripping the wording apart. What does devices mean? We kind of landed on Xbox, but indeed, if it's multiple devices and game sets bring it in, maybe there's a potential revenue sharing with this xCloud stick. CU's been talking about this quite a bit. I should bring up. If there's a new article, CU, let me know. I can bring it up. Oh, yeah. I think you tweeted it out. I'll look for it. Let me just keep getting caught up. Steve Tonk, welcome back. Cheers, 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 Steve. The bid ass spread. All right, so Alex talking about that bid ass spread too. Uber's first person I saw mention that. He mentioned that on the stream last week, I think. Oh, okay. Limited to consoles. Okay, that's right. You you must ask the right questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so Breton sees 16 as a major resistance. After that, there isn't really a huge wall until the 30s. See 16? That's a thing. If you back out to the weekly, I mean, I think I saw this. Oh, that's too. Not, that's not back far enough. No, I still see 17. I like. I, I like the clean breaks. I always talk about clean breaks. I like clean breaks through this stuff. But he's sees 16. All right. It's all in the same, right? There's no precise thing. We can't overthink this stuff. I've been thinking like 16, 17, then why would you want to see 18? You know what I mean? They're all the same. There's so such small differences. I think we're all in the same bulb. Everyone's seeing this same box, I think, and include this one too. We're all seeing that same stuff. Thanks for sharing.
Great week. Chart, chart looks great. I agree, Ross. Absolutely. Yep. Oh, okay. Daily. I actually look for it today. I'm like, is it today? Daily says that the new short data comes out Monday, and that will be as of October 15th. So that's that's following quite a bit of news. I'm very interested to see that. I'm very curious. Like I said, I'm trying to learn how this works. So that will be right. What did I say? Oh, the 15th. Oh, will it be out of the 15th? That includes this big update? Does it include the big update? I think it does. Oh, that's sick. Is it going to be the 15th? Oh, I think it is. Oh, that's sick. I think it will include that. I think it's end of day. Oh, that's good. It broke 15 that day. Oh, yes. I'm very curious to see this. I mean, sideshow, right? I, I, <laughs> I'm just saying. Like I say, I'm trying to understand. I guess I lean toward there haven't been. I mean, not, I don't know. Let me keep going. Okay, thanks for the reminder daily. I was peeking and poking around today just trying to see. That's right. So CU says, yeah, I don't think it's the information itself coming out on console day, but people seeing the line social media posts that will help really change the sentiment of the markets. I'll look. So I tend to agree with that, right? Well, I will point out as the price gets higher, there's um, there's marginal benefits to that point, right? Now, I still of, of the same opinion, even at this current price level, just to be clear, but even still that sentiment shift as it moves higher in price, I, uh, it's a, it, it, it's, it, attenuates hey, that's a good word uh, it attenuates as time passes but even still i'm still with you that i still think there's more more people will be talking about these consoles people can actually be buying and seeing the lines and stuff and you might just say to and i don't know i understand i know cu gets this you might just say well that's just fluff that's not hard news data and so forth but i i still believe the stock is trading uh pretty cheaply and um re relative to what i think free cash flows are going to be i mean even over the next 18 to 24 months but even looking out like five years especially if they reinvent themselves blah 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 and because of that that stuff's a little bit more meaningful but again it uh its impact is reduced as the price keeps getting higher i think but we'll have to see maybe not maybe not it's not like that's super high conviction now that's like that stuff but it's still part of my thesis it is what it is it's a uh, amalgamation is that a word too what's going on it's a friday night what are we tossing out all these these confusing a words okay Okay. Yeah, the people talk about that overstock chart. Steve Stunks in particular. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> look at that. Oh, man, that was something. Wow. I know. I, I they, Obviously, these comparisons are crude. I still like them, but uh, yeah, people talk about that. I saw that. Matt saying 17, 18 in the beginning. Yeah. That's right. If it, that's what I think. I'm not saying that anything explosive is going to happen. I have no idea. I don't know enough about this. I'm just saying if it were, if there were going to be fireworks like some people are talking about, and I'm not sure I still, I don't I don't know enough about, like I keep saying, I don't know enough about this to think that there are going to be. But if there were going to be some, I don't think you see anything until you're back 17 18 $19 range and still you stop breaking out. That's my personal opinion. And even then, I don't know that anything happens. But that's that's why I'm focused on that. To what Matt's saying here about that 17 18 level where it could be the beginning. But even then, that's all. it's all probabilities. Then, what, what, then what's the probability you assign to something happening thereafter? You know what I mean? That's always, that's an important discussion. Yeah, when it rejects resistance, where does it go? And I have no clue. I don't even know. Like, I don't even, yeah, we're, and that's what people talk about that chart, right? The longer term chart. Like, there's not much, on a technical standpoint, right? Um, oh, damn. That there's not much additional resistance on that front thereafter. Not much. And again, fundamentals, focus, value investors. We we don't care about that too much. Again, if the if the if the free if the value is there by way of free cash flow expectations, looking out a couple of years, then the chart's secondary. But even still, other people look at this stuff. They do. Uh, it is what it is. I um. Yep, all it comes down to fair value, right? And I know people talking about trimming and selling stuff. Yeah, that's why the, the whatever you, you at least need a the, whatever the fair value of the stock is, whatever your and fair fair value is subjective. There's different variables that go into that type of an estimate, but uh, that should come into that decision as well. And then squeeze potential. I mean, I, I, I it's, it's a, such tough analysis. Oh, an upgrade. Oh, yeah. So that's the thing. Those are the other. Like I keep forgetting. So uh, Cody mentions. I'd love to see an upgrade from the two analysts. 
Yeah, those upgrades can come too. And uh, I think you need that would probably follow. Uh, we need PR. We need news from the company that would cause them to update their. Um, I keep on bringing up Wissing's analysis here. That they'd say, okay, in light of this, then we need to change our expectations. But to Stephanie's point here, uh, I, keep, I can't say that. I, I just really like this wording. That's why I keep bringing it up. We can map new value drivers to fully counter reduced package software sales, but still to really fully underwrite valuation. I think if you get news and say, hey, here's a new potential partnership or uh, just a bit more than maybe some of these analysts, not just with Syncare, but anyone, uh, will come up with some um, uh, new price targets. I suspect that they would be higher <laughs> based on what I think news could come out, but I don't know. That's right. So Uber's got it. And I think a lot of people miss what Uber's saying. That's a, there's, a, there's a valuation reason for the price to be re-rating as well as the embedded optionality of the share short. Um, there's, that's right. So that's that I, we've discussed this quite a bit on the stream where people, where the stock price moves one day and we say on the Microsoft partnership or on, um, on Senvest taking a staple. That was a couple days later. Oh, Justin making the rounds too. We, we try to pin a move on one specific thing. But in the backdrop, is this undervaluation, right? You always see this with these value stocks. Like it's undervalued. And you can say it's this or that, and it, but that's, that's, that's kind of the backdrop here. And so that's, part, that's, I don't know what the breakdown is. Don't ask me. I don't know what, how much the undervaluation explains some of the move, but it's always part of it. That's my, that's my opinion. Uh, for an undervalued stock, I think it always represents a portion of the move. Um, but then there's all these other variables, right? Now, so, so, so Uber mentions the, um, uh, I mean, short interest, but even I'm like, uh, so people, people looking at the chart, they don't care about the undervaluation. They don't give a shit. They don't care. They go, there's no, they, they, they say, uh, like what, uh, like Ryan was pointing out the cup and handle. They don't care. They just see a sick looking chart. They follow on any momentum folks, blah, blah. I know I said that a, a, bunch, a bunch of times. I just want to repeat that, that it's that, it's that valuation. That's why I, I'm a value investor. A lot of us are. That's why I think it's so helpful to be. And that's why you're able to maintain a position with conviction because you've penciled through what you think and you feel reasonably confident in your estimates as to what those uh, what that valuation is. It's it's how you can get through. <laughs> it's how you can get so you can hold a position like this out there. You know what I mean? Damn. Okay. Oh yeah. So Polygon, what what happens if Q3 shows another triple digit online sales growth? Which I think you will. I think you will get that. People said 800% growth is nothing but 300% of growth of, well, 300% of growth, it would be year over year, right? Year over year versus uh, sequential quarters, right? Sequential quarters might be a bit lower, but year over year, the headline number might be substantial. I actually think it will be substantial. So Q4, excuse me, Q3 2019 versus Q3 2020, it's going to be gigantic. And I think that's the figure that would be trumpeted i think what it, i think usually that tends to be what it is the year over year stuff right because especially with the seasonal business less so the sequ sequential quarters unless it was big news really positive news i've seen that happen where a company has oh i've seen it happen this year because of uh, the downturn and so the year over year comps like in q2 for a lot of companies were just shit they were terrible and so they're like we can't even do year over year comps so they've been talking about sequential quarters just so they just so they can point to something meaningful I, uh, but indeed, so I agree with you, Polygon. I think you're going to get a big number in Q3, uh, in Q3 and maybe it's going to surprise people, but it shouldn't, right? You just saw what they did for Q2. That's going to, it's going to happen again. The, my question will be what percentage of sales, what it is. That's my big thing. Like, is it, that's what I'm curious about. Yep. Ty, hey, welcome back, Ty. Sitting pretty at 15. I agree. <coughs> oh, it's still there. <coughs> excuse me. Excuse me. We still have 15? Oh, it's still there after hours. You know it's going to go to 14. You know it's 7.59. It's going to go 14. It's going gonna, it's gonna to drop. Watch. We'll laugh. Talk about reasons for sales. Yep, yep. Okay. A lot of shares owned by institutions. Oh shit! Yeah, that's the thing. I um, uh, I don't know. I don't know. The scary movie scene of that. Oh, what are you talking about? Are you talking about an actual scary movie or a scary movie the comedy? Because that's the first scary movie was hilarious. Remember that? I don't know if y'all. First one was. No, oh, it was one of the. It was like one of the funniest comedies I had seen at the time. <laughs>
much for the other parts. Atari console. Dell Profits asking about the Atari console. Yeah, marginal marginal impact, right? But still something I like that people were mentioning. Just, same thing with the um, the Nintendo uh, Nintendo stuff coming out right now. Marginal. But yeah, I uh, I looked at their website and it appears only... Oh, only is it only available at GameStop and Walmart? That's kind of interesting. I don't think that it's a game changer of anything. Um and, man, and GameStop management hasn't mentioned it too much, but uh, so no, no, no real thoughts. I mean, uh, all those sequel, it's another, it's another thing they're going to be selling, but I don't know how much it it helps that downside. I'm always about that downside protection, right? That's why the 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 Nintendo Switch stuff that's coming out, these games in the next iteration of it in the spring, are is important. Um, but the Atari, um, we'll see. I um, not quite as much, but even still, it's it's more more traffic potentially. And um, maybe accessories to go with it, right? That was the thing. In this article, Dimitri brought up a lot of great quotes, but just t reiterating the fact that they have some of the highest uh, attachment. Uh... Oh, it's right there. Higher digital attach rate. We have a higher digital attach rate. Customers who buy physical games for us buy more games overall. These are stuff we already know, right? But it was just, I, I like that it was in the article again. So simple as that. So virtually every category of that business, whether it be physical, uh, digital, physical games, or accessories, you see a higher attach rate at a game store. No question about it. And uh, I only bring this up because Atari. I think, yeah, Atari, you could get some more people in there. And because, I'm, all right, y'all know. Let me keep going. Yeah, 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 yeah. Talking Atari, yep. I agree with you. I agree with all these. Kenny, welcome, Kenny. Saying GME's going to the 20s. Maybe it's looking, the setup is good. The setup is looking bullish. I feel, uh, I feel that's an objective. I feel that, I feel um, that's an objective take. I, I feel strongly about that. Um, which makes the, the short interest even more absurd to me. That, like, I, doesn't mean it works out, but in my analysis, that's what I'm seeing. And now 20s, like I said, that's just a 33% move, right? Exactly. It's exactly a 33%. 0.3333. Repeating, of course. <laughs> Talking to Tari, yep. EO is another week, another higher close. Yep, yep, yep. Welcome, EO. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Welcome, EO. That's it. That's it. That's nice, huh? Three straight weeks. Ah, it's been fun Friday streams because of that. And again, it could go down next week. I don't know. But it, I, that's the thing. It, the question will be, has anything changed? And I would say that this... I don't repeat myself. I know. Not much has changed these past two weeks. That, but all is equal. 15 to 12 is nice. 12 to 15 is good. Okay. Oh, people trying to calculate the short interest. Yeah, I'll just, I'll, we'll just see what it is. Okay, that was close. I think it was still close. Talking Atari. Hey, good Atari discussion, huh? I never even, I missed Atari. I missed it. It was like right before me. I was, that first Nintendo was my first one. Born for the nostalgic play, yeah. One minute chart is the best chart. I usually just pull. I just use fifteen minutes. Ah, oh, this is. You can do. I feel like you see. I you see. I think I'm seeing similar stuff across all of them, though, right? Like there you go. I mean, this cup and handle cup, that handle, and now the handle is the support. Isn't that funny? You know what I mean? <laughs> the handle's the support. I mean, there's. If, if, where's that damn chart? Do I got it up? I forget what I called it. I don't remember. Was it, is it yesterday? Oh, that's it. There you go. If I could just extend that. Can I extend that? Oh, I think I can. Oh, I think I can. Sick. Let me try. Oh, sick. <laughs> I mean, just 
one day, right? Everything's a test. Everything's a test. Everything's an experiment. But there you go. There, there There's part of the reason it, it's just a 15-minute chart, blah, blah, blah. But I, I see this type of stuff. I've seen it frequently enough where I'm like, yeah, there's a little bit of something here, right? This is ridiculous. It breaks through the handle. Oh, not through the handle. It breaks above the cup and handle, I mean. And then the handle. Well, that's not really the handle, I guess. Well, that's just, that, right. That's not the handle. My bad. I misspoke. The handle, eh, you know what I mean. It broke through the, re then the resistance as well. All right, there's more the resistance than the handle. All right, that's fair. That's fair. Oh, so we got Tim Timothy. Welcome, Timothy. Welcome. Ty, I think we'll get that update in short interest on Monday. That's what Daly was saying. Yeah, Monday. Okay, they got you. They got you. Yeah, here we go. GME's, CU says, GME's data monetization, monetization has either started or is about to launch. The bottom of GME's website has a new hyperlink that is do not sell my personal information. Oh, I have no idea if that's new. I mean, how do you know that's new? Have you been watching the website, CU? Oh, shit. It does look kind of new to me. How do you know that's new, though? <coughs> and I don't know what, the, what I mean I wouldn't oh interesting interesting wow okay interesting you talk about the data monetization and this is partly what um, I mean I don't know what that means I wouldn't I don't it's it, it's curious I if that is new I have no idea and what to make of it it's not like I know what that means for the other companies not really I kind of get what CU is getting at but I, I'd harken back to this this uh, that they have a DB of um, of because she talks about it here, right? A new ad targeting platform, right? And this is what you see at some of the social media type stuff. I guess that's what CU is probably getting at. So that's kind of interesting to improve ad advocacy. All right. I mean, I don't know if it means anything spinning, but we know it's we know people are talking about. We know it. Well, they haven't. They've talked about it a little bit, but not that much. That now that announcement, right? I tell you, what I'm talking about. The other types of partnerships are more potentially exciting to me. I mean, a Sony one would still be big, especially because some folks were saying analysts are doubting it right that, that they're doubting that that can happen if that's true and you get it but if you don't get it or even if you do uh, just these other types of partnerships like i'm intrigued by this type of stuff as it sounds like maybe cu is as well that um they have some real data there that partners might be interested in um just trying to improve yeah the the, the efficacy of their ads something on that front would be good Talking price targets, yep. Yeah, some Polygon saying is it just required? Like that's the thing. I, sometimes it's just legal requirements and stuff. I wouldn't look into it too much, but I, I don't know enough about that stuff to be. I just don't know. Yeah. Okay. Polygon saying year year over year will have to be huge. I agree. I was thinking sequential quotas, but I think you're right. So yeah. So Polygon agrees. Where it'll, they'll, they'll, the headline will be year over year. It's got to be huge. I don't know if it'll be more than eight hundred percent. I doubt it. I actually have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. I can't. I'm not even venture, I guess. All right. CU says the link has been there. Cool. Okay. Thanks for sharing, CU. That's the type of thing like, I never, uh, never, I, I, I'm highly unlikely I'd ever come across something like that. Amagus, welcome back. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Please go to 14. That's the thing. So I, oh, so someone said this. Um, someone said, that, oh, who was it? I, uh, oh, I forget if I liked it. Um, Oh, I forget where this was. I saw it somewhere. I, I see so stuff, and sometimes I, I, I'm on the go, and I forget to... A pullback would be fine. A pullback would be healthy. You know what I mean? And the technical... That's the thing is that um, it sounds... I don't know that we're... Everything's... It's still... Everything's bullish, blah, blah, blah. But even a pullback, you pull back to 13, 12, 11, and then the move off that cause is a little bit even more bullish. Like, that's what kind of... A little bit happened here. A little bit happened here. Boom, boom, boom. And someone said, like, a pullback... Oh, you know what they were... Oh, it was Thomas. I think it was Thomas. Saying uh, uh, compared to uh, OSTK, where it pulls back to like the five week average. Oh, that's what it was, right? Five week average. Can I do a moving average? Five weeks? Oh, for, first of all, let me just test this. Uh, I can't remember what it was, so that's why I can't go get it. Oh, that's it. Okay. Thomas. I think it was, I think it was Thomas. 
And they say it was following the five. This is the weekly chart following the five week average this whole way up. Just an observation. Not saying that's what's going to happen with GameStop. Anything like that. I like this type of stuff. I was like, damn, it did kind of look like. It. And I like the weekly too. If it were daily, I probably wouldn't. It wouldn't have got my attention. I um. Damn, did I like it? I think this is right. And then okay, so now let me just pop up GME. There you go. Oh, I like that observation. I like that observation. Oh, I'm sorry. I think it was Thomas who posted that. I'm sorry to look at this. And then so he's saying they pulled back to there a little bit bullish, huh? That's the thing. Pullbacks aren't really a bad thing. That's what I mean. It'd be like a very similar uh, stream. Even if it did, it's okay. It's chill. It's in a box. If it started breaking through at this point, if it started breaking through, well, I guess this kind of coincides with that. Um, like the $11 range. Then I'd be like, all right, what's going on here? Is there something something happening? But in the meantime, everything's still intact. Yeah, I like this. I like this five weeks. It's a nice one. How about, how about Bed Bath & Beyond? Oh, a little bit. A little bit of a, what was this? A little bit of, got back just two weeks later. Okay. I like that. Five weeks, huh? I definitely haven't looked at five weeks before. But anyway, I'm going to say, yeah, please pull back to 14. Okay, what was the GameStop one showing? 12. Hey, yeah, baby. Oh, Polygon. Step it up for Trey. Only 25 likes. Thanks, Polygon. Cheers. Oh, cheers, everybody. Thanks for the likes there. Oh, 38. Okay, sir. Give me a second. Oh, Uber. Cheers to Uber. Uber got it. All right. Leroy Jenkins. Huh? Oh, shit. Thank you, Uber. Like I say, if, you, if you're in a classroom, is the joke worth telling if only one person gets it? Hell yes, it's still worth telling if only one person gets it. Thank you, insurance. Cheers, insurance detectives. Welcome back. Oh, yeah. Did insurance did message me something? Let me just see. Oh, he did. I forgot to look into that insurance i'll check that out later okay oh 754 we we'll get real close what's it gonna do oh it's still is it still 15 let's see yeah it's still 15 oh it hasn't done anything okay dale welcome the prophet dale welcome back Likes are going almost as fast as you might know right yeah it's a quick like daniel da cheers everybody cheers you you, you four you three Oh, shit. Oh, they all did. <laughs> oh, I think I get it now. Okay. I love how the support line is basically... I love how the support line is basically... Just, no one is selling... Ex that's Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, so... Um, I love how the support line is basically a solid line. Oh, I know, right? It's... uh. It's been very, very steady, ready, very steady, all the way up. It like gets, and then it stills now a little bit choppy. And then it was starting to steady this past week or so. It's past two weeks, really steady. And people kind of waiting maybe for new potential news and stuff. Yeah, I, who know? I don't know what happens with new news. It has to be real, legitimate news, right? Not, not fluff news. But that's the thing. I still think there's stuff on the horizon. And again, I keep on bringing up this damn. I'm gonna pull it up again. I keep on bringing it up. I mean, I keep on bringing it up, like doing it too much. But every time I bring it up, I, I get new insights because people share their thoughts on this shit. Oh. Right there, boom. There's too many options. Like I, that there's, again, I don't, I'm not sure of the timing or, or how substantive each particular release might be, but there's definitely a potential options, to, many options to GameStop out there. And then if it does get, if it's big enough, Polygon, yeah, you might get above 20. Dale, it helps you out. Yeah, I don't have to. Trace says it does. And, so, and, uh, and Steven did too. They're like, it helps. It helps with the, the YouTube algorithm or something. So that's great. We got, I mean, we have so many people, new people come in the past couple weeks too. It's great. Adds to the discussion. Like I say, rounds out all our thinking. It's great. I wonder if, I don't know how that YouTube thing's working, but we're getting some new folks. I think so. I mean, we got like this. I mean, some folks, some kind folks have shared the link at other, I mean, other forums and stuff. I know people share it on stock tweets and um, and just elsewhere too. So thanks, and then people just share it with their friends. So thank you. It's a better conversation, right? <laughs> Who was it? Someone's a 
I said, I, I asked, like, uh, how, how important is the chat to the, uh, just because sometimes the chat doesn't upload or it, it, it doesn't work or whatever like that. And I asked, how important is the chat? They're like, oh, yeah, you, 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 without the chat, there's nothing to watch. <laughs> I'm like, all right, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the truth. Ain't that the truth, huh? So the more folks, I feel like it builds out the convo. <clears throat> Kenny, the cover the short. Yeah, no, I, we're speculating. Yeah, we don't know. Maybe that $20 range, maybe, Kenny? I don't know, though. Just guesswork. Educational. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dusty, welcome back, Dusty. Welcome back. Oh, yeah, one update is part of 3Q. Okay, good point, Uber. Good point. So Q3 had uh, the one update, and they didn't have that last year, I don't believe. I think that was new this year, so that could help with that year-over-year -year stuff for sure. Yeah, it's going to be a big number. It's going to be a big number. If it's bigger than 18, 800%, that's even bigger. But uh, I wouldn't. That, that's a really big number, so I doubt that. They still had probably some more store closures and stuff's opening back up right now. So, but even still. Oh, Joe Salmon. Oh, on stock Twitch. Thank you. Was it? I think you're talking to me, Joe. Uh, yes, my name was. Uh, yes, because I started on stock Twitch after it was Joe, uh, who who is Salmon on stock Twitch that was talking about that five day uh, week move. Thank you. I started somewhere. I I lost track. And, um, but I like, that's the type of thing. I, there's so many different variables you can plot and stuff. And I didn't I actually didn't plot it until right now. Uh, but I like, I'm like, the, oh, the weekly and the five weekly. I'm like, I got to remember to pull that up. So thank you for sharing that. Thanks for catching that too. And comparing it to OSTK. I like that shit. I'm going to keep an eye on something like this now. Right. Just to see. Everything's a test. Everything's an experiment. Cheers. Cheers, Joe. Last one. Pretty much like clockwork guy. I'd be able to talk about Gats. Welcome back. Happy Friday. Happy Friday, man. Yep, yep, yep. Good close today. You got that right. Ooh, Steve back with that. G and T. G and T, huh? Oh man. Oh yeah. I told I told you I looked for the botanist. I couldn't find any. But I have some upstairs. Oh, I meant to look at what I actually have. I think it's I'm almost positive there's I think there's some Hendrix up there. So I'll be I'll be prepared, Steve. I'll be I'll be prepared. Okay. But Steve's already prepared tonight, though, huh? Okay. Yeah, it's Thomas. Yes, Thomas. Yes, I remember. Yeah, Thomas. Okay, I had the name right. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. Joe Sabin. <laughs> I did remember that. Cool, cool, cool. Dad, there's some, some, some parents here tracking GME, too. Okay. I had seen that. Uh, you're starting to see that, like, Tesla was starting to get that way, too, where a lot of people were tracking it. We'll have to see if it uh, reaches that. Thank you for sharing, though, huh? Some um, some some family picking up on the story too. You know what I mean? People who might not be dialed in even. That's the thing. I haven't seen it too much on the news, so that's interesting. <laughs> Steve, so he's already on. I shall pour another. Cheers, Steve. Thank you, makeshift. Thank you, makeshift. Oh, we're at forty-one now. Suck. Vinny and Tup has also an interesting chart. I missed that one. Oh, I missed that one. A friend had mentioned this this one to me too. Oh shit. Uh, oh, that, hey, that five-week thing, there's something there. What's up? <coughs> Damn, I missed this. This is a missed opportunity. Shit. I actually didn't know if they were going to make it. This was a conscious decision. I looked into it again. That's the thing. When the market's selling, just uh, ed it channels educational, right? When the market's selling off, I've said this before in other streams too, when the market's selling off crazy and everything was selling off, right? Everything was in the gutter. It's still, make the, just generally speaking, not advice, right? Because everyone has their own unique approach. It may even be that individual stocks aren't a good idea for you. But if if you are, just if, if that is what you're doing, and it does make sense, right? If it does make sense for you, it may, I, like I often think, for me personally, I'll diversify across a whole bunch of names. But what I wish I did even more of is I picked up even more of the speculative, speculative names that I thought were going bankrupt. And I, I, I think only maybe one of them, maybe that, that was a, the Latin American Airlines went bankrupt. And I was still up 50%, even after it went bankrupt. You know what I mean? But every, I don't think anything else, by the time TLRD did, I would, maybe I had a small position in TLRD, very small, because I felt that was, that was going to make it, but I think I already had it. But everything else, like everything else, like didn't go bankrupt. I'm like, shit. Like it should, I should have, because those ended up being the 10 baggers, right? Not, it, it shouldn't be a huge chunk of your portfolio, but it should be some of it. And uh, so one like Tup, I wrote off because I, I was trying to avoid some of the riskier ones. But I should have allocated a larger percentage of the port, of the Rowan Kitty portfolio to it. And um, 
and I didn't. And Top was one of them. There's a handful of them. There's a handful of them. Damn. Look at that. Ten, ten bagger. Laura. Was that bankruptcy valuations previously? Yeah, I, I actually, I, my quick analysis, I didn't do that deep dive credit analysis, but my quick take was that it might not make it. Yep. So Joe's out, and it would be painful if it traded back to that five week, but looking at Overstock, I mean, that was a massive move, so really it would be nothing to worry about. That's right. So that's how I think about this stuff, Joe. That's the thing. If people are day traders trying to play those short-term moves, um, then, uh, then it's like painful for those folks. But if you have that longer term t horizon, it's no problem. It's okay if it pulls back. So I mean, it, it probably wouldn't. Have been, we'd be talking about this particular thing. So I like like, like that Joe's already bringing it up. Just say hey, heads up. Even if it pulls back, it could be constructive. That's a popular word in the industry that I like too. <laughs> I don't even need let's get a live person. <laughs> well, with your father, with your father, yeah, yeah. Oh. People talk about the positioning, yep. Buy your beer, Russ. Maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe down the line. Now, if this works out, if this works out, we'll see, we'll see. Not until the, I think, because I, I still feel, like I keep on saying, it's not time for victory laps. Like, it's not, uh, I, it has tripled, but like I say, that's, I, I'm, I'm going to play like this for more than just the stock tripling, right? So maybe down the line, Russ, though, right? Cheers, Russ, cheers. You said that before, too. Oh, that's funny. Yep, so insurance has two pullbacks are normal for stocks. The game is still early. Yeah, it's chill. It's fine. Remember, we've had two, we've had two sizable pullbacks. Um, really, not much else. <laughs> That's not, it's not like it's been terrible, but it's been quick. Keep on saying how the it's, it's kind of working out where it's um, so far could change could change on Monday, but the position has been um, not so bad on a management front. Could change though. But yeah, pullbacks pull are part of the game. Could be healthy, as Gat says. Could be healthy. Could be constructive. I agree with that. I, I mean, we even said it back. We said we said it. We definitely said it after earnings. Remember that? Because we it was as we were analyzing the uh, earnings report, it was down ten percent or whatever. And we said, what if it comes right back to this uh, this previously uh, resistance level in access support? And that's what it did. Almost exactly. Almost exactly. And then boom. Know what I mean? I mean, it's ridiculous that that's how it worked out, but we talked about that. Oh, yeah. So Jen said, my dad was like, I'm really getting tired of seeing this because a few months ago he thought I was crazy. Oh, yeah. Jen said that last stream, too, that her friends thought she was crazy, too. That he was declined. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, we're reading that. Ooh, we're reading that. Oh, I was wrong. I thought it was gonna dip below. <laughs> gonna go down below fifteen right before. That would have been funny. Oh, Gats too. A couple of folks out here having that same convo. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I say it, right, guys? Team, yeah. <laughs> he has no idea what GME is, but Martian stock. Yeah, we had two. Yeah, two big, two big pull. But would we say big? I know I just said big too. Was this one kind? Of, this one's not that big. It's not even. Yeah, it's not. It, oh boy, it's not big at all. Is that ten? It didn't even go down ten percent. Wow. This does. This barely counts. It's just one, and that was the earnings one, and it was only two days, because it was up Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. They announced Wednesday. Is that it? Or maybe three days? I forget. That's what I mean. It's been okay. It doesn't mean. It, uh, I agree with y'all. Oh, Gats agrees. Gats, I was saying what you said too. I think uh, maybe Uber or other folks said this too. Seventeen to eighteen is is the potential pain point. I don't know about pain point. Oh, maybe risk tolerance. That's the part I want to learn more. Oh, Gats. Uh, Gats, did you just show up? Or did maybe uh, you showed up a while ago and you heard that too, but uh, I'm in the same camp. I see that 17 to 18 level as uh, meaningful. 
and also that uh, it could I don't know about the risk tolerance, but for like yourself, I want to learn more about it too. And the right now, the only way I can I mean, people chatting in the chat is helping me, right? But actually seeing what happens after if it were to break through, like if we go to eighteen, nineteen, and then we're at twenty five two days later, then I'm like, yep, okay. <laughs> I'm like, yep, that was meaningful, and uh, it did trigger, it did trigger something. But until that, I, I have no idea. And if I again, I just think that because of the damn, I think of that the 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 damn chart and the the market cap level. Oh yeah, I saw it. Oh, was it you, Polygon, who talked about that error on uh, the GameStop website? Was, oh yeah, yeah, I think I, I'd seen that somewhere. Talk about that so many people saw it yeah 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 it's trying too many names yeah <laughs> yeah right <laughs> too many names yeah i'll remember now i'll remember the more confirmation we've seen our thesis the more interest is driven that's right what are you adding to Gats? I agree with this. The more interest is different. That's right. All right, after hours closed now. Oh, I just pulled that up. Yeah, team team one shot pros. Yep. You stay stayed above fifteen, just barely. Being the top stock mentioned on Oh, lots of eyeball. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, we'll see what happens this week. Remember last week? I, I said on Monday that last week, and I was like, I was really impressed by how many folks were talking about GameStop. Of course, that was following one week of digesting the Microsoft partnership news. And I was like, really impressed that people were talking about, I mean, we know why, right? Because of the PR, I get it. But people were less focused on the discs and stuff. Now, we didn't have any new material news this week from GameStop anyway. Uh, so I don't, there'll probably be less chatter this weekend, I would think. Uh, but I'm still curious to see. But uh, that's I, I, I people have been talking about this how um, different uh, in different areas people are talking about GameStop and stuff. And I think yeah, that's great. It, it could be a reflection of uh, sentiment shifting. I mean, I think it is. Yeah. So Polygon, the GameStop now a billion dollar company for the first time 2018. Right. That's what that's what it'll be. And thank you. That'll probably be the title, Polygon. I was thinking about that, right? Title of something, I don't know, tweet or uh, the video or I don't know. But I don't know if it'll get it. I bet it gets it. I doubt it gets a headline uh, on the media though. Hey, what's up, Myth? No, nah, I didn't see that. Holy Toledo. That's a big drop on that. Talk about that. You mentioned this. Uh... I assume it's a biotech, huh? Look at that chart. <whistles> wow. Hey, right back to right back to support. <laughs> Damn. I think I've seen this name before. Is it like, like was it flu stuff? Was it flu vax like a vac vaccination type stuff? I assume it failed the trial. Not failed the trial, but it didn't. Uh, you know what I mean? Wow. Wow, I saw it a while back. It went up that much. Wow. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, ask about the glitch. Yeah, people are talking about that. Someone mentioned the Quiver Quant website. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Talk about, yeah, weren't there? And there was something that was tracking, like, Robin Hood. But I don't think that's available anymore, but tracking, like, website mentions and stuff. It's marginal analysis, right? I think we'd all agree with that. Marginal analysis, but still something you might check out to just see. I, I mean, for the individual investor, it's marginal analysis. But aren't there, like, strategies built on this type of a thing? From like from stuff I've read, I I have I've never seen. I've never seen anything firsthand like built on sentiment or social media sentiment or anything like that. But I have read things that said it was meaningful to folks. So I bet uh, so it's marginal for my type of analysis. I'm trying to like poke around and stuff. But for other folks, it may be even more meaningful. Like what people are talking about. And I mean, it's tough to gauge sentiment. But I mean, you could probably. I mean, they do. They write robots for this. Beep boop boop boop. 
Boop, 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 boop. They figure it out. I don't know. Maybe if it says a certain word or something, then it's bull. I mean, I'm stuck to it. Don't you? You're saying bullish or bearish, so that that's that's an easier one, right? I think. Oh, GME received a grant from the federal government. Did it say how much? Oh, I can't get in there. Okay. Oh, and I wonder what for. How much and what for? If it's true, I don't know. Finish smarter than these. Well, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm in agreement, Rob, that management isn't. Uh, I'm certainly in agreement that management is uh, competent, and that's unfortunately that's an argument I've had to make a number of times. Not so much lately. I think a lot of people are coming around to this, but I used. Again, I don't think that their record, their track record, has been perfect since they took over. But I felt they've largely done mostly the right things, and um, and so I'm agree and agreeing with you. I mean, I don't know about um, relative to other folks. I just mean they seem competent, like they know what they're doing. You know what I mean? So we're on the same page there. And then because of that, what are the implications from a, a fair value standpoint and price action, blah, 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 which I suppose that's what you're getting at. But all, all sequel, you know what I mean? You like you, you like them. To, that, like I said, it was a big part of my thesis. I assume Ron's too. May ensure that they're competent and they know what they're doing. They're not screwing up. And uh, they proved it today. And so, I uh, again, it doesn't mean they fully pull off a complete transformation or anything like that. But I feel much more comfortable with them at the helm. Um I'd say I'd say following the last earnings release, right? I mean, other news, the price has been going up. I know, I get that part, but I I, I feel I've been pretty objective in my analysis of, of them, and I and we'll see what happens through like the end of the year and stuff. But um, I don't know. I can, I've gotten things wrong, you know, but I got, I've gotten things wrong with management teams before too. Yeah, there you go. Talking about alternative data tracking. Yep. There you go. Hey, Eisenhower from Germany. Cheers to Germany, huh? October. Oktoberfest. I don't think this year, but generally, huh? <laughs> A couple. Talk about your October. All right. All right, Eisenhower. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Oh, shit. I'm running low. Friday, though. You know I might have one more. We got to see. The reverse split. I doubt that. Yep. Gat says management. new management been very important. Yep, yep, yep. Damn, I keep on thinking I'm a little bit caught up, but then I'm like, ah. Okay. Yep, yep Russ, Russ saw that close too, yeah. So yeah, Ryan, I was talking about that. I think that the 15th price action will be included. Wait, can I, do I have to say save? Yes. <gasps> Excuse me. I think... I think you reported end of day, Ryan. So I think that that, that day's action will be included. I think. <laughs> Cheers, Russ. Have a nice night, Russ. <laughs> Happy Friday. Have a good weekend. Trey's back. Trey's back. There we go. 45. Let's jump to 45. Happy Friday, Trey. I don't think we see meaningful cover in the due date. Yeah, I don't think so either. I don't think we'll see meaningful cover either. Just a hunch, but I just a hunch, but I don't think so either. So don't be surprised. I don't think I don't think I think most of us are on the same page there. Like I don't expect it to be below sixty, and I am entertaining the possibility that it's above seventy. But um, I guess my base case would be in the sixties again. Yep, I agree, Gats. Yep, Timothy sees that too. Welcome, Timothy. Little, yeah, I think that we're all on the same page there. Okay. Yep. What are you thinking? A slow squeeze that begins to accelerate with new catalysts? Yeah, maybe. Cool. 
Could be a long, slow squeeze. Cat's saying the same thing. Yeah, it could be with the potential for explosive. Yeah, I don't know. I just want the, fun, like I said, the fundamental news is what I'm trying to keep my eye on, right? And the stuff, the, the upside will take care of itself. And short stuff could accelerate, sure. But uh, that's the thing. Like if there's PR on the horizon in the next, I'll call it six weeks now, the rest of this stuff will take care of itself. You know what I mean? It's nice that the, um, I mean, there, would, there wouldn't be anything to talk about if this was just a short squeeze stuff, right? That's why I keep on saying Side show. You can't. How, how long can you talk about that? But there's a fundamental thesis here, and that's what makes this so fascinating. <laughs> when you juxtapose my bullishness with that level, I'm just so confused. Election, election impact on consoles? Nah, I doubt it. I doubt it will be a big thing. I don't think there will be much of an impact there. But I don't know. <laughs> yep. Uber, Uber ads. People that... Uh, Gaming is both COVID and recession-proof with massive growth tailwinds. That's the thing. So I mentioned in that tweet that I tossed out. I forget where. <coughs> That uh, that uh, that uh, Jamie has the scale and loyal to the thrive online. That's the thing. If it does, if it does kick ass online, which I think it, I think it will. And um, that's the thing. People keep on like criticizing its past performance. I'm like, yo, it's only gonna get better. It's only gonna get better. And uh, and if they succeed in that, then this whole then there's to to Uber's point, the, the COVID and recession proof. If they have this online presence and people are wanting to shop there and blah blah blah, then like it's gonna crush it. And that these things are indeed tailwinds. So people, a lot of people, were criticizing GameStop earlier this year because they had to, literally had to close their doors. Oh, it's tough in any business, um, but this will change. This will change that a bit. The lease liabilities are so minimal, and now that there's a one billion dollar e-commerce biz. At a one-time price of sale, which is cheap for e-commerce, is worth what we're worth now. The option, uh, uh, optionality is unworldly. I agree, Uber. That's the most. Com that's the, that's the compelling aspect of GameStop. That optionality shit. You know. <laughs> it's tough to value. It's tough to value that, but um. That, that but yeah, you know what I mean. Like you can just. Uh, Oh yeah, what's available? Oh yeah, I didn't check this. Did I? Did I? I think I did. Maybe I did. Oh, back down. I saw a million, didn't I? Was that yesterday? Low rate though. That rate's declining. Don't know what that means. Don't ask me. The hell do I know? I don't know. Yeah, uh, yeah, like Gats, yeah, so that's a question that I want to revisit after the fact. That's like, a, like a, the juxtaposing the bullishness with the the bearishness as indicated by the short interest. Because I, I uh, maybe they can, if they get out just fine, then I'm just like, all right, that's why. There was an aspect of the trade I just didn't understand. But if it does go a bit crazy, I need to ask that question too as to how did that, what's going on there? How, how like you're saying, how we all see this bullishness. But um, I don't know. We'll have to see. Grand Sloan's are per a modest 10K. Okay, so real small. Thank you, Alex, for sharing that. How much GameStop got from um, as the grant. That's right. They've been right since 2018. That's right. That's the thing. We say that, huh? They've been right for so long. The shorts. And the long. Even the longs have, the, who went long. We talked about this on the last stream. Jeez. The folks who were long and got burned by GameStop, right? I think Uber and I were talking about this. Got burned by it. They're like, "Oh, it's dead." Uh, they like people were just so even the longs were so tired of being burned. They just threw in the towel. In that, um, what are we saying, Gats? The whole Polygon that they've just been right since 2018. But that's the thing. I I felt like things were changing. That's the thing. I think that's what uh, Gats is getting at. Like the story was changing. It was unfolding differently. And um, I don't know. Maybe uh, is it possible we picked up on the story faster than other folks did? I guess. I I always just think that. 
individual investors tend to be slower, but I don't know. It depends on the style, I guess. Oh, yeah, Markel saying there's a bearish engulfing candle on the BBX. A little bit bearish, huh, Markel? Yep, and sure, I agree, insurance. Management teams all over this turnaround plan, they're here to hit. I agree. I think they've been, they are dialed in, I think. And what would it take for me to change my mind? Some shitty Q4 and Q1 performance. Maybe like, like the, what's that old Buffett axiom where uh, you don't want to be the, the captain on that sinking ship or something like that where you don't want to be... <laughs> You'd rather be in uh, at least a ship that's staying afloat, but I—that's the thing. I think the that optionality was there, that if GameStop could turn itself around, that they could thrive. And um, but indeed, maybe it was—it's so rough that they they fail. I don't think that they will. But Q4 performance, Q1 next year, Q2 will indicate that. We'll know within 12 months, for sure. Oh, for the grant information. Okay, thanks, Ted. Yep, I agree with this. Much stronger. Yep, Polygon. I agree with Polygon. New management team is much stronger than the one that ran the company into the ground. Yeah, Trey saying maybe the shorts wanted to go to zero and not just four. Yeah, interesting. Just It's interesting how people can come to vastly different conclusions. You'd have to think that they're doing different types of analysis. I, um, I, I, yeah. Yes, Polygon. Did we talk? We talked about the fact we're hardly above the price where Sherman joined, despite the fact we know much more about Sherman and his team than we did before his madness. I, I, we talked about that a lot. Yeah, for the folks we talked about this in the last stream. For the folks who don't realize, the market cap wise, we're only where the market right now. We're only at where the market cap was in like March and April of 2019. We're like right here, <laughs> turnaround wise. We're uh, we're barely above. Maybe we're a little bit above since Sherman took over. We're we're above when Jim Bell took over. He took over in June, maybe early June, right around there, right before that big sell-off. So um, take that as you wish, but like uh, there's just market because they bought back so many shares. They bought back a shit ton of shares, like 37% in 2019, something crazy. And for that reason, the when you adjust the market cap, it's important to remember that, uh, I mean, we're like flat since Sherman took over, which is pretty impressive to Polygon's point. Turns out they're more like all-stars. Exactly. They, these, the team will know in hindsight right now, but they, this, this management team could be all-stars. You know what I mean? That's why I thought it was always unfortunate. People are kind of um, knocking them. And um, even recently, they were re knocking them as recent as a, a month, a couple of months ago. Even on the earnings release, people were kind of ripping them. But even earlier in the year, like I said, I was, and I agreed with uh, Hestia and Perman on a lot of their analysis on certain things. But up to that point, I felt as though the management team had did a good enough job where I was almost impartial as to whether or not they got the board seats because I'm like, nah, they're doing an okay job. And so it's nice to see people coming around to this fact that part of that is because the price is rising. I, I have long figured this, that um, people were kind of negative on management, not so much for the specifics of what they were doing, but because the price action had been had done nothing, right? Whereas I felt this whole time, the fun, like I said, the, the fundamentals have always been in, uh, not always have largely been unfolding in favor of that bullish thesis. And a big part of that is because of the management decisions. That's not to say there was flawless execution, but it was for the most part, very good execution. And that was why I, I didn't only maintain my bullish. I've been getting more bullish as the story's been unfolding, which is why I was going heavier as the, as the story uh, went, went more and more. I'm just like, it didn't make any sense to me. Um, and so it's nice to see, and I, but that's the thing. I, in my head, I'm like, yeah, we'll wait till this price action starts moving. And I bet people will start changing not just their opinion on management, but just GameStop generally, that reflexivity, that's kind of what I was talking about because I feel like I, I was, my, like I said, my conviction was rising over time because of the fundamental events that were folding. Then I'm like, oh yeah, let's, we'll just wait because if this, if this price does start to run, then all of a sudden the narrative will shift and people will start talking about it more optimistically, even though not that much has changed. Mo some stuff has changed, like the, micro the, the formal announcement of the Microsoft partnership 
has changed things a little bit, but they were already talking about this stuff last year that they were already testing the concepts in late 2019. And quite obviously, Microsoft was one of those vendors. Maybe I, I've been figuring Sony was one of those vendors too. I don't know what a formal uh, agreement might look like, formal partnership, if at all. I don't know what that might look like, but they, they've already been talking about this for 12 weeks. We're just getting the news about it now. And that was partly, he was kind of getting at this, Dimitri was getting at this in this article, saying about with Sony specifically, but like, this stuff was has been talked about by management during the conference calls. It's been in the presentations. What now we're now seeing is just like um, the ex, the um, reported execution of what they've been talking about, and uh, that's the thing. And so from the value value investor perspective, like Barry, you can read all his letters on that 13D. Like we're like this is likely going to happen. This is likely going to unfold this way unless, I mean, unless it, it was. Yeah, I don't know. It just seemed likely that it was going to work out to this point so far. Uh, and now that's um, the discussion still to be had here. But I always thought management, I had my doubts at times. I had my doubts at times. But um, it could prove to insurance's point that, boy, in hindsight, it could be true. We'll look back on this team as truly all-stars. You know what I mean? Um, it will require a bit more time, a bit more time. But I'm, I'm, I'm potentially in that camp insurance. I, I like that phrase, all-star team. Yeah, it's BT2 at this time, Trey. Yeah, the come, Trey. You've inspired a couple of other folks jumping in here. Thank you, everybody. Cruise control. Is Jen Christian Cruise Control? Oh, that's a great name, Jen. Oh, nice name. Cruise Control. That's sick. Yeah, they look like I'm slacking. Yeah, Trey. Yeah. In, in Polygon ads, isn't it wild? We know we now know the board is all stars, but the price is still where it was before Sherman joined. Mm. Excuse me, that beer, may that beer. Market hasn't priced in the skill of the new management team. When Sherman joined, nobody could say. Well, I, if I were if I were to play devil's advocate, Polygon, what I'd say is, uh, it could be that the skill in the management. I'm going to play devil's advocate here just for the sake of it. it. Could be that the skill in the management team was ensuring that the company didn't go bankrupt and making sure they would survive to the consoles. From here on out, it's a it's a little bit of a and not here on out because I even still think it's undervalued uh, compared to the legacy business. But now it's a little bit of a different discussion. How can they execute on a true transformation down the line? So I I don't know if I totally agree that the skill eh, it's it's debatable, right? It's subjective. We could. Argue that to the cows come home, you know? But just something, of just you know what I mean? There's different levels of um, management skills that are being, um, that are on display. And it may be that this latest price action, assuming this holds and blah, 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 that it's um, reflective of their the, the actions they've taken so far. And then we just got to see from here on out. Yeah, so Mitt saying, part of me thinks there will not be a squeeze. The big boys using sleight of hand to avoid it, but that was okay. Gee, I mean, that's the thing. I don't know enough meth, right? That's what I think about too. I'm like, yeah, maybe this doesn't. I know everyone's like, kind of like, oh, this is almost base case stuff at this point, but I just don't know. So I'm with you. Maybe, uh, maybe, it, maybe it's not. Maybe it can be avoided, and I just can't. I can't comprehend why. But regardless, fundamental thesis. <laughs> fundamental thesis. Like the free cash flows. The free cash flows are what drive this uh, fair value. Um, and will drive price action looking over the longer term future. I mean, that's a fact. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't mean it always trades at that at that specific price. I mean, we don't even know precisely what those free cash flows will be. But I'm just saying, uh, hopefully we're all on board with that. Seamless integration of Game Informer with the app is powerful. I hope that's seamless too. I, I like that that Game Informer is part of it. What about Game Informer, dude? Just, yeah, I saw the. I think they were just trying to transform Game Informer. Yeah, could drive business more. Yeah. Everyone can talk about a thousand. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. 
Good point, Trey. He said, Trey simply says, this management team definitely at least fixed the market sentiment, so give them credit for that. Uh, and I, I'm with you, Trey. I think some of the uh, some people's issues was just that it took so long. But again, I would just say, that it's a new management team. Shepard's only been at the helm 18 months. It's really not that long. But some folks have a shorter-term horizon on some of these things, and I think that's what frustrated a lot of people. Um, even I, like, I was kind of surprised it was trading where it was in July and August. I was surprised by that. And, uh, but... Obviously, I maintained my conviction, of course, right? But I was like, I even after the earnings, I'm like, uh, I'm hoping we get a little bit more here, and now we're starting to get some stuff, right? And sentiment shift, and that's what Trey's saying. Uh, it's taken a while, perhaps, but it's it's here, and um, I think I agree that they deserve some credit for that. Oh yeah, that market cap adjusted chart. I'll see if I can pull that up. Boom. Oh, wait. Is this it? Close last market cap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I need to make it big. That's it. Oh. That's what Polygon was talking about. Um, Justin had sent this over. That the uh, oh sorry the blue line is that close is the is that price in the uh, the 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 light blue line is the uh, the market cap there and you can see that market cap is only just right there which was right around that April you know what I mean it's like it's still early that's what Polygon was talking about one thing I fault them for is not trying to enough to push innovation for the shares one thing about that tray is I think that them having to close their I think the pandemic kind of impacted that tray they remember we were just getting more news about those stores and stuff i felt i think there were articles in february and march from ign it was like mar early march and you know what i mean and that's uh, as far as like innovating their stores and stuff i think that kind of had a negative impact on that tray for what that's worth that was my thinking now nah, gats I, that article i think from um from uh, william comes up next thursday next thursday We'll keep an eye out for that shit. Yeah, next Thursday. Okay. <coughs> Alex, I I don't know. I think I think a lot of this stuff was was open. I that they kept. I mean, they were talking about a lot of this stuff on the on the turnaround. Like I said, I was. My analysis, I was like I said, I was my bullishness was increasing. I think a lot of people weren't paying attention. Alex talking about um, management's turnaround, people weren't paying attention to it. I like I, I I've been seeing it happen. I um, I think people just a lot of people didn't care, and I'll tell you why. I think a big part of it was the price action, which is the opportunity, right? That's the opportunity. That's why if you're analyzing the fundamentals and shit, you can you can you can you can, you can develop the conviction based on that stuff and. Who gives a shit about the price action, right? I think people, like, I pay attention to that stuff, but like I always say, it's marginal analysis. The real thesis that allows you to maintain, uh, first of all, build a, a, a heavy position, maintain a heavy position, uh, add accordingly and so forth, and just hold it through, like, ups and downs and so forth. That takes um, that, that fundamentals analysis, like looking at that stuff, and then the price action, uh, it takes care of itself. Um, I think a lot of people are just sleeping on it complacency we were talking about right on one of the streams so trades just saying their concepts yeah like i was just saying i'll see if you responded team one pro shop pros have a nice weekend team one have a nice uh, happy friday night have a nice weekend oh so jen jen already beat me to it thanks jen because jen's saying because uh because uh because covid impacted oh yeah henry cpe i had it pulled up somewhere Hey, that chart's looking interesting. So I, so, um, what's this again? Callan, is that the, um, is it, is that profile? Ah, there it is. Yeah, Permian. Is it just an EMP firm? Oil, natural gas? 
I remember it being risky. I have a there's a lot of energy positions and I didn't go with this one. You got anything any more info? Wow, that's right. It was one of those ones that went up big. Hey, yeah, you got any more info on CP? What's I I've looked into this many, many times. Oh, you know what? It was definitely in the it was definitely in the portfolio. I saw that big buy. I saw that big buy back in uh, February, March. I, I, I definitely, uh, oh, if by Stephen Webster. Nothing recent, though. Yeah, I mean, is it, is it, is it any different than the under energy plays? That'd be my, qu my question, Henry. Chart, charts looking interesting, right? A, a lot of the, uh, some energy charts are looking interesting. Here, I'll keep scrolling. Again, I've looked into it in the past, and it was that insider buying that caught my attention, I remember. But I don't know why it's not. Uh... It's not there now. I must have thought that it was. Uh... Let me see the bond prices. Oh, Ooh, 26 is low, Henry, for their 2026s. Oh, yeah, that's right. It was a merger between, wasn't it a merger between Carrizo and maybe Callan? And I think, uh, what was his name? The big, uh, one of the, uh, um, Paulson. Wasn't Paulson involved with this? No, wasn't Paul's. Wow, okay. I'm surprised I misremembered that. Must have been someone else. That doesn't look good. Those bond prices don't look good. Heads up. That's kind of a little bit of a red flag for me. Heads up, Henry. So it's uh, first of all energy risk, right? I mean, that's like I said. I got a bunch of energy plays. Some of them I said no to. They got to be able to. They got to be able to survive some major downturns. And then I uh, now there's material credit risk. It appears. Yeah, there you go. These bonds got down to five dollars in April. There you go. That's why it's on the portfolio. Even I have my limits when it comes to a deep value uh, potential position. But uh, that insider buying really, I was like, oh, this is some good insider buying. It wasn't the management team, but even still, this looks dire. I mean, I'll, I'll keep showing if you got any, something else, uh, some more characteristics, you know what I mean? I'm sure it trades cheaply relative to some of the fu fundamentals, but uh, um, nothing. Multiple transactions that is entering into. Sell substantial of its non operative assets for 30 million. Yikes. Okay, I'll keep scrolling. 3.4 billion debt. Ouch. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uber. Sorry. I uh, was. We're talking about uh, the difference between 17 then versus now. Oh, shit. Right there. Just about two. Yeah, just under. We would we say? Um, yeah, just one billion, right? Or one point. Sorry, what's that question? Click that for a point in line. Click that for a point in line. With your market cap commentary and note the difference between 17 then versus 17 now oh yes 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 as to what the market cap was so i so i penciled through this i thought it was funny i um for a reference here 
So uh, we all know Justin's written a ton of um, a ton of a, a ton of articles on GameStop, right? His first article, and now I know uh, he, he's talked about how he's averaged down this whole time. But just for his, if you agree with his analysis and you don't think he's a good um, analyst, which I know most of us do, his first article was on May second, twenty nineteen. And the market cap at that time, to Uber's point, I think that's what Uber's getting at. It was like eight hundred something million, because there was one hundred two million shares out then. Eight hundred something million, in in May twenty nineteen, when Justin first wrote his article, and now it's nine seven seven. Like it's barely above where it was when Justin was first at least started uh, um, authoring articles about GameStop. Now again, he has said he's 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 averaged down since that price point. That was I think the price point was around like, where was it? Like eight nine dollars something like that. Um, but I mean, that it even, it piqued his interest even at that, at, it, he was like, like picking up on something. Right. And like I said, that was around the time I was getting interested in it too. I'm like, oh, there's something potentially here. That was, it turned out to be, we were, we were both re very early just watching the story. Right. But, um, market cap wise, like it's barely above where it was when we were first taking note of that stuff. Right. Because of those buybacks. And that was why talk about that. And I, I think that's what Uber's getting at here is that, um, I think that's about 15. So it'll be, uh, you know what I mean? 17, so 17 back then was a $1.7 billion company, which is around when those, they were takeout rumors, right? In January, uh, December, 2018, January, 20, or oh, January, 2019, $17 was 1.7 billion. $17 today is 1.1 billion. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's, that's significant. I mean, that's 55% higher, right? I mean, <laughs> you know what I mean? That's way lower. It's way lower. I, people are still. This is why Justin um, was asking, like, like, uh, like, is it worth? And this is why he sent over some of this stuff. Is like, I don't think people appreciate this. I don't think people are appreciating this enough. I really think that people will say, "Oh, buybacks." They they know that maybe the management team did the buybacks, but I don't think anyone are uh, not anyone. Sorry, I don't mean to use such strong language, but I, I think there's still many people who are underappreciating the impact on the value of the business because of those buybacks, opportunistic buybacks, mind you, right? Jim Bell talking about how he knew where that price point would be. Oh, such, such, I mean, if it works out, it's, it's even more badass. You read that transcript that, in that conference call. Sorry, I got to bring it up. I got to bring it up again. I, I, how many times have I done this now? Look at this. This is like the fourth time I brought this up during the consoles. I don't care. Uh, an, an analyst asked Jim about the buybacks. And uh, we are we remain, this is December of last year, we remain supremely confident in our bounce back on or about November of next year. I mean, it's ridiculous. Talk about all-star team, huh? And I think there'll be a point next year where we can almost name the date. Oh, wait, this was a quote. This isn't the right. Oh, damn, that's not the right one. Is it? We we, we tend to over... The, oh, shit, this is a good quote, though. I think uh, Dimitri mentioned this quote. Was this... Okay, so this isn't the quote, but wait a second. <laughs> and, I, <coughs> and I think there'll be a point next year where we can almost name the date. What's this? I mean, that is going to have a profound impact on our business. What's the question? Has a disk drive, not as much of a jump in file size, then of course subscription and even backwards compatible. We know virtually the same thing you do, so we learn from the same thing. We're obviously thrilled that there's a disk drive, right? We didn't know that at the time. Having the disc, presumably, on higher priority. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. We ran supremely confident in our bounce back. So he was confident in the bounce back, too. He also talks about the price point later. But point next year, we can almost name the date. I mean, that is going to have a profound impact on our business. We tend to over-index early cycle because the disc requires some level of education to the consumer. There's a choice to be made. There's function functionality to explain now. Okay. That wasn't even the quote that I was looking for. <laughs> what is this one? We buy back stock because we fundamentally believe that our stock is trading at a discount because we're confident, blah, blah, blah. We're, and we're, is it all confident? We're, we're very confident as to where our stock is headed given what we, what's going to happen to, a, what's going to happen in 11 months. So we're very, very confident that bounce back. We're very, very confident that, uh, that all that work's being done around margin chart. Where, where the hell was I going with this? Why was I talking about this? Oh, the market cap. So I don't think people are appreciating that they crushed it with those buybacks. Those buybacks, they did it about an average price of about $5 per share. And at the time, everyone's like, what the hell are you doing? That was even the question. Crow Nagel. I think that's the $1.50 price target, right? Isn't that uh, the guy who has the $1.50 price target? I think that's the name from Bank of America. And that he was asking about the buybacks, which is a good question. 
and then uh, and then Jim answers, and he's like, "Yeah, hey, this is what we think." And now, I mean, if this works out, this looks this looks, this looks brilliant. Talk about it, it does. We always talk about buying back shares opportunistically, well below what fair value is. And Jim Bell talked about his confidence of where he, I presume, where he felt fair value was. And um, and this is the whole thing about that market cap. I'm like, yo, they thought this last year, and now it's coming to fruition. And uh, I don't think people are really appreciating how much they bought back at, at those discounted prices. 37% of their shares. I think it was 37% in total, including the Dutch auction, <laughs> I think. So that's what I mean. If... If Justin's thesis and my thesis is accurate, right? If you're buying into our analysis and stuff, then it still it still seems like it's early and um, on a on a market cap basis. That's why I see so many people talk about the the price levels and stuff, and even mine and myself talk about fifteen dollar price level, right? But it's that market cap that matters. And on a market cap basis, it still seems like it's early compared to where it has been. A big part of that is because of the buybacks, but also cash on the books. You know what I mean? Like, I uh, I know the cash needs to be used and blah blah. But I'm but I'm just saying I. Um, that's what I. That's why I always ask. What do you like? What do you think this company's going to generate? Looking out eighteen months or something. All right. Sorry, it sent me on a tangent there. Good. Good point, Uber. Direct action on improving the stores. Just kind of more. Yep. So yep. Microsoft partnership should help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uber saying, yeah, even if Jim, GME simply re-rates, leave, forget the squeeze. So I like this. For the sake of the discussion, it's fun to discuss, like I said, but Uber saying, even just forget the squeeze shit, even if it just re-rates to what fair, closer to what we estimate fair value is. Uh, have a Vegas get together. <laughs> Uber. Oh, that's funny. Definitely party mode. Okay, so Trey's in the same camp. that They can't fault them too bad because of what happened. But yeah, they think better push. All right, better push. Better to push the envelope instead of just maintaining the status quo. Yeah, I, I don't disagree, Trey. I just think, uh, I mean, having to close the doors and everything, having to deal with that. But also, I think it was just very important just to get to the get to the new consoles. Have more cash because a, a legitimate turnaround. I mean, maybe they could have tested some more. I'm sure that's what you're getting at. But the real meaningful transformation is going to happen over the next couple of years. And I think, excuse me, remember this management team, only only 18 months or so. So to fully test these new paths and stuff, I think it just takes time. But indeed, maybe they could have been testing. Excuse me, <laughs> they could have been testing some more stuff and stuff. And uh, anyway, oh, cruise control was your nickname. That's a badass nickname. Ain't no doubt about that. Oh, this is gonna jump on me. Oh shit. Oh, my way behind. What the hell happened? What happened? I was right there. I was right there. I could have sworn. Oh, no. Oh, no. What have I let happen? Oh, there you go. Uber. Ooh, Uber. Said, uh, I was saying how a, a, a squeeze, especially a major squeeze, wasn't my base case, mainly because I just don't know enough about this to really have a, a when I, like even a confident opinion above 50%. Like, I just don't know enough about it. But Uber's saying, and we know Uber has shared a ton of research on this, done a lot of analysis. Um, he talked with, I, like, he, uh, I, I respect his opinion here, saying that he uh, he views it as more more likely than not. Right, more likely than less. We use it as more likely than less likely. Right, not saying it's a foregone conclusion, of course, but um, in his opinion, I appreciate you sharing that Uber. Yeah, I um, <laughs> I just don't know. All right, I appreciate you sharing that Uber. I think it's more likely than less likely. And by squeeze, and by by squeeze, I, as I as Uber and I like that's it requires the shorts closing. And then the price action going up significantly, like it going up three x isn't part as most of us now know in the chat. chat we've discussed this quite a bit. That that's not the short squeeze. That's been a, just a re a re rating, as Uber says, closer to fair value because of um, people are coming around sentiment shifting. People are coming around to the fair value there. But indeed, if there if there if there is a sudden need or urge to want to close, and that price action goes, wow. All right, Uber, thanks for sharing. 
I will, I'm not going to ask what you think the like because I don't because I can't even be asked this because I don't know what the answer is. Like, what happens if? What does the squeeze look like in your mind? I uh, I'm not even going to ask that, but um, you I wonder if you have even some thoughts because I don't. It's just so messy. How can you even form a solid opinion on what that even looks like? Like people talk about when do you, when would you sell on a squeeze? It's like who the hell knows? Uh, no one knows. I don't know. Maybe I'll change my mind once we if we break 17, 8. Like I said, if it starts popping after like if we if we get to 17, 18, then it's at 20, 22, 24, and then it happens quick. I mean, <laughs> then you may say, well, that's not really much of a strong opinion because it already happened. That's fair. But that's how I have to think about this stuff if I don't have high confidence in it. High conviction, rather. I do know I wouldn't want to be short. As an individual investor, anyway, I couldn't. I couldn't do it. Yep, as Gad says, the great thing about this, we can all have slightly different base case and basis for the stock's price action and movement and all into being partially right. That's probably how it's going to work out, Gats, right? Little bits and pieces of our different theses will be right, right? Oh, Gats, is, Gats agrees with Uber. Wow, okay. I agree, I agree the, uh, well, as you all know, right, the, the, the short thesis is looking more tenuous which e with each, with this, uh, with each incremental dollar, assuming it holds. That's like I said, it could sell off next week and then it's a little bit different, but everything continues to scream bullish. And I'm just like, yo, the, the short thesis is even, it's looking more tenuous. And again, I still don't know if they can get out. That's probably the bigger thing is that I don't know. They can just, maybe they can just get out and it's no big deal. Then we're talking slow and fast ones. Yeah. Gats sees it as an inevitability. Yikes. Okay. Gats wants to learn too. Yep. Same camp. And then we're talking about, yep, speed. Yep, speed of uh, how it might unfold. Before, wow. Interesting. Talk about the Tesla squeeze. Wow, Hugo says there won't be before earnings release. Uh, I still lean toward the price action, though. Uh, 15 is not enough. 17, 18, maybe. But I'm like 20, 25, 30? I feel like you'd be forced. That's the thing. Either, either, either I don't know. I, I, I gotta, now i got to try to get cut up. So I feel like some of the po my points have already been talked about in the chat. So what does it matter? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Polygon saying that market cap chat, uh, it makes it look so much more stark how undervalued we still are, in my opinion. That's what I think, too. That's why it's a good chart. Thanks so much to Justin. Um, look at that mark. Like, we're at a billion. <laughs> look at this. This is great. It's not to say that the past performance is necessarily where it's headed. No one here is saying that, right? It's just if they are successfully turning around the business and then even going to stick around for much longer than people are thinking, then wow, you could have quite a ways to go. talking elon <laughs> oh you see the new hummer the new hummer shit came out i love how i remember i, I love how lebron was uh in, liking what he was seeing right because i remember i remember lebron uh because it was right around the time he was uh was it leaving high school going into the nba and hummers were super popular at that time i remember I agree. I agree with Gats. I think it's interesting to watch how quiet GME has been in some in some ways. I feel they are very cautious. I agree, Gats. Right? How the market's perceiving Ryan Cohen? Yep.
effectively established Cohen effectively established himself as a buyer at a new incrementally higher level, and the order of events unfolded too quickly. For the shorts, hey, no, well, that's that's what I was thinking. Did it move up? I think we mentioned this on the last stream. Did it just move up too quick? It just happened so quick. Oh, look at this. Oh, good thing I got another. You know, you know what's coming, huh? We got the cat. We we got the the cat. If we don't, if we're going cat costume today, we know we're going this cat's brew, huh? This isn't a this isn't an ad or something. I just think it's funny as shit that I was able to find a cat beer. You know? Cat. Oh, it says cat dip for people. Here we go. Here we go. I'm not even. I was gonna. I, I, I feel like I should have to get caught up before I get into this. You know? But I think I just needed to help me uh, read a little bit quicker. You know what I mean? I need that hole in the costume just so I can drink the beer through it. Elon, the only said she was open. I do, but by the time the answer gets, okay. Gotta go pick up a coffee shop. All right, Jen's out. Later, Jen, if you're back. Okay, you'll come back later. Okay. Will be really nice if you get your own beer. Oh, my God. Don't go over there. Talking nuclear? Yep. So, yeah, we're talking energy sources besides energy, nuclear, solar, EV. EV has been popular. I'm currently holding. Oh, it's you. So, betting against CPE. Okay. Somewhat dependent on the oil. I think I have a. I think there's a stock in the Roaring Kitty portfolio that's focused on methane, right? Oh, methanol. Oh yeah, who Hugo's get Hugo's got quite a few opinions on this, on the energy industry. I'm just trying to I'm just trying to scroll through quick. Talking energy sources and stuff. This is a good discussion, right? These important things. Major discussion here, huh? It will take them years to compete. Much more time they compete with oil and electricity, but it will take them years to the competition because of profitability, right? That's been my opinion too, Hugo. Shyon. <laughs> Cheers, Shyon. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. This is education. This stream is educational, Shyon. You just tell them. If you need if you need a note, you, you let me know. Oh. Fifteen thirty ish, JG says. We close out of some shit. Well, are you looking at the adjusted, JG? Yeah. 15.30? Yeah, I think you're... So, I, I guess this is to each their own, JG. So, I, the, I think that... I assume this is why you're saying 15.30, because it's like right around there. Um, which it could be. This is, this is a stock chart 
un, um, adjusted for dividends. So if they paid out dividends, they go back and they adjust the price accordingly. But if, if you unadjust it, take out the dividends and you see the pure price action. The reason I do this, and I, this, this is different, differing opinions here. Um, I do this because I want to, I like to, this was what the price was at the time. This is the actual price that it was. This is what you were seeing in real time. And I always thought if you're doing technical analysis, that's the stuff people are paying attention to, the price. Not some ad price adjusted for dividends so that you can calculate total return. People aren't really doing that in real time. So for technical uh, analysis reasons, I like to adjust it. And from that, I, I see closer to 16 on the actual closes, but I see up, up to set like 17. Uh, on some of the peaks on those candles, the uh, the we call the wicks. <coughs> Excuse me. Philly Stakes, welcome! Happy Friday, Philly! Sick. Or Walter Showback. <laughs> yeah, it's our subject. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it does kind of look like Walter, huh? Oh, great movie, Philly, huh? Market zero, huh? Market zero. That's the, that's one movie that's a movie that I like more and more the more I watch it. The first time, I, I feel like I, maybe I was I was too young when I watched it. I'm like, and then I keep watching it, and now I, like, I, I absolutely love that movie. Oh, can I do anything with that? Maybe I can. You want to tell? I'll get you to tell. I'll get you to tell by the end of the stream. You just let me know, Philly. <laughs> Uber. It was like, it's funny. It's funny listening to what I talk about what he said and remembering what he said next and knowing where the conversation is going to be. <laughs> Cheers, Uber. I know. It's, <laughs> I just hope it doesn't result in too bad of an experience. Like, uh... It was like, yeah, it was like leading me along. He's like, here you go. All right, dropping the breadcrumbs. And I'm like coming along like, oh, yeah, there you go. Nice job, Bird Kitty. Oh, that's funny. Okay, good question. So Philly says, why don't you believe they use the remaining 100 million buyback authorization out of curiosity? So first of all, I was, uh, that's not like high conviction. They definitely didn't. I just, um, this is one of those cases where I'm leaning one way over the other way. I think it's perfectly possible that they did the buyback and that they did it. I would, if they did do it, that they did it shortly after earnings that they did it in September. Um, I was looking at that volume and then um, the shorts didn't close. No big buyer stepped in. So I was looking at it from like, um, what was, what was earnings right here for like the, this volume right here, I was thinking, but the reason I did it is because um, they've been, when I read, when I try to pick up on their tone during the conference call transcripts, during their press releases, and um, their presentations, I think there's even something in the presentation here that says, um, I'll, give you, I'll give you an example right in this presentation. Where the hell was it? Right here. Cap right, this is an action. This is just one example. Capital fishing, share repurchase completed. Now, we, the, semantics perhaps, but I always thought that was a weird phrase. Like, why do you, why do you say it's completed? You completed some share of purchases, but you still had authorization. So this, just to be clear, this, I'll just give you one example because I had this up. But if you read their, their, uh, their, all of the transcripts across the past three quarters, or there's been, has been in four calls in 2020 maybe. And I, every time I picked up, I thought, oh, they really don't seem like they have any intention to, to follow through with the share buybacks. Like they were satisfied with how much they had done so far. They made it abundantly clear their focus was going to be on the buybacks. And so... Following that and that announcement in like I think it was following February or March or whenever it was, I'm like oh they're not gonna do the buybacks and then they had to close their stores and then when they hadn't done the buybacks at by that point I thought oh they're not gonna, they're definitely not gonna do them now plus they needed to take they needed to um, refinance so I, I've had I've had very low expectations of any buybacks for the past six months and it has come out it's come it's come true I would say what has changed this time around. This this now this quarter this earnings is they completed the bond exchange already. It would finished up in July, and I kept on thinking they didn't want to do the buybacks first of all. Number one because they said that's what they want to do. The, the buybacks forget about it. We need to take we need to focus on the the buyback uh, the, the re, um, refinancing, and um, but now they've done that. That's behind them, 
And then I was wondering too, are they going to even have enough cash to do it? Because they needed to maintain that cash. They needed to keep the cash on the books to keep a strong balance sheet heading into the console refresh just to ensure they had adequate allocation from their vendor partners. You can't go in with a weak, weak ass balance sheet. They had, they still have fairly low credit ratings. I mean, you know what I mean? I think, uh, so it was, it was increasingly important, especially what had happened earlier in the year to maintain like a, a, a strong balance sheet, right? Even more than I thought it was 12 months ago. So I'm like, shit, they, they shouldn't do the buybacks. And uh, then they didn't. But then what changed is they completed the bond exchange in July. And then volume never really picked up. But I remember thinking, oh, maybe they could have bought back in August, but they didn't. But maybe it was just they just wanted the quarter to be behind them. And then, um, but then they had the cash. Then they had almost 800 million in cash. They did the sale lease back. And I'm like, oh, shit. Then I'm like, all right, now consoles are right here. By the next time, by the time the, the time their next earnings come around, we'll be in the, ne the, the next uh, uh, quarter where they'll be, I'll expect they'll be thriving. Um, so, so the odds of it have increased in my uh, in my mind relative to the past two couple quarters. No, no doubt about it. It's definitely higher than I was thinking earlier this year, but their tone has really weighed on me so much this year. Now, and I've played devil's advocate with myself because I think we just had this conversation on the stream a couple of weeks ago where I brought up, I brought up that Jim Bell quote. I thought everything else I've read over the past, now I'd say nine months or so, 10 months, has been really like negative on the buybacks. But I'll tell you what, I was surprised by how aggressive they got um, in Q3 of last year. And if you pull up, excuse me, if you pull up the, uh, that, the, the daily chart and everything, they bought them back as soon as they announced in April last year. They, excuse me, excuse me, September. Uh, they announced it. And then they bought back heavy, 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 heavy in September right there. They, they went ham. They bought back 22 million, 20, wasn't it like 22, 23 million, like crazy amount of share. And even that surprised me. And they were so aggressive and Jim Bell was so damn confident in that, in his answer to the analysts that it has always stood out to me as like you, like that they were aligned with shareholders and that, um, that you shouldn't be so negative on them from a capital allocation standpoint. Like we, we shouldn't, like, I'm not going to be crazy surprised if they bought back. That's my point. This is my point. Some people will be like, they're definitely not doing buybacks, and there's just no way. And I'm like, yo, 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 yo. I can't believe they bought back. Like, people were saying, oh, now it's too risky to do the buybacks because there's so much uncertainty. I'm like, you know how much uncertainty there was last, oh, last September, October, November? We're still 15 months from the consoles, and they didn't give a shit. That's why I say, I'm like, you think, look at Jim Bell. You think he gives a shit? Jim Bell, do, Jim Bell didn't give a shit. And he's like, we are very, very confident where we're going. I'm like, yo, they understand what's going, they understand what's happening. It's not about, it's not, that's why I don't understand. Like people like management knows what they're doing. They understand what's unfolding. They get it. They've just had to be pretty um, careful with their moves and stuff. That's why I always felt, I thought like people, they were getting a worse rap than they deserve, much worse. And, uh, but so now I'm like that. So Philly, it's, it's, it's kind of what's unfolded this year. They literally had to st close their stores. They need to make sure they have plenty of, cash on the books going into this new console you need to make sure everything runs smoothly like it's it's making sure they're ready to run come november like that's the most important thing right now but on the other hand the bond exchange is behind them they're in a much better position balance sheet looks good they're on the verge of quite a bit more free cash flows they've proven to me that at times they're they'll they'll do whatever it takes to to um take care of the buybacks you know what i mean like that was just tremendous uncertainty to last year and it's just it surprised me so much but even now, but maybe now there's um now because they had to close their stores, maybe they're a little bit more negative on it, and uh, maybe they just want to make sure they get a couple solid quarters in them. So I'm t I'm not just to clear, and I, I don't think Philly was implying this. I'm not like super. There's no way they did the buybacks. I'm kind of like, eh, I kind of lean this way, um, because of a shift in focus these these past ten months. But I tell you what, I wouldn't be surprised. I'm not going to be surprised if they announced that they did. I think the, I think maybe the shorts would be. You know what I mean? Like if you if they also the price has been rising, Philly. Like the prices, I mean, following earnings, they had a couple of days there at a depressed price point. Where was it? They announced when? September 9th, September 10th. They had a couple of days where it was like six. They had this six, seven. If you figure they had to, uh, the blackout period, it lasted an extra two days or something. The price ran up pretty quick, but even still. But they were never buyers at this price point. They never, I don't, as I recall, they never bought above $6 per share. Or excuse me, they never bought above $7 per share. And we've been above $7 per share ever since um, September 15th. So that was another thing. Maybe the price is too high that it becomes harder to justify giving the the risks that abound these days. You know what I mean? So that was the other thing that weighed me. Ah, the price ran up so quick. Maybe it was too late. They're like, it's worth it just to keep this $100 million and, and deploy it elsewhere. Remember, it's going to take a ton of cash to turn around your business, to transform your business. That takes a lot of CapEx. There's a lot you need to deploy to get that done. And maybe at this point, with maybe Ryan Cohen getting involved, they're like, yo, you're going to need that cash to re- Like, you've already done a shit ton of buybacks. You did 37%. Congratulations. That's why I'm like, I'm happy. I'm like, I'm glad they took care. I'm glad they did it last year. I'm, I'm happy because 
now there's a case that they they shouldn't even do more, right? I don't agree with that from a capital education standpoint, but I, the argument could be made. And so uh, anyway, hopefully that answered your question, Philly. But I've I've thought a lot about that, and um, and and again because the price is higher too, they might have only been able to buy back about ten million roughly or so, and that's. I mean, ten million out of sixty-five is still big, but it's not as much if they bought back in July and August. Like I thought, there was a possibility they they say they bought back another twenty million. I'm like, oh my god! If they buy, if they announce they bought back twenty million in September, uh, then forget about it. Then they didn't, of course, right? But so it would have been a huge, huge impact back then. Just a little bit less now, but still material, no doubt about it. So um, I just wanted to get that all out there again, Philly. It was a good question because I've been thinking about that. Uh, and if we, if they did, we don't, I don't think we hear about it until earnings. Um, that's all I got to say about that. Oh, you go B Y D D F. Yep. 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 Oh, here we go. Okay, Philly. Sorry, I uh, I'm I'm just seeing your. Okay, so Philly said the reason why I ask is because you said it. You're safe. This is what Uber, Uber. This is what Uber was talking about. Like I just answered Philly's question. He had a follow up comment before I answered. I'm like, uh, let's so let's see, Philly. The reason I asked is because you said it yourself. They thought the price was severely discounted. I'm sure it was still at eight dollars and seven eight dollars. Okay, so hopefully I've already answered this. But let me keep going, Philly. Good, great question. Like I feel like it's good to ask that question. You press me on it, right? Because then if I ask it and you go, whoa, 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 roaring kitty, but. You missed this or you missed that. Maybe you should increase your probabilities um, a little bit because of this. And maybe I missed something. Or maybe there was, like uh, what Uber mentioned, uh, there was something in this, present this presentation. What page? What page? 26, was it, Uber? But that's going to be funny if I remember that. Oh, no, 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 no. Right here. Page 20. Like, I, I forgot this. Management handpicked this analyst comment um, or consumer edge research to be included there. Ah, oh, Polygon, am I a half hour behind? Totally off the <laughs> I'm behind a half hour and I'm totally off topic, so that thank you, Polygon. Oh shit. Yeah, so every so with them purchasing more, yeah, it'd push Ryan Cohen of over ten percent and push maybe push other people above five percent. Uh, you'd have to amend their thirteen Ds across the board. But they have a lot of cash. Could have only used fifty million of the right. They didn't have to use the full hundred, that's true, Philly. Again, but then it's only maybe five million that they bought back, six, seven. He was on debt buyback, right? They, 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 didn't they trumpet the... Uh, uh, they, that's the thing. So thank you, Daniel, for reminding me. Even in the latest conference call, didn't they trumpet their intention to maybe uh, buy back some of the debt? I think Jim Bell all but said that they were going to do that. So that was the other thing. When they said they were going to do that, I thought, all right, that's a, of higher importance. Thank you, Daniel, for reminding me of that. It's somewhere in the latest transcript. Um, I think it was, a, it was an analyst question, I believe. Nah, I should pick a, I should pick a better word. Damn. Ah, I don't know what word to search. I think it's in there. Okay, Jordan says new Xbox pre-orders the 26th and 27th. Canada bullish in Canada. Okay, saying if you bought online, you'll be charged October 29th. Means cash on the books for Q3. Yep, management knew this. Buybacks have a cheers. Oh, Jordan's back. We're talking buybacks. Good timing. What's left for January? January debt. Could be waiting to push him over and announce. Yeah, I'll spec. I think every yeah we uh, it's important to remember it's all speculation. We don't know, but I, it's good results and good discussion. Yeah, plenty of cash. Yeah. Jordan, okay. <laughs> Catnip for people is weed. <laughs> that might be true. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to say there's home age, yeah. Jordan says the liquidity and float is really drying up here. Wouldn't be surprised if they did buy back. If they didn't, the debt is likely gone as of Q3. They don't need over $1 billion in cash. They'd probably just buy back the March.
There we go. Share search box. Um, first question, your commentary around the 2021 maturities made it sound like you're not going to wait for the maturity date and you're going to go ahead and either tender for those or buying back in the open market. Yes. Yes, that is correct. <laughs> Thank you, Daniel, for reminding me that. Um, our intention is to select points redeemed between now and the end of, well, I guess it's March of 21, which is the maturity date. You know what I mean? That, so this was a continuation of what we had seen all year so far, that this was their plan, that they were going to focus on the debt. So And then Jim Bill confirmed it. And that was a part of the reason you saw the bonds pop. Watch this. They pop smartly. And not, I mean, it was already up. It was up pretty up. Up pretty high. Okay, it was already up ninety four, so it wasn't that big. But the next day, and then it was then it's at par. Oh, it's look at that. It's exactly at hundred, just about. If you go back and look at the history, the amount of liquidity in the overall cash. Delivered on in a big way, despite the global impact, so that we are incredibly confident with the strength of our balance sheet and liquidity as we make our way into the console launch. It certainly positions us incredibly well from the overall. You know what I mean? Jim Bell crushing it, crushing it. Yeah, maybe it does. Uh, Uber's been pointing out the spreads and stuff, and uh, the, 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 the as I mentioned earlier, the stock price is kind of pop. I mean, it's it's not a big or anything like that. What did we end last week at? You know what I mean, it's not a big. It's only a ten percent. But remember, it ran to like just under sixteen. It was just under sixteen, which was a new, a new high. And uh, but it happened on very low volume. That kind of indicates to me that there's uh, there's not that much, little bit of an imbalance between a uh, little bit of supply and demand there. I don't know how much it might attribute it to buybacks or anything, but. They felt comfortable with COVID. Jan What's, what is January debt? If they felt comfortable with COVID, January debt, and console needs, why not use $25 million for a bump? Yeah, they, and, and some people have said that too, that, hey, they don't need to use the full 100, 110. They just need to use part of it. But th then there's only so much that they buy back. Um, now, that could be meaningful for some folks, I suppose. But um, if they only buy back $25 million, it's a, uh, maybe they buy back $5 million. It's meaningful. It's true. I agree, Philly. Oh, I think higher than zero. Sure, sure, sure. I don't think zero. Yeah, yeah, okay. I'm trying to get caught up. I agree. Yeah, they probably announced their earnings. Yep. Uber. Agree with Uber. All right, I'm kind of a, I like this back and forth on this topic. Keep the priorities, yeah. They're slow with everything. But remember, Jordan, they bought back 37% within um, six months, within five months of Jim Bill joining the team. Unless they weren't well, wanted to do something highly unlikely. Unless they have new buyback facility. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they announced it slow, yeah. Or they didn't. It won't. Just my two. I'd agree with Daly. Either if they did buy, if they did buy back, it I think it would already would have happened. I don't think they'd be doing it at this point. Remember, because part of it was the price. Remember, Jim Bill, his confidence as to where this price point would be in that November time frame. So then if they did want to, and I'm not saying they did, but if they did, they realized they needed to be quick with that buy. They needed to do it quick in September. At, to do it at discount prices.
That's what I thought too. Ryan. Okay, maybe I'm getting caught up, but all those potential negatives have passed. I've talked so much. I'm going to keep scrolling because I feel like I've covered most of my point. Oh, Jordan's saying if you it, you don't do the biomax when no one cares, do it after the consoles and the stock has spiked. Wow. <laughs> that, that's, a, that's an interesting point. From a sheer capital allocation standpoint, you want to do it at the depressed prices, but... I mean, in the same, in, like I talk about rose-colored glasses, I think this is kind of tag along with Jordan said. Like rose-colored glasses, people don't have rose-colored glasses. The stock sold off last December when they announced that, by the way. Where was it? Right there. So they announced all those buybacks, boom, stock sold off. It never regained that high until, shit, did it ever? Oh, it never did. Oh, it never did. Since Jim Bell said that statement, the stock price never closed above that. I don't even know if it touched it. Did it touch it? It closed. Where was it? It closed at six fifty one. What did it hit? Oh, it hit. Wait a second. Six fifty one, and what was the high? Six forty seven. Since Jim Bell made that statement, spoke about his confidence, announced how much buybacks they did, said, uh, announced that he didn't give a shit. Stock never broke that price again. Until August 31st. Wow, I never noticed that. Anyway, so and then Jordan's saying, well, if, uh, rose color, no one had rose colored glasses, right? No one gave a shit. But maybe now they give a shit. Maybe just the announcement of even 5 million or something is more impactful. I'd concede that. I could say that. I, I, I could see that. Most of that balance sheet uncertainty. And refire in the past. Cash probably only grew this past quarter. If the priorities are covered, they'd be smart to put a little out. Again, well, uh, the refire in the past. Again, he, I just pointed out that quote that I was. That it reminded me of. Granted, the the major refi is in the past, but they they've clearly Jim Bell has clearly expressed his intentions to use some of this cash to take care of this. Um. So, I, and of course, Philly, you know I wouldn't deny, d disagree with you when you'd say they'd be smart to put out a little out. Oh, I'd agree with that. I'm trying to guess their intention. What, what are they What are they planning on? I'm trying to guess the plan. And I can't, I don't see buybacks in the e expressed plan. That's my point. I don't, I can't, I don't see it anyway. I don't have no, I have no, um, I mean, I did I, this is my thing. I didn't, I didn't have much proof last year either. That's why I was so surprised. I had the Dutch auction, but remember in early June, they said they weren't going to do it. There were no buyback plans in early June. And then they announced the Dutch auction a couple of days later. And then that was it. And then they announced earnings. And I'm like, damn, that's all they did. They stopped at the Dutch auction. I was disappointed when they announced in early September last year that they're like, hey, did the Dutch auction, that's it. And I'm like, come on. And so I remember being kind of negative on buybacks at that point. I still thought they were still doing them. But I was kind of surprised how much they did them. And then the confidence with which Jim Bell talked about them. So I agree with you, Philly. I just, I'm just trying to... I, 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 you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Philly knows what I'm saying. That's right. A higher stock price is good for the company. It is. It's good for sentiment. It's good for turning around your business. Um, I agree with this. There are business reasons to that it's been it's beneficial from a business standpoint for our, to have a stock price rising. I think folks on this uh, on here would agree with this. I know we talked about that before. That forget the forget the squeeze side of stuff. You know what I mean? That's almost besides the point. I, I I'm not even thinking about that. I'm just saying how if you're legitimately trying to turn around business. You, it's it's beneficial to have a tail. Look at Tesla. You know what? Hey, I said that about Elon. Musk. I saw people talking about Elon Musk in the chat. Like, I mean, this guy may single handedly will his company to succeed because of his salesmanship of his own company. Do you know what I mean? Uh, to say nothing to 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 voice no opinion on the security at all. I I don't care. But the way he speaks about his business and the way he carries himself. He's been able to raise so much money for Tesla, and and I'm not, not, again, I'm not voicing any opinions. Maybe it ends up zero. I'm not saying that. I don't. I don't care. All I know is that if it does succeed, you can largely 
thank I mean the shareholders can largely thank Elon because because he's been able to um, like sell his business sell the share I mean sell the shares but the, the price keeps going up and they can sell they can continue raising capital at higher and higher prices didn't they just raise five billion early this year I think that they should have raised more when I remember thinking like this this was when the stock price was really taken off right wasn't it was it February I think was it Fe- I forget but I remember thinking oh you should have raised more or did they ju- no they just raised five billion recently right ah, I forget I forget but I remember thinking all along like raise more if you're you want to raise as much as you can actually get a, get across. The same thing with not, not just, I mean, not so much game stuff, they're going to raise money, but whenever you're a business and you're trying to like do something big, whether you turn around your business or develop your business, you want as much cash as possible at attractive prices. And um, this guy, if Tesla ends up su- succeeding and crushing it, like he kind of willed it to happen, you know what I mean? I um, But I, I'm not dialed into this company. I, I just kind of following it from the sidelines, kind of watching the price action pretty much. And um, it's been something to see. But so sorry, what I was getting at the higher price for Tesla has been huge, huge, and um, huge for its potential success. Yep, no reason they can't be buying right now. Ted says absolutely, they can, they can totally be buying back right now. Yep. Oh yeah, they can make the buybacks without without telling anybody. Yep. Yeah, I, I I don't think they're thinking about the squeeze too much. But I don't know. Like I said, sideshow. Management team, I mean. I don't think management team. It's... Yeah, it just to contrast it with the Overstock CEO. That's what I'm saying. Like, uh, you, when someone's, like, really gung-ho about doing something, just you can pick it up in their tone and stuff and uh, look no further than that. Like, that's... If you were looking for a management team being like, oh, what the hell is going on here? That's That doesn't mean it's not happening. I'm just saying, I, I'm just not saying enough that they that they care. It's just, uh, again, I'm sure that they're aware of it. Like I said, they're not oblivious. They they, uh, they can see what's unfolding. They get it. Uh, but only only w- with hindsight will we kind of pick up, uh, kind of put the pieces together. Yeah, I agree with Philly, yeah. All right, here. Where'd it go? Okay. multiple days for sure yeah squeeze like the squeeze yeah, there's so many types of squeezes where's that book it can happen one day look at like it was in kodak one or two days and um a different t- different setup right vastly vastly different setup but uh even so, like it could be a multi-month squeeze like all these are, aren't these like this gamma squeezes ah i don't know enough about this i'm ignorant oh am i am i on the buyback team does that count as being on the buyback team i still said i was on my base case just that i can see Uh, Jordan too. Wow, everyone is. I mean, rising price changes changes my uh, the odds. I hard to deny that. I mean, yeah, it's a bit. Uh, yeah, that that that's. Yeah, Hugo. GME was in the S&P 500, I believe, back in the day. So absolutely it can. It would take a quite a bit higher market cap, but wasn't it? 
It had to be. Could have sworn it was. Yeah, when was this? 20, 2007, yeah. So it used to be uh, used to be in the S&P. We were a ways away from getting back to that part. But still a point worth, worth that. And I know people talking about that with Tesla and shit, right? I think I'm close. Am I close? Yes. Okay, Philly, I got your points. All fair. Yeah, I, Philly, I actually think we're on the same page. <laughs> maybe we just disagree a little bit on the odds, where maybe you tilt one way, I tilt another way. We clearly have the same analysis of the situation, I think. I think, um, and I know, um, and I think Jordan might be a little bit more tilted your way as well. Um, but, uh, I think we've all talked through this and researched some of the same stuff and just draw a slightly different conclusion. As people are saying, like, that's cool. That's chill. Who knows? Yeah. I'll root for another firm to come in unexpectedly. That's remember it's getting more expensive. It's getting more expensive. So at 15, um, So right now, assume a billion. I should have been able to do that in my head, but um, graphing calculator, baby. Graphing calculator. Um, it costs 50 million at this point. It costs, I mean, it, it could be in incremental buyer where you already had a position previously, just like Ryan Cohen, and you're you're adding more, right? I get that part. But I'm just saying, if no one had a position, someone did, had no position, and then they were trying to buy in and get a 5% total, it would be 50 million. For the big players, that's nothing, right? Um, but uh, just something that I was thinking about as it gets more expensive, it's a little bit more difficult, so a little bit less likely. Uh, Gat's saying that maybe another firm comes in, pours more fuel. Had the Vegas trip, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you're learning one way, yeah, no problem. Yeah, that's good. It was a great question, Phil. You know what I mean? And then a whole bunch of us just shoot. Sometimes we talk about this stuff, but then weeks pass, and we don't talk about it again. I think it's been a couple of weeks since we went in depth talking about that, those buybacks, so I liked it. Well, we don't know, we still have Bari Uber. I mean, I agree, we likely do, but you don't know. More, oh, yeah, so EO just said what I was just saying. More expensive for a new investor to get a lot, but compared to the other part, it's the most stocks at high value. It's not that. Yeah, I agree. It's true. Ted says uh, Burry could buy just a few hundred thousand shares and said that's true. If he does maintain what he how much he had last time, <clears throat> which we don't know, but if we just assume that for the sake of discussion. He had 2.75 million, which is about 4.22 percent. Um, so he just need to he need to add about um, yeah, not even just uh, about 500k. Even at this price point, oh, it's seven and a half million. It's really, it's really not that much. It's true. Again, we don't know that he's still at 4.2 percent, but I um, but if he were, it's a good point that I don't think we've brought up before. That if he he he, he just toss back that in to get back above five percent, it's interesting. 
But again, it's um, it depends on what his what his value is. He did say that he thought it was gonna it could be worth significantly higher, didn't he? I think he said that. Didn't we look up the language he said where he was like, it could be significantly higher. My point just being, does he still view it as undervalued at about nine hundred million a billion? I mean, I think he does. How much undervalued though, relative to the other opportunities that are on the market? Yeah, so I agree with you, guys. Yes, it did the whole. It set, the setup has seemed so unusual for the whole damn year that um, there was that potential. It's just so rare to see that type of a setup. Oh, it's just so rare. And I remember thinking, like, what is this really? Is this really going to unfold without anything really happening here? Oh, good question. With oh, okay, oh bullish. Philly Steak says, "Let me throw this out. Bearish. I like to thank you for adding in at current price levels. Bearish or bullish going into next earnings with a Sony and Nintendo PR current price levels. Bullish. I'll take that. I'll take that bait. Like I always say, it always well. It depends what the price action is, what unfolded. If you're also going to give me Sony PR, Nintendo PR, bullish. I think we're in rose colored glass. I think we're in rose colored glasses territory. Oh, I, I, I would first of all. Well, I mean, I lean bullish at the last earnings. It sold off. Then it bounced back strong. So, I mean, I was wrong for two days. But, um, like, I think we're getting to that point. I'd be, If people disagree with that, I'm very curious. What a signal if they rebought. That's true. It's true. Oh, without, without, without. I was going to say, Philly, if you're going to give me this one. Philly, if you're going to give me that, too. Like, come on. All right, Philly. Okay, just a typo. Without. Um... Bullish. <laughs> a little bit. Maybe less so. Less so. I get I only tilt. For something like that, I would tilt one way. I tilt bullish. Because of the setup. The setup still continues to scream bullish. And um, that's what I use for my prediction going into the last earnings. That's what I would use. That's the thing. So I know you just say at the current price point, but what would matter to me, Philly, is what the hell was the price action heading into earnings? You know what I mean? I uh it's not just the price point, but it if it ref if it mirrored what I'm seeing right now, definitely I would tilt bullish. Even without that PR. Um it's a great question because uh, I'm pretty sure GameStop has sold off after every damn earnings. <laughs> I think after every earnings since I've been involved, it's been selling off after earnings. So this would be the first one. But of course, it bounced back so strongly this time, so it's no big deal. But a good, yeah, a good point about the if they, they did rebuy, it'd be interesting. I think that's unlikely, but it would be, it would be laugh-inducing. I'd agree with that. Yeah, I mean, if permit, I mean, that would be wild. I'd agree with this. I didn't, I didn't think about this too much. <laughs> oh, I like it. I like it. You would have thought that we were. I mean, now we're. It's, it, the price is getting kind of high. That's the thing. Is that it, these are value investors? The value investors. I mean, generally, they want to buy at discount prices. They've already got such a low cost basis, though, so maybe it's no big deal. Toss another eight million in there for Bari. I don't know what it is for Permit. Maybe roughly the same, right? Because they're probably down about the same. Hmm. But then you're betting on reaction. You're betting on reaction. Mm, that's not a high conviction play. I like it. Don't get me wrong. I like it's an intriguing discussion, but usually don't act ba based on how you think. I, I mean, I'm gonna laugh my ass off if this is if that happens. Yep, so CU says he doesn't see anyone adding, yep. Which more eyes are on it? Like, does it have to pass? Yeah, for some people, Alex, like institutions, they need like a, a larger market cap. So just being a larger market cap gets the attention of more folks, more institutions. It does. It does. They have like limits as to what they'll deal in. Now, just breaching it one billion, just one day above billion, that's not really enough. You need to kind of stay above there. But I just mean uh, it's it's a figure that will get people's attention, even screeners, even some screens and stuff. <laughs> I 
Philly said <laughs> one typo, Philly. Philly, I think you, you had a typo with the worst word. <laughs> no, he's had to correct like four times. Oh, shit. Hey, it's Aaron Calder. Welcome back. Welcome back. Back on the stream. Cheers. Yeah. Oh, it's great. Yeah, so he always says $30 equals $1.5 billion market cap. Oh, that's not right. $2 billion market cap. $30 equals $2 billion market cap, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which isn't that much. It's oh, let's pull this up. When was $2 billion? We were last in $2 billion. Ah, okay, so it's been a while. No, wait, there's $2 billion. Oh, these lines threw me off. Oh, no, not that long. Oh, 2017? Okay, so 2017. Wow. They're going to get hammered with questions on the next conference call. That's why. Oh, I'm almost caught up. I'm almost caught up, but I, I, I can't believe it. It's these Friday streams, huh? All these beers. I got to do another restroom break. I got to do another quick one. I got to do another quick one here. I got to see if I can get back. The question is, can I get back before the intro video is over? I barely made it last time. Let me. I, I was almost caught up. I was hoping I'd get caught up, but let me just run real quick. Okay, let me see if I, let me see if I can get back in time. I'll use the same song. I'll use the same one that I, I did at the beginning. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. All right, let's see if I make it. Three, two, one. Just in time, just in time. Let me see if I can just catch up here, huh? Real quick, real quick. I feel like I was real close, real close. Oh, shit. Oh. 
Oh, damn. Okay. They flat out have a deal. Either way, they're banging for us. Okay, talk about Q3. Okay. I don't know partners. Guidance will still be strong if they say better. I know. I, I've been looking forward to if they actually give guidance. You know what I mean? If they give guidance, that will be interesting. They haven't given guidance in a long ass time. I doubt they do. If they say better. Better allocation, yeah. I know a lot of people thinking about Q. I don't know. I don't even think about Q3 all that much. Not at all. Oh, there you go. I agree with Alex. I'm less worried about a long-term effect of bad numbers. Let's go. Okay. Jumping to it now. Might be by but thinking now the turnaround numbers will only help. Yep, yep, yep. Any public starting potential? Oh, yeah. I haven't heard any numbers on that. Alex, cheers. Thanks, man. Yep, so Polygon agree. Q3 guidance will be very interesting. If they give it, I don't think they do, but I'd be very interested. Any public information at all? Stating potential Xbox supply. Yeah, I haven't seen... No, I've seen Sony and Nintendo, Ted. I have seen Sony and Nintendo. I haven't seen Microsoft. I haven't seen Xbox figures. Arisa... Yep, the short term moves. Yep, the stock could be. Remember, stock price is up. Just remind, like, the, predicting the short term stuff is so tough. Like, the stock is up following earnings, but it got crushed at first. So, like, the short term moves, I don't even know. I just tilt one way, but it could, it could be great. It could be a great earnings release when the damn stock sells off. I was in Cloud Peak. So I bought into it. Um,. Cheers, man, child. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, it, you know, it's not so much that any, for any institutions to get involved, um, but it's more for it's not so much for like a like a, a Goldman Sachs stake. They, I mean, any institution get involved at any uh, at any market cap size, but like larger like endowment type funds or um, just large large institution like managing others' money. You know what I mean? Not so much more strategic type players, but more just asset allocation type money managers. Um, so think about think about it like that. Uh, later, Polygon. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Oh, you know Polygon probably gonna try to come back later, right? And be like, oh shit, y'all still going? Oh, so Ted says, the fact that no new PS5 pre-orders have opened recently, coupled with the cancellations and delays of the current crop of pre-orders, suggests that Sony is going to struggle to meet demand. So some people have been talking about that, how if they don't um, supply quite as much. Scarcity is the main reason why most people believe the Switch will outsell the play. Yeah, can you imagine? That's what I mean. Not enough people talking about Nintendo. Uh, in my opinion. With the new switches coming out, and they're even crushing it right now. I mean, I don't know about outselling PlayStation and Xbox, but if they do, wow. I don't know enough. Switch come wow. If the switch tops, yeah, can you imagine? Good. It's good for it's. It, that's. It's not. I mean, it's. It's interesting news for GameStop because I feel like the Switch is a huge console for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see that. Gats, what in the hell is going on? <laughs> oh, Gats wasn't here earlier. That's right. Oh, I forgot some folks weren't here. Oh. Is everyone else seeing this down? <laughs> I forgot that. I was thinking it was all the same group. Oh. <laughs> I'm an idiot. <laughs> Taking some people by surprise. Okay, so David Chen says, I think the chance of having a deal with Sony is very slim. So, yeah, I, uh, interesting, David. Thanks for sharing because everyone, most people are very bullish that it's going to happen. And I'm like, I don't know enough about it to say one way or the other. I'm encouraged by some, I think, uh, I thought Jeffrey's did, but I don't see it here. And then I, I know Dimitri mentioned it. 
Uh, I think Justin had mentioned it to some folk, and then I, I think I just saw rumblings out there. People talk about that Sony was going to happen because it's a natural uh, additional partnership to have. But I'm like, maybe they only do one type of these partnerships that they publicly announce. But the, I don't know. Maybe though, I don't know enough about this. So I don't, I don't know about Slim. But I, I would just say I don't know enough to. Uh, Interesting, David. If you if you'd share why why do you think why do you think a, a deal with Sony is very slim? I'd be curious to I'd be curious to read that. Yeah. Oh, Gats Gats already asked you. Great. Powerful case for the customer lifetime value and customer acquisition. Yo, I well, I definitely agree with that. Oh, yeah, so if you haven't seen uh, Dimitri's article, must read, must read article. He talked about this. Uh, he's of the opinion that a revenue sharing with Sony is, uh, already exists. More concerned about short-term traders punishing the price in the year because of bad earnings and no new PR to justify. Well, that's a possibility, Philly. That short-term price action, good luck. I mean, I... Yeah, that's if, if if we're worried about price action over looking over a couple of weeks and stuff um that it, it starts to get tough if you're looking out six months that's why it's just easier analysis if you're looking out six months but yeah this very short term i don't know that's a real tough uh tough tough game to play for me personally so so dusty uh, dusty agrees with david saying sony has been really cutting partnerships in business in general the training employee support programs have disappeared in the last few years. I don't know anything about that. Oh, Jordan says that was... Oh, Jordan, you may not have been here earlier. <laughs> Jordan. Oh, then Gat says, I know the word of Sony is hard to deal with. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know. Um, but the article we mentioned did make a compelling case. It definitely makes a compelling case for working with Sony, like having some sort of relationship. I just don't know that it, it's the same type of uh, partnership as what was announced with Microsoft. That's my question, Mark. I have no idea. Oh, yeah, I did see that. And then he, he includes the quote in here from Sony. Uh, it's further down. Right here. This is from uh, PlayStation Chief Jim Ryan. Uber's quoting, we're not having any problem with specialist retail stocking this model. The digital model, you know what I mean? That's what people are saying. Like, well, why would you sell the digital model? And then, as Dimitri pointed out, uh, GameStop's selling the digital model for Sony. Why? What, what's their incentive for selling that? What do they care? Uh, just a little bit extra revenue? So Uber saying this is vital, this whole par I mean this whole paragraph. I don't want to get into the back and forth of the margin discussions between ourselves and our retailers, but we think we found a way to make that work better. It's a great include. This is what I mean. This is a must read. Seeking Alpha Art. He really did a great job of piecing together the different um, different quotes from different different quotes from different folks. And um, can you see that? Okay, yeah. They are literally talking about game stuff. So I tend to agree. <laughs> But my question is just the the type of the type of agreement the type of agreement. I don't know that it uh, resembles that of Microsoft. I, I, I it absolutely could. I just don't have the conviction to to say definitely. That's why I'm curious why David was saying that. Oh shit! It popped. Okay. Okay. Twenty minutes. Cheyenne, I'm 20. Hey, Cheyenne, you're 20, you're 20 and you're investing? That's great. I, uh, the dollar, I'm not even so concerned about the dollar amount. I, um, but that you're trying it. So what's important about, I mean, other folks in here experience, they can talk about this too, is that uh, it's just the time in the market, not, not like practice in the market, experience in the market over time. You might start with some, if you're 20, maybe you don't have too much experience. You definitely want to start real small. Or just paper trading at first for a couple of years. It might have been actual like dialed in paper trading, like uh, seeing how it, how, how it's going, or, or do really small figures at first, gain some experience because when you have real money on th these, this isn't this is general education, right? I know Cheyenne knows that he's been on the stream a number of times, but um, 
but um, like it, tracking the stocks, tracking analysts, see what unfolds. It's really like a five to ten year plan. It's not. You don't expect any short term victories, generally speaking, right? I. Uh, it's always luck's always a big part of it, but I always feel gaining that experience over time is huge because then you can find a way to develop conviction and confidence in some of your positions. And for my style, everyone has different styles of investing and stuff, but that confidence and conviction in a play and a style allows you to build heavier and heavier positions. But you can't do that when you're on the younger side because you don't have the experience. Yet. It's it's uh, it's a bit more of a gamble because uh, you. What do they say? What's that famous quote? Is that um, it's it's uh, what's the difference between investing and gambling? Uh, investing is when the odds are tilted in your favor, whereas gambling is when they may not be. Even if it's only forty five percent in your favor, that's a little bit more gambling. You know what I mean? But it, then if the if the upside is significant, then it gets messy. That's deep value investing. Sometimes you don't have fifty percent plus in your favor, but it's still worthwhile. Everything in the context of the portfolio, right? But um, but uh, developing that confidence, it just comes with experience and testing out different styles, te testing out different strategies. So. I um I mean not that you're even asking for advice. <laughs> just say is that a good I'm not so sure my point just being I'm not so so sure it's the dollar amount that matters that you're starting with as much as your age. It's 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 wonderful, I think, from um from an educational standpoint that you might be starting at that younger age because then I look out five, ten years, then you're twenty five, thirty, you're in you're in a great position because if you've taken it serious that whole time I've taken it seriously that whole time, I mean you're in great position because you will have learned a ton. But I think um, a lot of even I wasn't. I mean, I wasn't doing that uh, twenty. Do you know what I mean? So, um, so it's a great thing. But I'm focused more on the age. I'd say for what that's worth. Well, cheers, cheers, Cheyenne. Huh? Great question. None of their OLED TVs have. Okay. Okay. So CU says, my issue with Dimitri's article is it didn't really paint a great picture of how it would be majorly beneficial to Sony. At least with Microsoft, we know they're filling a gap from closing their own stores. Wait a second. Uh, how big are Sony stores? Are Sony, how, how, how pervasive are the Sony stores? Are there a ton of them? First of all, I, th I know they do have some, but I don't think they're that many. I don't even know if I've been in a Sony store. Have there been? Are there? So that's my first question. The second question is, I, I disagree, uh, CU. I thought... Um, Gave a number of reasons why it's beneficial to uh, a firm like Sony to partner up with GameStop. Again, not necessarily in the same way that partners up with Microsoft, but um, again, that's what, well, I guess uh, that's the first question. If they're, uh, how common are Sony stores if they're out there? Because uh, just having a retailer who's pushing your digital product, because they're not incentivized to do so otherwise. And so if you have, where's that chart? So, um, well, part of what Dimitri was getting at is that all of this flows through to Sony when they don't have to have a physical game they, because it, what doesn't go to them is what the publishers' uh, fees are, or what goes to the publishers. Uh, Sony doesn't get that, but everything else flows through to them because um, um, because it's just a digital game. So there's a lot of so they have a lot more margin that they can work with. So they say, okay, well we have, we're working with a little bit extra margin. We can uh, we can risk giving sharing some of that with a retailer to help push the digital model. Because otherwise, they, there's what's in, there's little incentive for um, a GameStop or a type retailer to push it. On the other hand, you might argue there's so much demand for these types of consoles. Who gives a shit? You know what I mean? Like that's a fair point. Like, do you really need to push? But I think like the um, like subscription type model or some additional type stuff on the PlayStation. Maybe it's better to push Sony type products. But um, interesting. See you. Okay. Manchild agrees. Yep, yep, yep. It's great. Yeah, I know. We're just talking about the age. Manchild, we're focused on the age. Hey, that's what you're doing at 20? Props to you. Yeah, the idea is that the lifetime value of the customer through GameStop might be higher in terms of returns than if the same... And the cost of acquisition, right? It's the, life, it's the marginal increase lifetime revenue, right? But to the cost of acquisition. It's just not that expensive to, to partner up with GameStop a little bit to Sony. Like, it's almost worth it to say, all right, just a little bit higher... Lifetime, um, lifetime value. That's why I'm, I was. I was. What I was surprised by is he, how he got up to ten percent. I mean, I I, under, I I read through how he landed on that, but uh, even his range was five to ten percent, I believe. Um.
That's right. So I agree with Jordan. Jordan says Sony will likely have a hard time to meet demand, but and this is important, the demand isn't going away. They'll buy those consoles in Q1 or Q2. That's right. That, like uh, we've that's come up a number of times in the stream. Like if you get that longer term outlook, who cares? Whatever. It just gets bumped to a different quarter. If you're looking on 12 months, that free cash flow is coming. Um, it's just the, it's, it's it can be lumpy. I was earlier in the year. I'm like, wait a second. Is it still coming? Are the consoles going to be released in November? That was my big thing. If there's production issues. So unless it was crazy, crazy production issues, which was a risk earlier this year. I didn't. I mean, it was a it was a real risk. It was a real risk. I didn't think it was super high. But it was a real risk. And now at this point, I um, the risk of a, a major, major production disruption, I, I think, is low. And so um, but we'll see. Shy on and just hate the reliance on education. You just gotta let the money. Well, that's true. Although you need your own education from an investment standpoint. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Let letting your money work for you. Yep. Oh yeah, that's right. Uber said that. Uh, IR investor relations told Uber that they sell three times as many games and two times as many accessories as general retailers. I mean, that's huge. Three times. They're a net value add with revenue share. It's a definition of win-win. That's right. That's right. Yep. Sharon says, Cheyenne, you're in great shape. Just keep an income and add to your savings investments and you'll be set. That's right. And so that's right. I, I mean, I'm coming out from an individual, individual stock selection standpoint, but that may not be a good idea for you, Cheyenne, right? It may be that um, just um, investing in like broad broad market ETF type things, that might be suitable for you as well, For as it is for many people. And even that's and, and even in that situation, it's still wonderful that you might be starting at a young age. And 20 is indeed young. Because um, it could, I mean, you'd sit down with a financial professional to offer, like to review your financial situation, your risk tolerance and so forth, see what works best for you. But it could be that it might just be recommended you buy a low fee index fund and just hold it for the next 40 years. And like you say, you just let your money work. It just depends. But regardless, that whole time in the market or time learning and stuff is just hugely, hugely valuable. Can't be stressed enough. Okay, so David's clarifying. I just think that Sony won't view GME's distribution channel as important. Also, they don't believe the subscription model is going to be sustainable. Okay. Uh, yeah, I know the, what quote you're talking about. Okay. Right. So CU says, if there is a Sony agreement, they will want at least the same treatment as Microsoft, which GME, he says, can't provide, but I'd say might not be able to provide. They've given Microsoft too big of a piece of the pie. That's what I, yeah. So I uh, I don't disagree with some of these takes. <laughs> Sony is the leader of Microsoft. Right. Who was it? Steven saying that Sony is the, redoing that too. Sony is the leader of Microsoft trying to catch up. Only way Sony deal gets done is if it involves esports. Interesting. Microsoft in the deal includes many different services or simply buying from Microsoft. Okay. Um, no, Manchild. Man, and Manchild asked, am I the only one who thinks a partnership with Sony isn't that important? As long as Microsoft partnership works out really well, I think GMA wins. I agree with that, Manchild. That's what I say. I, you might not get a Sony partnership. Uh, I've seen so many folks talk about that. I'm like, damn, maybe I'm underestimating its likelihood. But... Um, but I, I think the market reacted so positively to the Microsoft news that now people are thinking, well, shit, imagine if you get Sony news, which only seems like the next step. And, uh, and maybe the market will react just as strongly because I think maybe people were taken by surprise that such a deal could get that. I think that's it, man, child. But that um, perceptions aside, you know what I mean? Or um, I, I, I agree with you. I already think that that's huge news. I would, I, that's it. For, I mean, Sony aside, I would want more. Um, the announcement of additional uh, partnerships in time. You know what I mean? Like I said, whether it's with publishers, Nintendo, other folks, like there need to be more formal partnerships announced for me to increase my probability of a major turnaround in this digital ecosystem. The Microsoft partnership, I think alone isn't, um, isn't enough to make, first of all, to perpetuity, that's the big thing is that these revenue streams are now higher margin and, um, for an extended period of time, right? It's not like uh, that's people saying like, oh, GameStop has no relevance at looking up three or four years. It's like, well, the Microsoft deal suggests otherwise. But I think it's going to take more than just that one partnership for me to re, to, to, to assign a higher probability to uh, longer term free cash flows and um, 
that uh, that are generated from the digital uh, ecosystem. I, I think I need to see more from that front. So I don't know about the timing, but Sony specifically, I think I'd probably agree with you, man, child. I I wouldn't. Uh, I don't think that that's it, like that's the Sony part is just make or break. So I see where you're coming from, and I tend to agree. It's just so many people talk about Sony, and I'm like, damn, maybe maybe it is likely, but I. Like I said, I, it, this is one of those in managements I trust. I have no clue. Maybe it makes sense to not do a Sony agreement. You know what I mean? Just to just to play a little bit of devil's advocate here. Maybe they're like, no, no, no. This Microsoft deal is so good, like Man Child's talking about, that it's not even worth it to even attempt to do a Sony one. Maybe we just do some other partnership with some other folks because the Microsoft, blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? Just to take the other side of this, just for the sake of discussion. But um, so no, you're not alone in that, Man Child. Um, Cheyenne, you've been in okay. So cheers, Cheyenne. All right, all right, all right. I better get caught up. Maybe people are disagreeing with me. <laughs> Maybe I mean, now I'm too afraid to get caught up. I'm like, uh. customers that consume from GameStop, right? So uh, to, to this is Uber's point. Uber saying additional reasons why GameStop in particular is a superior maybe partner than some of the other retailers, it's because they crush it from things like uh, um, they buy more games, um, licensed merchandising, but just accessories. If there's Sony accessories and stuff, it's a better experience for their gamer customers for mass merchandise. This is why this is another reason this article is good. It's not so much just about that Sony partnership, but just talking up the value add that GameStop offers to a whole bunch of partners. They crush it on some of these things. So Uber, thank you for bringing up that point. If you didn't see Uber's point, I'm just saying that... Um, GameStop brings value that um, quite a bit more value than other retailers don't. It's not just about um, the, selling the console, right? Like to my point earlier, it's like there's so much demand for these consoles. It's like uh, it's about this other stuff, and that's the higher margin stuff. Remember, for a lot of the consoles themselves are, are higher margin for Sony or GameStop. It's it's the other stuff. That's where the free cash flow comes from. Good point, Uber. Nobody. Th that's right. So Gat says nobody. So yeah, uh, who, who was it? Some folks were saying on the, on the last stream. Nobody thinks GameStop can get that deal. So if that's true, and I have no idea. But then if they do get it, then it then it's uh, it's like a wake up call to folks. So if that were true, continued confidence for more partners. Yeah, that's right. Just like I said, just any partnerships, just just to show us that people want to team up with GameStop for the long term future. It's like we all see this. Like Uber's points, like. The data is there. The management has said this. The investor relations team has shared this. Like it's known, and now it's like <laughs> GameStop is already adding this value. Like it is already bringing this value to folks. But now we just need to see some deals that result from it. That's why I feel it's like a, a, it's kind of inevitable. I don't know the timing of any of this. So maybe three months, six months. Um, but like GameStop is is such a good uh, retail partner that it's like it almost seems like it seems silly that there wouldn't be more partnerships because of course they're they're kind of incentivized to do it. And that's Dimitri's big point there is that people are incentivized to team up with someone like uh, GameStop. I did see that uh, Microsoft, made they're, they're rearranging maybe the stores. Microsoft is going to be more prominent, which again kind of lowers, I think, the, the probabilities of a Microsoft-type partnership with Sony, if you follow me. Doesn't mean they couldn't still have some sort of a partnership. You know what I mean? I, I always felt that one of them was probably going to be the more prominent partnership than the other. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Yeah. So Dale, I don't. Yeah, does Sony have stores? If, I don't. I didn't know. I haven't been in one. Do they have stores? I don't know. No. See you. I know you're talking about Microsoft because they closed their stores. I realized that, but you were saying that that was a reason you didn't think a deal was uh, likely with Sony. And but I was pointing out that. Doesn't Sony not have stores? So isn't that a reason that they might want to team up? So, oh, am I this far behind? Shit. Oh, man. Have I ever been caught up? Oh, I don't think I've been caught up. It's 10-10. Oh, no. No, yeah, so Microsoft closed their stores, and GME is giving them that retail space. GME can't provide that to Sony now. Oh, oh, oh. I think they can provide it to both, but indeed, only one can be at the front of the store. I'd agree with that, CU. But again, but this, if Sony doesn't have stores, don't they like having a, a major presence in retailers? I, I keep going. Okay, CU thinks that they put, put them into a bidding ward and took the more beneficial offer. That's interesting. I hadn't heard that. I kind of like that take. I don't necessarily agree with it, but I, I like it as like a thinking thing.
Attach rate is higher with GME. Yep, yep, yep. value persona for Sony pursuing a deal doesn't have to be the Microsoft run right 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 Reggie yeah we don't know if Reggie had a we don't know about that Nintendo allocation but agree I agree having him on board helps potentially with Nintendo stuff um yeah no right so Gats just said what I said we can't say it was definitely Reggie or we also can't say that there was definitely like more allocation like I saw the quote I, I know what people are talking about but I believe it was Reggie single-handedly. Yeah, but we just we just got no proof. That's the thing. About to close the conversation. Don't see a zero PS5. Yeah. Rent to own. Yep, yep, yep. Saw people talking about that more. That's good. Microsoft Xbox games. Extremely competitive price point for rent to own. Good discussions, good discussions. Sorry to be a downer. What would make you think we were standing in quicksand and Jimmy? Not a bear at all. Just yeah, good it's a good question, Daniel. It's a good, you should always ask that. Whether you're, I mean, if you're bullish, you should still ask, what would make me change my mind? What's make you, he asked, what, what's make me think we're standing in quicksand? A poor Q4, Q1, Q2. Like a poor, if these three quarters, if they don't generate as much free cash flow as I think they will, my thesis is wrong. But that's, at this point, that's all, I mean, that's all, that's, uh, Ryan Cohen, it wasn't even part of my thesis. Uh, it's because someone, I did just see so Ryan Cohen, for some people, Ryan Cohen selling a stick. It, it would, it would, it would be a short term negative. Price would probably sell off, but it's free cash flows at the end of the day. Um, so for me, I need now at this point, we made it to the new console. So I'd have to see, um, lower free cash flows that I might be expecting. Always a good question to ask. Any thoughts that if the ultimate play is Microsoft buys GME? The odds of that have increased in my mind. I still don't. It's not my base case, but the odds of that Microsoft just taking GME, uh, buying them out, definitely increased. But I don't think it. That's all I'll say. Gives me doesn't give GME any incentive to partner with anyone. It, it give. No, no, no. Oh, see you. So see you says people buying more games from GME doesn't give any incentive to partner with anyone. GME's in control. On the contrary, see you. I, I, if they're mutual beneficiaries here. GameStop, GameStop needs. Everyone knows GameStop needs these partnerships because of um, looking out five, ten years. What's their business model look like for, if it's just a physical disks and they don't have these um, revenue sharing partnerships? I, I, um, I, I think I'm of the opinion. I think Uber agrees too. Physical disks going to be around a much, quite a bit longer than people are expecting, and certainly what the market is pricing in. But even still, if they're serious about transforming themselves. Um, there, that's GameStop's incentive to partner with folks. So I'm, I wouldn't totally agree with you uh, there, CEO. Not immediately, yeah. Manchild, yep. The odds have definitely increased. Because of that Microsoft announcement, it is the extent of it and everything. Oh, shit. How the hell am I this far behind? GME learning to crowdsource more. So like an acquisition. Yep, yep, yep.
Yep, I agree. I um, I agree. So Uber saying, if you read, if you read this, Uber reiterating that he feels very confident. Sony's talking about GameStop here. Said it. It's quite clear to Uber that they've come to terms with GameStop. It may just not be a formal announcement. I I tend to agree. That's what I mean. When it may never be an announcement. I know Uber would agree with that. That everyone's like. Uh, <laughs> They already announced that they made partnerships with other folks. Maybe it would be the type of partnership that they have with Sony isn't announcement worthy. You know what I mean? Um, but uh, and uh, or it isn't yet. Maybe it will be. I will say that they focus on cash cards. This is that was my one thing with this Uber. The quote: the, the, the nice ecosystem relates to cash cards. Not for digital revenue sharing, right? Uber, if you have any thoughts on that. That's my thing. The partner, the Microsoft thing was a digital revenue sharing partnership. And that's quite a bit different than what the quote I'm seeing in this uh, paragraph. That's That, that would be, uh, let me keep going. Yeah, okay. So CU says Sony has a ton of stores. Thank you, CU. Not in the just not in the U.S. Mainly Asia. Okay, got it. Beverly Hills, NYC, the last two in the U.S. Okay, my but my point still kind of stands at least in the U.S. that uh, they still want a strong retail partner because they don't have a strong retail presence themselves. No, nah, I don't think Sony uh, gets crushed in this console cycle. I don't. Yep, looking down to go their own separate road. Yep. Okay. See who says, yes, Sony becomes new Nintendo. Nintendo moves ahead in the realm. I was thinking of that when I saw Reggie, as, as many folks probably did. I thought their relationship with Nintendo may strengthen. Haven't seen much so far. Yep. GameStop like bacon, Uber. They make everything better. Publisher and console, cute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These exclusives do not seem exciting. Wow, CU says, I fully believe that GME knows the leverage they have and are fully prepared to reshape the whole gaming industry to turn this around in a big way without GME gaming... Without GME Gaming, literally wouldn't be the same. Interesting. Yeah. I, I, I agree with that to an extent, for sure. I don't know about... Um... Yeah. Interesting. Amazon doesn't attach shit. That's right. Not Or not much. Yep. Ah, oh, was I close? Uh... Yes, I was. David's, I guess my only point is that Sony's exclusivity strategy is going to win in the end as they would own the contents which drives people to the platform which makes a lifetime deal with GM. That's right, yeah. So that's what I mean. Maybe uh, it's not a lifetime deal but it's a different type of a deal and any type of partnership I feel would be good. And I bet that they already have some, some form of one. But indeed, I get your point, David. Thanks for sharing. Social piece, yep. Console games are thirsty drugs. This is Steam library, yep. Money, okay. So CU sees that that Microsoft partnership much. So close, so close, so close.
Polygon. See, Polygon had a stinner. Look at this. I'm not even caught up. Polygon ate a stinner, huh? Oh, I think they both have backwards compatibility. Yeah. Let's see anything about the EU partnership in Microsoft earnings? Probably not because it's such a big company. Yeah, exactly. I wouldn't think you would. Maybe though. Console exclusivity is dying due to cross-platform gaming, though. That's a good point. Okay. J um, this is James Lee. Welcome. Welcome. Happy Friday. Been out of the gaming. Uh, been out of gaming 20 years. 41. Needed an adapter for Wii for kids. GameStop. First place I thought to go and had never shopped it since Funko. And there you go. That's a, it's, a, it's a destination for folks, you know? they need to reap that they've acquired the customers now they need to reap the lifetime benefits that's right it makes sense that's relevance that's right i agree with you james i was surprised how so many people earlier this year were saying GameStop wasn't relevant anymore i'm like not relevant their stores were closed and they literally and they said the tail end of a console it's like they literally generated a billion dollars in revenue in one quarter i'm like that's crazy that you don't think they're relevant that's no joke a one billion in uh, uh, revenue for a retailer Well, Dusty, I don't know if it's a gift that they offer backwards compatibility. Their customers want it and would have been pretty disappointed with them. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, I know what you mean, Dusty. Uh, yeah, I know what you mean. You don't mean an actual gift. You're just saying it was, <laughs> it's really for, for it's, uh, really good that it, it's offered so that GameStop can benefit. <laughs> Polygon, what, did you have a hot pocket? Do you just have a hot pocket and you go out and you microwave it real quick and you bring it back and you're done? So Gat says to Uber, yeah, customer acquisition plus database, the um, Power Up Rewards database plus Game Informer plus lifetime customer value. Yes, please. Yeah, there's too much optionality here. Again, I don't know what the partnerships look like, but to think that the Microsoft one is it or, the, or for the major ones, I disagree. Yeah, not intentionally. My, my, sorry, Dusty. I should have read the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. Super Mario World, Super Mario Brothers Three. Definitely Super Mario Brothers Three, right? Definitely. There's, it, there's not going to be anyone here who says Super Mario World, right? There's no way. That's high conviction. That's high conviction analysis right there. Everyone's going to say Super Mario Brothers Three. Oh, Polygon had a Taco Bell. A Taco Bowl. Oh, shit. Yep, that they have multiple partnerships. I think some that were already um, all set, um, uh, Manchild, but they they were they look like they were small with smaller vendors, uh, according to Uber. Was yeah, Gats Super Mario Brothers Three was and is so good. What Manchild? Manchild, get out! Get out! Are you serious? Is it really? It's, wait, which 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 one was Super Mario World? Uh, I know it's Manchild. You just messing around, Manchild. I feel like he's just messing. Oh shit! There's no way. There's no way. If you, I'm trying to think. It came with the SNES. Oh, did it? That was probably the. Was that the default one? Okay. Two PC. P, two PC. Yeah, Polygon plays. I think Polygon's a big PC gamer now. He he does a whole bunch of gaming references, and they go over my head. He's like, no one's gonna get this. Uh, Super Mario World. That was the one with like, um, yeah, that was like a that was like a weird one, wasn't it? A little bit weird. Super Mario World. Weren't there like apples or something in there? It's weird that that's the thing that I think of. <laughs> well, my mom came home with SES and Super Mario World. It blew my mind. Yeah. I think I think big potential. Once COVID is not as big as for doing e-gaming partnerships direct with developers using retail space for tournaments and for other stuff too, right? Maybe Dusty, maybe they can do it with some other esports stuff in there. If not just the tournaments, maybe like some showcasing of some 
um, some professional um, esports folks just in there. Maybe a tutorial type stuff and uh, like there's other stuff too. But I yeah I, I agree with you, and I agree with you. COVID kind of interferes with that, but maybe down the line with developers using retail space for tournaments or even showcasing their games. You talked about that Activision and um, EA, like just saying, hey, here's a here's an early look at some of these some of these games and watch some professionals play this game before you've even seen the game come into the store watch them play watch them compete that'd be kind of sick we need a different type of a store layout right we're just shooting the shit here looking out a couple of years okay um it's man child it was the first game with yoshi yeah it was the first game with yoshi eating apples oh i was gonna say man child isn't that funny that's when i remember the damn apples in okay and with yoshi eating the apple so what was it the first game with yoshi too was yo was it the first game with yoshi Local Smash tourneys would be insanity and bring lots of business. Yep. Cheers, Ronald. Huh? Happy Friday. I think so. The main thing with Smash is, is finding a venue, right? I mean, there's some ven venues out there, right? Uh, but if GameStop could do that too, that'd be sick. I check that shit out. Okay. All right. I agree that Microsoft isn't the only partner, but I believe the other major partnerships are with software game developers. Success. Maybe, maybe see you. I, I wouldn't even disagree with you. That's what I say. Maybe it's so. That's why I say I, I might be more intrigued by a non Sony type partnership, a non Sony material partnership, right? With who you say the other uh, software or game developers, accessory manufacturers. I'm on board with that. I, I honestly don't even know what the probability breakdown is. I think people just assume Sony because it's the next big one, but I'm with you. Possibly esports, sports leagues like the NBA in a delivery. So I'm with you, CEO. I don't, I don't disagree. I, I like where your head's at. Cruise control. Cruise control is back. And she's in cruise control at this point. It's going strong, going strong. But at a very stable speed, at a very stable, she's in cruise control mode. It's like she doesn't, she's she's going strong, but steadily. Bringing in sponsored pros for meet and greet. Yeah, that's right, Dusty. That's what I was like. This other thing, yeah, like you like the idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, James James Lee's on Twitch. Nice, nice, nice. Oh, first game with Yoshi. Wow, I, I forgot that. Oh, I didn't realize that, man child. The, there was one, wasn't, oh, Yoshi's Island. Was not was Yoshi's Island the best Yoshi's game? Maybe I just think that. Was there a better Yoshi's game than Yoshi's, where Yoshi was the focus? Not even the focus. I mean, I mean Yoshi's in uh, Smash. So I guess you maybe some people would say Smash, but I feel like Yoshi's Island was sick. We talked about that one a couple streams ago. Yeah, uh, cruise control. We need to. If you want to join back in the uh, stream, you need to answer a very important question: Mar Super Mario, uh, the Mario World, or Mario Brothers Three? Okay, so Cody is about this PC gaming market. I think a lot of folks are. As a PC gamer, primarily, I don't have much use for them at the moment. If they began to be a destination to pick up peripherals or GPUs, etc. Well, Cody, I think you're in luck because I think they are. They've been pretty open about their transforming themselves. But I wonder. Yeah, I wonder what a part. Well, you don't talk about partnership, but they're going into the PC gaming market. Keep an eye out in the coming months and years. I think they're going, they're going in there heavy. I'd have reason to shop there personally. Some people, t Cody, what about the, a what about a used a used PC market? Would you buy? Do you buy, would you be interested in a used stuff? Is there an opportunity out there, a business opportunity out there that no one's really taking advantage of that maybe a GameStop could? We talk about PC building and um, and some other, like you said peripherals and stuff. I wonder. I had a reason shop there. I thought you were just saying so. Sony helped GME build the venue venues. That would make partnership make a lot more sense, especially when they're competing with Microsoft. Yeah, that's probably a bigger type partnership. That seems less likely. Cruise Control Mario World. <laughs> oh, no. What is it? A chat device. <laughs> oh, damn. Wow, this surprises me. I can't, one, I, I let Manchild pass, right? It was the one, it was his first one. He was excited to play it, but uh, Cruise Control, we're going to need an explanation because I don't know if this is excited. This surprises me. I said that was high conviction analysis. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh he, okay. Manchild didn't have an SENES. My brother's got the Sega Master System instead of SENES, so I don't have nostalgia with Mario 3. Oh, okay, okay, okay. You see, that's what I mean. So it comes down to nostalgia. I, so man, that explains Manchild. Like, uh, comes down to nostalgia. 
I play. I did play both though. Website changed the past month. They've added so much PC component. Yep. So Uber ran with this too. Telling Cody that they're going they're going heavy into PC. Oh, Uber's saying they're doing it brilliantly. They had an advertisement with a ten dollars Steam GC giveaway for PC. Wow. Okay. We didn't have the oh yeah the NES, which is what Super Mario Brothers two was on. Yep. Love the man and PC stuff. Believe they're leaning into PC. Yep, yep, yep. Partnership agreements to be the retail face for some of these DTC brands. Wow, nice. <laughs> yeah, good point, CU. Delivery is the one major facet they need to get announced before the holiday season, especially if there's a possibility of stores closed down. So I agree. Um, so a, a very formal... They've touched on this stuff already. Maybe enough that we w we don't need another press release on this matter, but I, I just generally agree they have to have that locked down. They have to. Launch revenue again. I'll go check it out. The key right now. Yeah. GME will benefit more from esports advertising than any single partnership. Wow. Yeah, C was talking about this. He was talking about the size of the whole esports market and if GameStop... And saying how maybe that could be some of the content that GameStop could offer via their app on an xbox console like there's plenty of content type areas that gamestop could potentially go down where we haven't heard much on it but that's why i like the discussion because i don't really i you know i don't have strong thoughts about it and um cu feels it's it's a huge opportunity for a company like gamestop oh gee okay so cody says yeah gpu swap program sick okay Esports is going to be huge. Gat's kind of agreeing with CU there. Already is in a way, but much bigger. PC gaming will be big. And marrying the two, plus advertising has potential, right? That's what CU's saying. It could be gigantic. And it maybe it's, I think CU's getting that. It's not talked about enough. And that's why CU's been crushing it going through um, line by line, being like, yo, this could be this, this could be that. And... Um, Leverage esports pro leagues to deliver exclusive content. This is a big part of what uh, C was talking about. And we're talking about this grow revenue streams via hyper hyper local clinics, uh, gaming clinics and leagues. This is stuff we're kind of we're talking about right now too. A try before you a try before you buy environment with pay for pay services. We kind of talked about that too. Modernizing store assets to provide unique. Uh, re really, we're talking about all these right now, right? And then all the terms here. This just I should keep this up. Lease GPO, return them in two years, get a new one. Wow, very similar model. Okay, uh, very similar model. Always exchanging old hardware for new ones. Cool, okay, yeah. So, what was it? EO, I think, was mentioning, and I think C some other folks are talking about it too. All the used PC shops are disappearing in trade shows. Nope. COVID, oh, okay. Jimmy selling high-end PC stuff. They're selling... Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. High-end PC stuff, Manchild says. Okay, I think Uber was saying this too. If GME partners with the NBA or NFL, they could do esports events in their arena state. So there are some uh, major, I mean, I think Walmart's some doing some esports arena type stuff here. I think that's something down the line. Probably taking the back seat. Take, uh, it's on the back burner just because of this whole COVID stuff, right? But uh, down the line, indeed. Oh, so Desky says, I would much rather buy my PC peripherals from GME and get the pro points than from Newegg or Amazon and get nothing. Hey, thank you, Dusty. I think that's what some folks are saying here. That's, you know what I mean? That loyal, that, that, that loyalty aspect where people might want to buy. Like I said, people might, you might get it to the point where people want to shop at your store. I think that's what's being undervalued, underpriced by the market. Uh, and it's, if you're delivering just a, a, a better, omni-channel experience for your customers and including in that is some of these these pro rewards that you can receive in you know what i mean there's just a uh, tremendous opportunity there for uh, a brick and mortar retailer with scale there just is dusty's saying yeah just I, I just prefer my pc stuff there if only because so i can get some pro points he's like I, I can get this shit anywhere but if i can go here then i can where i'm getting my other shit too then i got everything right there i think they realize this right dusty and they also know it's higher margins and stuff so it's a natural path to go down so I think we're all pretty excited they're going down that path. 
Yep, CU says regional local events is on the pillars. Did I point that out? Oh, oh yeah, I got, I got it. I'm calling it the Mario Brothers 3 versus World Conviction Test. I'm calling my broker to let him know it's all on the line. <laughs> oh, shit. How long before we get the... Hey, Dusty, I'll, I'll tell you how long. Oh, shit, can I find this? Let me try to find this. What the hell is that damn website? I can't remember what it is. Oh, there it is. Oh, so few letters, I just can't. Yo, Dusty, check this shit. So it's closed till further notice, but they, they've teamed up with the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, I mentioned this in that GameStop video, that last one that I did, it was, it was just a quick four minute one, but it's on the channel. But they teamed up with the uh, Dallas Cowboys to offer this shit. I mean, uh, what'd you call it? Did you call it a... Uh, a GameStop Arena. This is kind of close. It's not a true just GameStop Arena, but I thought it was still pretty sick. And it's called the GameStop Performance Center. And they got all this stuff. I think this is sick. But um, there's some arenas out there already. It's not like that's a completely novel concept, but I agree. You would think that a handful of these, just a couple of them around the country, um, where people could come. And that's why it, it was a prominent inclusion in my last GameStop video because I thought, whoa, I agree with you, Dusty. Huh? It's a huge opportunity there. No shit, you can even buy a laptop from them now. Oh shit, good call. That's what Uber was listing all this stuff. You can get a laptop from GameStop? Okay. Management is moving all the pieces in the right direction. Now we have to see execution to continue. That's what Fox would say if he were here. Let's. Is he going to show up late? Let's see. <laughs> it's all about execution, right? I agree. They've kind of set the pieces in the right. They seem to be setting the pieces up just prop, just just right, and uh, but now they need to execute. Oh, trying to come at Twitch. They want to monetize the industry and brand it. Interesting. Once it's branded, it's coming straight to your TV console through the cloud subscriptions, either through GME or the consoles themselves. It's just so there's just right. So to Cody's point, yeah, there's just so much that they can do. When you're on the brink of bankruptcy, you can almost do anything you want, and you have the opportunity to reinvent because no one has any expectations. That's right, Cody. Security analysis. That's security analysis, right? This is an opportunity to start brand new almost. That's right. They just needed to make sure that they had enough cash. That, that was the big thing. So I agree. I, the only additional thing I'd add, Coney, is that they had the balance sheet to subsidize this potential turnaround that the market messed up on. Like you said, they they had the balance sheet to subsidize a potential turnaround. And there's plenty of uh, optionality here that they could go down any one of these potential paths. Maybe we're not quite sure if they're likely to pull off any one of these avenues or uh, how, how, how much exactly how much free cash will they'll generate but that was the thing the stock shared so damn cheaply relative to these potential paths that that that's just, that's security now that's a it was a little bit of a mass delusion i felt now if they can pull the pivot off wow that's right cody because if they pull the pivot off importantly i mean that's where the tremendous upside is just forget about it so james lee adds he builds pcs from scratch so he's running this stuff Right now he goes to Newegg, but if GME offers, he's just going to go there too. He's already going there for his kids, he said. Catch the best-selling... No, I... Oh, I did see that man-child. Someone posted it somewhere. Maybe it was Uber. Did anyone catch the best-selling items of the one-up sale? The physical copy of the New World of Warcraft was on the top. I don't remember the one last time I bought it. The, all, all the top... Wasn't one of them like a, a really expensive arcade or something? Like, was that accurate? I didn't know. I haven't had a disk drive in years. This is why. And accessories already. Part of why I think GME will partner with a developer like Blizzard will be to help give GME the PC industry credibility. It needs mentions and pillars. They've got the components. All right, I like that CU. Blizzard, huh? 
will help to give GME the PC industry credibility. That's true. I haven't even been thinking too much about those PC partnerships, right? But that's kind of what... Okay. I like that. And accessories already, yeah. So, uh, Dusty. Oh, yeah. So, okay. I was learning, but was more joking. Yeah, they, I know, right? So, yeah, the naming rights to a stadium. But still, yeah, this is sick, huh? There's the URL up there, gspc.gg. And uh, it just looks kind of cool. And again, this other arena is out there, but I mean, there's just a ton. I didn't even know if I went all the way down. Decompression porch, whatever the hell that is. Replay room, cognition lab, Miller Lake Player Lounge, Steam Stream Studio. Oh, can we stream the Roaring Kid? Look at there's the microphone. There's my microphone right there. You oh, it was here. I, I do I have those? Head yeah, I do have that. I don't have the. Do yeah, I have those ones. I mean, I those aren't the ones I use, but I got that one. We could do the Roaring Kitty stream right from here. Let me call up GameStop. Let me call him up. Michael Burry, you're on the stream, right? Can you can you make a call? Or Reggie? Yeah, they're probably both on the stream. If you could just try to set this up, and I'll, we'll just stream right from here. Maybe that's is this near is this near Vegas? Can we go can we go hang out here? <laughs> the name rights to the stadium is one of the worst ways GME could spend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think he's having a laugh and maybe down the line. Buybacks versus CapEx. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was joking that. Now they just need a bump in the attention of the mount. Cheers to you. So he's got some good ideas. I, I mean, I, and I don't, I don't know how likely any of them are, but I'm like, yeah, that, that can be. But it's really helpful for me, see you, because I, I'm not, I, uh, like I said, I don't think I'm particularly good at that stuff. Like trying to think through these different avenues, especially when I'm not as dialed into certain areas here. Hey, Robert, happy Friday. Welcome. Asked IR about GME. No, we haven't talked. No, I don't I don't know if anyone's asked IR about GME trading and used PC parts, but we've talked about it a number of times on the stream, and every time it results in everyone being like, yes, that is a good idea, and I would buy my shit there, and no one else is really doing it. It seems just so weird to me that um, no one's really doing it right now. But I, to my knowledge, Robert, I don't think anyone has asked. They're getting reimbursements from vendors. So there are bears saying that GME got scammed. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And GameStop, GameStop allowing customers to finance digital games, Cody says. That's right. Four payments. Yeah, and you can also, we can, you can rent to own. And it's, uh, oh, that's what you're getting at, maybe. Right, 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 right. But maybe parents want to go that route. Oh, people will definitely be going that route. Yep. The, the the amount of uh, entertainment for some folks is worth the cost. It, I mean, it's it's can't make a blanket statement like that, but for some folks, it's worth it. Yeah, GameStop can take cash. Cash? What year is this? See, I know a lot of people. I think a lot of customers of GameStop are using. Uh, like cash and cash cards and stuff. I know that's the thing, and I and I think many people. And I've said this before, but some of the um, vocal bears are folks who maybe don't use GameStop themselves, and I just think you're not maybe the target GameStop customer because there's many folks out there who do. Um, I mean, think of a younger ch younger kids too who might be shopping there, but then folks who do who do want and even need to trade in the games, right? That's kind of how they are able to. To leverage this and I think uh, that some folks maybe just they don't have to do that themselves or maybe they have an opportunity to resell stuff on eBay and I think yeah that's an opportunity but I don't think most people are in that that particular situation yep so D Dusty's saying the same thing IR should watch the stream. <laughs> Maybe they are Polygon, right? I mean, we were, I already assume Burry and uh, Reggie are. Ryan Cohen? Ryan Cohen here too? Cheers, y'all. 
Yeah, so Cody said, reiterates, there's no place you can go and trade a GPU for another one physically that I know of. I, that doesn't mean it's it's a good business opportunity for GameStop. I'm saying I'm not saying that. I I just thought there would be because of it's, I thought it was increasing in popularity. Just another option, right? Just another option that's out there. Kids going in while parents are at Walmart across the yep. You're even folks who might not even have a credit card, just be unable to get a credit card, rely on cash. Oh, I got through the... Oh, JG, I'm just having a laugh. <laughs> I don't actually think they're on the stream. <laughs> I'm just messing. <laughs> they're not. <laughs> they're not on here. They're not on here. You can also contact them. They're tied to GameStop. Gotcha, bro. So partnering with some chip vendors, yeah. I, I really, there's so many different potential partnerships that I'm almost, I'm, in, I'm intrigued by a non-Sony partnership. That do, I don't, I don't know if it happens. I don't know if we get it. Forget the timing. I have no clue. Um, I'm playing. <laughs> I know, Alex. Alex says, imagine if they tweeted hi, Roaring Kitty. Yo, someone let me know if they do. I would die laughing, Ken. <laughs> oh shit. Keep an eye out just in case. Just in case. Uh, that's funny. Okay. So yeah, I wasn't even thinking. So a partnership with a with a P, with just a PC related firm. I love that too. Game a, a software firm, a PC firm. No, oh, yeah, yeah. So see you saying uh, the, the rent to own won't be much of an issue. Yeah, I didn't think it was. Uh, I don't think it was. I don't. I don't view it as an issue. It's a third. See you clar uh, clarifying that it's a third party who's taking on the liabilities. Uh, that was not an issue from my perspective. And the potential rent to own or other financing alert. Like, yep, yep, yep. Build a Funko. <laughs> Build a Funko. Yeah, Jimmy's not financing. No, no, no. Blue light specials. Yep, yep, yep. Base. Base. Hey, hey, yeah. Cheers, cheers, mate. Cheers. delay payment just like my cell phone if I can. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, I don't think we're gonna, I cannot. Yo, Eduardo, welcome. Eduardo, I think Eduardo just joined. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Happy Friday. Oh, man child's out. Peace out, man child. Good talk. Good talk, Thai, huh? Have a nice weekend. Have a nice weekend. Custom in store. See on stock tips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Night night man child. Still think the custom in store PC builds with, with payment plans and in store support is an underrated market. That yeah, it seems I I'm liking what I'm hearing here because uh, this could be a bigger opportunity than I originally appreciated. Dusty uh, saying the in-store PC builds with payment plans and in-store support is an underestimated market. I, I don't know that GameStop goes down there soon, but it'll be down the line. Oh, man, I, I, I got caught up. I mean, oh, yes. That was tough. I feel like I was never that far behind, but it's just such good dialogue. So much back and like legitimate conversation going back and forth, huh? That was sick. All right, so 10.50, so let's do some research, huh? Caught up. Now we can do some research, not me. <laughs> oh, shit. GameStop is accepting StormX. It's an app that gives cash back in the form of crypto. Just message. Did you? 
Oh, you're talking about that. Wait, did, oh, did it, was GameStop listed? Oh, shit. Oh, I just... See who just sent this. Oh, it just happened. Okay, it was yesterday. I read. I, I was looking through that article you sent to you before. The preeminent crypto store next to preeminent crypto. An app that allows users to earn crypto cash back for shopping at a. How do you earn back crypto cash? Interesting. I mean, I don't know how much. Uh, I mean, I thanks for sending this. Because you, I mean, we were talking about this in the last stream, right? What the impact could be. Uh, it seems like a lot of retailers are doing this. It's not, uh, but uh, curious. I know we were saying if they announce something bigger on the crypto front, what could that what, what what could that be? What could that look like? I doubt. I mean, they haven't hinted at anything. It's nice that they list a GameStop here, though, huh? StormX. Had you heard of StormX before this? <laughs> See you. I never heard of it. Not to be confused with xCloud. This is a good article. I don't know if I woke one of it. So what, what what would be the decent uh, numbers, decent short numbers? ZCDF, happy Friday, mate. Good. Uh, there's no, I uh, I don't know about decent. I don't know about. Um, oh, you you removed it. Okay. All right. Talking positioning and stuff. Okay. Yeah, I, I I figure between sixty and seventy million. That's my guess. No, I don't know what to make of that, but if that's my guess. Oh, you think so? See, oh, I just thought there was a way to. Oh, okay. You think they'll get a cut? I don't. If, if it is, it would be marginal. But uh, I just kind of interpreted that as. Oh well, yeah, yeah. They'll get a cut. You're right. You're right. That's why. That's so they're incentivized to do it. Might be a small cut, but even still. Because there's probably not tremendous demand from the customer's perspective. So you'd think that it's the vendor being like, hey, will you allow this? Maybe. I don't know. Oh, okay. You Okay, what would be a decent short numbers for us next Monday? Uh, yeah, I don't know. But I don't know what that means, decent. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know what uh, adjective I would assign to it. I, I would just say, my, I'm thinking between 60 and 70 million. It doesn't seem like they closed. But um, you know what? I, like it doesn't mean much. It's just like that's the short interest. I uh, I guess for a, a potential fuel accelerant, if they didn't fully close, which I don't think they did, but then there's that still potential there. But it's the fundamental news that will drive this stuff. But it's, it's still, I'm I'm curious about it. So we'll see. But I don't. I, uh, yeah. Oh. A way of gathering massive use case information, costing GM. All right, more data. So see who's getting at more data. Okay. A different, different type of data. Mm, I should keep that up. Retail shorts have been doing some covering, probably. But the. Yeah, I agree. I think I agree, Cody. I think we know. I have no idea. 
Like, this is not, like, I, but I feel like we would have, you would have felt the, you would have felt the short closures, you know what I mean? By way of price action. And I didn't, it didn't seem like it happened. We'll see, though. It has, there hasn't been that much volume since the 15th, right? A little bit, but not much. Very little relative to what we saw. Very little. Oh, this is sick. <laughs> wow. Oh, Ron says over 70. Wow. Are we taking over under? Short interest. Over 70 or under 70 on Monday? You think over, huh? Wow. Wow. I mean, I... That's not absurd. I, under. JG under. Over. Over. Wow. Isn't that nut this 65 million outstanding? Wow. Y'all take the over. Uh, I'll go I'll go under. I'll go with the under. I'll go with the under. Eduardo over. Wow. With a major PR by close Friday parlay. <laughs> Undover. Hugo. Hugo over here taking the Undover. Want to know when these. Uh, yeah, I and maybe that's the thing. I have no idea if, if they will or when they will close. Again, they need to be motivated to close. Right now, believe it or not, it's a high price and it's, it's a riskier position, but they don't have to close. But, uh, I mean, tremendous fundamental new, like, that, that's what I mean, like a serious turnaround per their thesis may take quite a bit more time, but price action could move them otherwise, I think. Oh, Dusty, I missed that. Uh, all right, been struggling with this all weekend. Been contemplating calling off hunting trip to stay in service. <laughs> Oh, chance of squeeze, but I think I'm probably, oh, yeah, I think I'd say you're probably okay, right? If you got a phone, keep your phone on you just in case, but, uh. Oh, because it's 100 tips, so maybe it won't. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't think I've ever... Uh, no, I guess that's not... This type of a setup would be new, so I have no, I don't have any recommendations on that front. But like it, some people said, too, maybe it's... it's uh, if there were a squeeze, it could take days, weeks, months. You know what I mean? Like the parlay, okay. Jean Natal, what is their number? That's true. I agree with Polygon. If you're super convinced you're right about your position and it goes to 15, why would you not short more? I agree. That's why I keep on wondering if they just have the wrong narrative, that they have the wrong thesis. And they, I mean, I. <laughs> I agree with you, Polygon. Which would mean, which would mean, and they're not, they're, the only way that I, that I feel, I'm, I'm, as like that, what what are their forecast, free cash flow forecasts looking over the eighteen months? And they must be significantly lower than mine are. Significantly, because I, I I have to con I have to concede on a potential major turnaround looking out five years, ten years. Because I, I like I say I, that's less. I'm less sure of that, but I'm pretty sure of the free cash flows over the next eighteen months. Like I think they're gonna crush it, especially relative to the market cap. It's that downside protection. I feel pretty confident about that. But that's what, so just the rationale. If we're, again, if we're thinking of where there's a ra there's rational people, we joke about the beep boop boop on the other side of this. But if it's rational people, just like hey, we're right. So you add more because it's a better opportunity. It's it, it's it's it's, be it's a better opportunity. At the same time, when you contrast it with the the increased risk, isn't there increased risk on the upside? That I think that that I I personally think that that counters the increased opportunity. But um, maybe I don't know enough about this. GameStop Thirsty Thursday is what we hit it off again. I know. Who is it? Is it? Oh, it, did, we didn't end up. It didn't end up going crazy yesterday. But who was it? Anthony saying that we should do it. We should. It, the stream should move to Thursdays at this point.
Yeah. Gonna pull some David Blaine shit and disappear in church. That's what I'm talking about, Cody. Like, maybe that can happen. I just don't realize. I just don't appreciate that it can. They just, they're just out of it. We're like, oh, shit, they did it? They didn't even realize. It's possible. That's been my fear as well. That's not my fear. I wouldn't say it's my fear. It's just um, that I maybe it could happen and I don't, I don't realize it. So that's why I try not to... I, I think about it and then move on. I, I think about this fundamental sides. Oh, no service. Oh, I missed. I missed. He said he has no service when he's hunting. Okay, okay. I misunderstood that. Middle of nowhere. No service. I'll be lucky to have it down. Okay, Dusty. How long's the trip? <laughs> Yikes. I'm just kidding. We don't know. We don't know. But at this point, it is continues to scream bullish in my mind. Uh, how long's the trip? <laughs> Seeing the share availability on iBorrow in their fee coming down made me question if retail was covering not not touching incremental supply. Okay. So far, the Magic 8-Ball remains undefeated in predictions. That's right, CU, because we had asked something and we said no. Not, that's right. Didn't it say we weren't going to get anything this week? I think. Good call, CU. A rolling squeeze. Yep. That's a guess. That's, we believe the risk circuit breaker kicks in within 25%, 17 to 18. I'm definitely in that 16, 17, 18 area. If I had to guess, if it were to happen, I'd say 16, 17, 18 area. When you breach that, but that's a complete, complete guess. But I, I guess I'm a little bit encouraged. People are kind of like Ubers um, on the same, in the same, or Rod's on the same um, page. Big Yat say that too. We'd still have the, if that hundred, we'd still have the fundamentals. I think this thing could hit a lead. I, I have no idea what it could go up if it. Yeah, I agree, Alex. You can't get, you can't bet on Q3. I, bull or bear, you can't bet. You don't bet on Q3, I think, for a longer term thesis. You're a big short. You're gambling that Q3 are, yep. I think we're also the, are we all? You'd also be gambling that you even make it to earnings. And that's right. So I agree with you. So, so CEO was like, yo, you're even, you might not even make it to earnings. So I agree with that because sometimes prices just go whoop. They just go whoop. What are you going to do? Like people think, oh, there's no earnings. There's no catalyst. It's like, first of all, any, any potential like catalyst, like a news thing can come anytime. That can come anytime. Um, but then just um, some market-wide tailwinds and then people start piling in like that. So I agree. Good point to bring up CEO that you need to get there. And that's what I mean. I have no clue, but it's just the risk. I just see the risks. Uh, I can't think about this anymore. Uh, there we go. Okay. Get that. Push that in there. Flirted with 16 already. We're right there. Yeah, I don't know Polygon. You talk about that forecast? Probably has a model that thinks free cash. Yeah, so that's what I mean. So I, that, some forecasts of free cash flow might be must be way, way lower than what I'm thinking. Then I'm like, well, am I wrong about that? Okay, so gas is in that same boat too, 17, 18. That's almost no way we don't get there. Ah, maybe, uh, sometimes that shit does. Sometimes, what if, what, if we, what if it sells off aggressively early next week? Then it's, then it's you know what I mean? Sometimes these things just, when you have a super volatile stock like this, and people might be trading it in, at the margin, you know what I mean? Whether it's technical analysts or uh, whomever it is, momentum folks, you can just sell off a quick 10%. You don't, don't be surprised by that if that happens. Again, everything in my assessment is continuing to scream bullish. But um, So then if we're at 12, 13, 14, Cody, then 17 to 18 looks a little bit further off for what that's worth. That's what I'd say to that. Um, another long or two to add a bit. Right, so that's yeah, like eighteen is not that close. If we don't know if, it, but eighteen is not that, right? Twenty percent. <laughs> so one, it's one news release. You know what I mean? One pot. Well, I don't know about Motley Fool. I don't. I don't think a one article. Maybe like a Wall Street Journal or New York Times. Maybe. Five more. 
Oh, she was quick if we think. Who knows anymore? I know, right? I'm losing track. I'm losing track. Yeah, or Ryan Cohen. To, just to toss another one out here. Ryan Cohen talks about the position. I mean, there's there's just so many things. Literally, I mean, they're in my mind, they're countless. Like, I can't keep up with all of them. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, Alex, I'd be curious about that too. Any interest? Academic guides on how shorts exit their positions intelligently, right? More being so other market market makers aren't trying to take over. Interesting, interesting, Rod. Market makers aren't trying to take on risk. I think that's why they're not willing to take the other side of some of these trades when the actual liquidity is simply not there anymore. Hence, ten cent spread. I don't know. No, yeah, maybe. Look at this. Cody, cheers. I just want to say, if nothing else, this has gotten me more into investing in stock game than anything else ever has. I'm having the time of my life tracking this shit. Look at this. All right, sick. Haven't been this psyched about anything in a long time, and it's especially given the time where it's nice to have distraction. All right. Cheers, Cody, huh? This is it's a fascinating story. It really is. I agree. Um, it's just... It, 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 even more so, it, I mean, if it does go bananas, and again, I... Uh, but if it go if it if it unwinds in a crazy fashion, then I I mean this is that's great that it got your attention. Like this is this is a kind of aberrant, right? It's a, an unusual setup, but fascinating. This is the type of stuff. This is security analysis, right? It's not just fundamentals. It's just not technicals. There's a lot of moving parts happening. Usually, most theses are quite a bit simpler. This one's gotten a little bit more complex, but kind of in a good way. For I mean I think, but uh, educational, right? It's educational. And that's why I think so. And this stream, like I thought, <laughs> there are other stocks that could be analyzed on this stream <laughs> that we have. Check out the orderly streams. We were analyzing other companies, just broadly kind of reviewing everything. And now we've kind of just focused on GameStop because it's a uh, front of mind for a lot of people, myself included. I know I've said that a number of times. But if we look from an educational standpoint, just view it as a, a big, huge case study. Someone said that a couple weeks back. I'm like, damn, it is kind of like a, a major case study. So we'll have to see. I think the board's executing the revamping of the brand in the public eye is more impactful on Jamie's price point going through the election. We've consistently been up on down days. Again, yeah, GameStop is uh, inverse, inversely correlated with the market sometimes. Part of it is the heavy short interest and stuff. And uh, Hey, salary man. Happy Friday. Welcome, welcome. Hola, amigo. 20 cent spread. You know, the 20 second spread after market hours, that doesn't stand out to me. It's like, yeah. <laughs> was that during market hours that you saw that 20 cent spread or i thought you said it was after hours i don't think that that's odd after hours am i crazy
after the bell. Oh, after the, yeah, which bell? The morning bell or the afternoon bell? It was during. Oh. Was it like right after the bell? Was it right at open? What do you, like, yeah, what time? Could you give a time? Because I took it after the opening bell. So was it like, if it was during it, yeah, that's a big, sp I mean, that now that's kind of getting kind of big. I'm just wondering what minute, <laughs> like, was it as soon as it opened? Oh, me, okay, okay. Oh. 15 minutes after, okay. Yeah, I thought you meant after the close, too. You took a screenshot of it? 15, 20 cent spread seems kind of big. There was low volume today. But there was also, there was low volume today, but there wasn't much reason for, was that today? No, that was yesterday. And nothing came of it, you know what I mean? But I think everyone's just kind of using it as an indication as to what supply, demand, and balance could be under the right, under different circumstances. I mean, this looks bullish, you know what I mean? Even, I, I rarely, I, because of the spread, that's why I thought the squeeze had, oh yeah. There'll be, I, I keep on thinking like when there's a squeeze, there'll be no, like I've, I've seen crazy, crazy moves in stocks. Some that I've been a little bit dialed into, but like, you're like, what the hell is, you're like confused. You're like, what the hell? I feel like it'll be obvious. It's just getting more and more bullish, you know? Okay, Rod says 70 plus million share short Monday. Wow, Monday, wow. Well, that's the thing. We don't, I still don't know who the shorts are. That's why I keep saying, just, in my mind, they're just, they're just robots, you know what I mean? I do think, I think large robots, though. <laughs> that's what I think. I know. If it does blow up, that would be crazy. I don't know if I was crash not doing that. Okay, we could uh, call some. I've seen bids above ass on calls. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I haven't been tracking this stuff too closely. I'm the deep cover short. <laughs> you imagine? I don't know enough about this. I don't know enough about these call sweep orders. Do you got something I can read on this? That uh, aren't there people selling too, or uh, uh, is there is there? Uh, like uh, uh, this. I don't know enough about these call. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know these this call sweep shit. If you got something I can read, I'm I'm curious because I've seen people talking about it. Draw a line along the bottom of that chart. Like right here. Golden bull run support. <laughs> You're laughing. I don't know if that. <sighs> that was? Oh, shit. Oh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, that's a nice line. 15 minute chart. A little bit arbitrary, but I like that. Pretty clean. Pretty clean polygon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I kind of, I didn't, I don't think I've, I did the cup and handle, but I, I should have tossed this line in there. Oh, they, they, let me add it. I don't remember which one it was. Nope. I need to clean up this, my naming convention here. Oh, I did have it. Oh, I did have it. I just didn't round up. Okay. Oh, this one looks a little bit different. Oh.
Oh, yeah, huge thanks to Justin for clarifying a lot of that Microsoft news, right? After consolidation before last run-up, our Bollinger Bands had gone inside Keltner Channel, if you believe in chart magic. Gosh, I know, I, uh... So at what price would we break out above that wedge? I don't know much about it. So at this point, the fundamentals don't matter anymore, and I'd have to agree. Uh, I mean, I <laughs> that makes me that makes me nervous. <laughs> that makes me nervous. That the fundamentals don't matter. I don't know that seems too strong for me. I think I saw that too. Doesn't mean he's wrong. I brought the loop comments up to him in email management and posted my response and questions as well as my Twitter. You can check it out. Yeah, check out. Uh, he, he, Ron posted the whole the whole conversation back and forth, so there's no there's no confusion over what was uh, the intention, uh, the the communication to um, from investor relations to shareholders. I'm glad it got back to overbought range. I mean, I don't think you, I don't think you break. To, am I wrong here? I don't think you break seventeen without I don't with fundamental news. Do you, anyone disagree with that? And then even then, it's it's even a question of what happens thereafter. Uh, well, no, I didn't say it with 15, JG. I'm in that 16 to $18 range. I'm in that 16 to $17 range. Like, I want to see you, like, crack 17 into 18. So, I mean, maybe other people did say 15. And even if it was 15, JG, in my analysis, you need to, you need to, you need to blast through that shit. Like, you can't go, you can't just, just break it a little bit. You need to go, Oh uh, yeah, there's probably some people who were saying 15. Uh, 15 is an, 15 is looking. In, I've been saying 15 looks is looking increasingly important. I think that. Just to be clear, 15 is looking increasingly important. That's why it was nice that it closed above that. But as far as we're, we're talking about here, that's why if we can hold this 15 level, this I mean, if we can get in there, I'm still in this box though. But for something crazy to happen, I think breaking up, uh, if if at all, like you, you need to like power through this upward range up here. I mean, like, it did get a little bit above 17 there, a little bit. Uh, otherwise, I just think we're in this box. Like, I, I have no strong opinions between 11 and 16, 17. Like a pinball wizard, yeah. I think without fundamental change, it just takes one greedy bull to kill. Ah, uh, maybe, maybe. I'm not saying it's definitely not true. I just think, in my in my assessment, I don't think you're gonna get. And again, it could sell off just because the market sells off or something next week. I mean, it's such a strong. It's 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 evol The good news is it's evol it's evolving. The more time passes, the more powerful this up move looks. Like back then, this looked good. It was breaking out. Uh, that looked good because it was a one year. Um, um, it was like just uh, consolidating for just one year. Then it broke through. That's good. Then it retests, and then it's even more powerful, right? And then more time passes. It gets a little bit overbought, and then it sells off a little more overbought, more overbought. You're seeing it down more overbought. Then it's it's a really then you evolve it. Like I talk about those really powerful uptrends. I don't. I wouldn't say this is crazy, crazy powerful uptrend yet. We need that monthly to get overbought. But now it's getting to the point where it's it's in, it, the uptrend is so powerful that 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 sudden. 20% down move is less likely. It sounds crazy because it, it's incrementally getting higher, but at least trend-wise, in, in my experience, it lowers the probability because the trend is so robust. Whereas back here, it wasn't all that robust. It wasn't that robust. But now we're at eight, we're above 80 on the RSI for the weekly. That's pretty powerful. You know what I mean? Again, not crazy, not crazy, crazy. In fact, I don't know if Hugo's still here. I'll pull up NTZ. You see something absurd here. Uh, you see over 90. Now that's a little bit of a different case because this is more speculative than I think you could see <laughs> a pullback. But um, with something like GameStop, with a lot of the fundamental factors on their side, like I, I think it might be okay. So anyway, I was just running with that because I'm thinking everyone's kind of saying 17 is not that far, 18 is not that far away from 15. But I'm like, 
with a stock as volatile as this and with the short interest as heavy, you shouldn't be surprised by sudden uh, downward moves on no on no news because um, that stuff happens with these types of stocks. Just a just a heads up to folks. People have been saying numbers constantly was eight, ten, twelve. Depends where you read. Okay. Agree there, okay. A snake's on a train, yeah. <laughs> the bid ask spread breakdown is the canary in the coal mine, the twenty cent spread today up from the prior I could be. That would be educational for me. I again I don't a stock a twenty cent spread in a stock like GameStop does sound very, very high. If that's true, did we ever see that screenshot? And also I don't know, then you're then you you don't know if that's the true spread. You know what I mean? Because of the, how the how these brokerage houses might function. I don't know enough about that. Maybe it was a... I mean, you wouldn't even expect to. I don't know. See any IV premium? Evidence of a free share shortage? Ugh. Yeah. There's a drought coming to the land. Maybe, maybe. I don't know. Okay, so Daly's on the same page. I agree with I agree with what Daly just said. Crazy we're trading in the We were trading in the nines two weeks ago and in the low thirteens just four days ago. I do agree we need news to breach seventeen. <gasps> 18 so it's i know it's crazy that's uh, that's why it's all else equal this is good news right it's not like we're definitely permanently here for the rest but technically at some point you like to just see those incremental highs i mean yeah we were just at for a couple of weeks right yeah late september we we're just kind of getting used to nine and then boom and then the microsoft news and now we're, we've gotten above that microsoft news. i thought that was pretty damn bullish because remember like i said last stream everyone was saying it's just fluff there's nothing here and i'm like yo not only have we re took those highs back over we're not we're not all time highs, but new highs in, in this period here. And I'm like, damn, the market. That's what I mean. That supports this bullish move where it's like all along the way, I keep on thinking if this move is bullshit, like if this move is bullshit, go ahead and sell off. You could, It can sell off. It's fine. I, like I, like we were talking about, it, it can be healthy. It can be constructive. It's how the market functions. It's So you can't go up. You generally don't go up every damn day because people need to take a breather or whatever. There's not continual, this nonstop demand. But I got to say, this is, it's been pretty impressive. Um, Pretty impressive move so far. It's like been, um, even on the pullbacks, it's like never been more than a week. Has it really been? One, two, three, four, five, maybe six days, right? One, then right back up, then right back up. It's never been that long. You know what I mean? It's like one week. That's indicative of a powerful uptrend, I um, which you like to see for the stocks that you're in. And this is why this is why when I start I talk about rose colored glasses. You start tilting. I start tilting more bullish because the the the, the as the chart becomes um, more robust, it that supports that that's the tailwind. Whether it's bearish or bullish, it, it could own downtrends. Look at GameStop. I like when GameStop was reporting earnings. Um, what was it? Right, like right here, right there. It, like it wasn't out it wasn't it didn't escape it was still in a really negative boom sells off you know what i mean like these things kind of paint the backdrop in my mind not always it's not like a hundred percent success rate or anything like that but now it's like being more and more bullish i'm like damn okay something to keep an eye on Whew. feel like it's been a month since i know it does feel <laughs> we're aging gamestop's aging us Oh, you don't have to upload it, Alex. Where'd you see it? Which uh, which brokerage house? Where, where'd you see it? Um, I'd be curious about that. Put premium. Okay. Yep. So 10 says another important aspect that affects the bid ask spread is volatility. Volatility usually increases during periods of rapid market decline or advancement. Great point, Ted. 
Great point. Yeah, I can't see you. I, I've been looking for um, concrete bear thesis. I th I keep thinking we're crazy. But, I mean, I I, I want to say I know we're not, but I'm like it, that that level of I don't know. I'm, I think I'm with you. See you. <laughs> Blockbuster, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So as Ted says, at these times, the bid-ask spread is much wider because market makers want to take advantage of and profit from it. That's right. Remember, that's the thing. That's why I'm trying to... It's like uh, it's like the market makers. You know what I mean? It's like uh, they're doing stuff. And that's I don't think that's necessarily indicative of the broad supply-demand picture. You know what I mean? Like these things are at the margin. These are marginal type things. That's why I heavily discount them. And I... Uh, like market maker tape stuff is just not the same as like uh, I don't, but I don't know. I, I that, that's not to say that it's definitely not indicative of anything. I just think when I'm thinking about because I'm I'm approaching this from a longer term outlook. You know what I mean? And I just think what mark what the market makers are doing aren't I don't know. They don't seem to me as indicative of of the setup than I uh, than maybe others are thinking. Yeah, Make, Daily says, makes me wonder about the float like people are talking about. What is really available and does the low availability of shares have to do with the slow creep up after Microsoft News instead of sell? I know, I wonder that too. I don't know. I don't think it's a it feels like it's been a while since we left the threshold. I know, so there's something like, remember how many times we were talking about that threshold securities list? Not, nothing came of it. I, um, and the borrow fees are declining. I'm not convinced I borrow is the vector of the market. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think it's representative of the trend, though. And some folks have come on the chat and talked about how the rates that they're paying are quite a bit lower than uh, what we're seeing. Also have seen hard to borrow at times lately. Oh yeah, forced to, uh, after breaching covenants. Yeah, and that one's dead. Certain like there's certain bare theses that are dead. Very easy to get where if you make a detailed model. On bankruptcy in twelve months? What? Yeah, see so you says when I'm bullish, I read bearish content. That's what you should to keep an even. Yep, that's why I keep on. I'm not finding here. Yeah, I'm not seeing much much out there publicly. How much ice do I need to fill a bathtub? I know, right? There's not much out there publicly, but we do see the short interest. We're like, all right, shit, and if, like it seems like they're probably larger institutions. So I think, okay, where are they coming from? But other than that, I don't see anything. I'm not seeing much. Doesn't mean it's not there, but then you got to. The revolver idea is forcing the default earlier than the debt is due. Um, <laughs> I've 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 seen this before. Yeah, I've read this stuff. I've, I think I've seen this stuff before. But uh, how is that argument not dead? <laughs> Marzenci, hey, happy Friday, happy Friday. Jesse worth that welcome 50 yeah we got still 53 people huh partying on friday night woo woo yeah oh 50 oh i saw the 53 people and uh, there were i think there were 53 likes there too but w because it was pushed back a year what like the thesis was pushed back a year like uh, uh, there this is this is what's confusing me jg is like uh, anyone can just move the goal post right um but <laughs> yeah the, <laughs> what about the big free cash flow cover like we're here 
if the chance, the time for bankruptcy, if you were going to forecast it, was right now. It was here. Aren't the odds of a breach of, of would you say, covenants going to drastically, aren't, they're already drastically reduced because they have $800 million in cash in the books and we're about to generate quite a bit. You know what I mean? Like I can't even take it seriously anymore. It may, it may have been a fun conversation back in March and April. I can't take it. I can't. I can't take it seriously anymore. You know what I mean? Talk about a tell. Yeah, I mean, there's plenty of there's plenty of bear theses here looking out the long term. So Cody adds that they uh... <laughs> salary pass. Just having roaring kitty on his background noise. <laughs> instead of careless whisper by George Michael. I, hey, hey, salary man, you need me, if you want me to sing that shit, I will sing that. I know the song, but I actually forget the lyrics. So I don't know if I can. But, um, oh, yeah, so I would, okay. So, uh, yep, $800 million in cash can disappear. Yep, that, I mean, that's, <laughs> if that's, you know what I mean? Like, if that's the thesis, I'm sorry, but that's ridiculous, right? I, of course, uh, it's, not, it's not like they don't need cash to operate. Yep, of course they need the cash to operate the business. Of course they need the, they need the cash to, um, to, to purchase the inventory that they're going to be selling in Q4. Of course, it's, I don't mean to say that it's it's free cash to be used for anything like that. I'm absolutely not saying that. Uh, but that cash is also to be paired with the likely free cash flow that they'll be generating from Q4 here on out. Oh, oh, I disagree. I th I feel like I I, f I maintain a fairly uh, reasonable. You don't. Um, what? Uh, just to be clear here. I'm talking about them breach. Sorry, okay, I gotta scroll back up, JG. That you are. Um, no, okay, we're doing. I'm not talking about management blowing it. Sorry, uh, I'm gonna scroll back up and reread what you just wrote here, just to clarify what I think. Uh, okay. So, okay, you, uh, just to be clear, so you don't think that them breaching revolver covenants within the next twelve months in defaulting is ridiculous? Uh, if you if you'd like to say that, then then okay. If you if you, if that's what you're saying, I'd like I'd like you to just because we've kind of gone all over the place on this uh, on this chat here at the tail end, we've kind of gone down a different paths other people have mentioned. But if we could just put that in one item, because then we can get on the same page. See, sometimes I think there's disagreements that sometimes happen, not just in the chat, but even in real life, where people start going down different paths. But specifically, what I'm disagreeing very very strongly with is you mentioning. Sorry, I just lost it. Ah, damn, where'd it go? There's going to be a forced default on the debt after breaching revolver-related covenants. And now you said it's been pushed back a year, so I assume within the next 12 months. And you don't think that now with the balance sheet where it is as of uh, at the end of Q2, heading into these new consoles and the free cash flows that I believe they'll likely generate. Maybe you disagree, and I'm sure the Bear Thesis does. Okay. I have read the report, JG, just to be clear. I, I've seen it. I did see it on Twitter. Um, and I believe that uh, this is my point, is that, again, it was a fun conversation in Q, in calendar Q2, March, April, May, and so forth. That, that's what I mean. There's certain elements to this thesis there you go. Uh, you know what I mean? So as Ted Clemenza, there's certain elements of this thesis where you reach a point where I can't take this stuff seriously anymore. All right. All right. Okay. It's all just timing. Okay. I, I, it's not all just timing, in my opinion, because there are uh, there are fundamental changes to the business and the balance sheet that are unfolding every 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 passing quarter. Um, okay. All right. I'll stop. I'll reread it. I reread it. I know. What you, I, I'm pretty sure I know what you're talking about. And I, I, I uh, okay. Easily happen again. Strongly disagree. We'll 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 strongly disagree. I um, a per, I, what I what I would agree with, and this has been a big part of my thesis, is if it weren't for these, uh, if it weren't for this major major fundamental catalyst for GameStop, this would be a vastly different thesis. Both theses a vastly different conversation. I'd be. I'd have much less conviction in this thesis. That's what I mean. If it weren't fundamental change, yeah, there's new, yeah, the fundamental, yeah, the new consoles coming out. Nothing has fundamentally changed. There's new consoles coming out in three weeks. It's a huge, huge catalyst for 
for GameStop. Nothing has fundamentally changed. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but see, this is... I think, well, JG, would you agree that they... It's not hard? Oh, okay. I disagree. I think it is hard. I think it is hard to get to that conclusion. That's not to say that the long-term bear, the long-term bear thesis remains intact. Oh, okay. So that okay, you're saying that they were always coming out. That's true. But what was what was what was at the time that that was published? We have more information on this. This is what I'm saying. We have, I believe, we have two more quarters of information. Yep, we knew they were coming out for two. We knew they're coming out for years. What we have now, JG, is far more fundamental information. We have updated balance sheet information. We can understand what their financial situation looks like going into these new new consoles. I strongly disagree with you that nothing has changed just because we have far far more information on this front. The data, the 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 the, the, the what we're analyzing has we have quite a bit more information. That's what I mean, this is it was a legitimate discussion in earlier this year. I would I would. I, I entertained the possibility, like I said, when when they were closing their when they were closing their doors. That's right. So I this is what I th I'm of this opinion. What Ted's saying, and again, J and JG here is very clearly stated. He's playing the uh, devil's advocate. I mean, he says he's bullish. I agree with this. Like like when Fox does this too, I love this. Um, it's very important to do to yourself. Like see, you were saying, you always got to try to take that other side. Uh, yeah, so JG, yeah, I agree. The long-term bear thesis remains intact. I agree with that. I don't disagree with that. But the elements that you're saying is not ridiculous to get to is no longer intact. And this is my issue. That's what I think is, I'm, I'm with Ted here. That thesis that you have just laid out, I, I, I very strongly believe is dead. After everyone thought that. Okay. All right. I appreciate you. T I, pre I please know that JG. I, I very much appreciate you pushing on that point. Um, that long-term bear, the, the, the long-term bear uh, thesis. I, I, I keep on saying it's still into. It's the level. Of the sh I mean, you, first of all, you have the level, the short interest. Just table the short interest, but just the bear thesis. Ryan Cohen getting involved, generating free cash flow over the next eighteen months. That doesn't. That doesn't guarantee that GameStop is definitely going to kick ass out five years, right? In one Microsoft, one announced Microsoft partnership so far, that doesn't, that doesn't guarantee shit. It, inc it vast, it's it significant, in my model, it significantly increases the chances of GameStop doing that. But I don't even know if it's greater than 50% right now that they do it. So that long-term bear thesis remains intact. I, I'm, I'm, I'm on board with that. And that's why I say, I mean, you got to think about that stuff. But the thesis that you're talking about here, which I heard quite a quite a few talk about defaulting before year end because of covenant breaches on these these revolvers and stuff, I um, I uh, that one I agree with Ted. Ted. I mean, I maybe I can't say I'm not going to say a hundred percent because uh, I mean anything. Okay, okay. But um, it's I, yeah, within twelve. You got it, so it's the same thesis. You know what I mean? Like you say, it's the, it's the same thesis, but it just got delayed twelve months. I'm like, okay. But so much has changed since that thesis was published on the. Uh... Not very long term. Yeah, I agree. I, well, again, I uh, to, in, in defense of JG, I'm here to I'm here. I'll defend you, JG. I like that you keep pushing on this because you're forcing us to come out and kind of and kind of take this opposite view. So when he's clarifying, we can need to stay objective. I'm with you on that long. He's just saying, forget long-term, just just saying two years. Um, did I miss some shit here? Oh, shit, I did. Okay. End of the day, they extended the debt because that action also removed the covenants and will never be an issue again, right? I don't know, but yeah, ne never, I don't know. But look at all 12 months. Uh, this is what I mean. I'm on board with this. I don't understand how um, I, I can't even entertain this seriously. Thinking like a bear. Until they prove their new revenue stream on actual earnings, the long-term thesis still holds. I'm with you, Alex. I'm, I'm agreed, on, agreed on that front. By long-term, I mean seven plus years. I agree with you, Alex. Well said. It's that long-term still still in play. And this is why there's some short interest is makes sense. It shouldn't be zero. I'm just confused by the level of it. I, how many times have I said that? Uh, still useful though, even if you think it's wrong. Agreed. Um, they have what one billion in working capital last year. Where did it go? <laughs> but right, I, uh, we went down that path. Okay, not all the things uh, were waived as part of the debt extension. Yep. Um, we don't know what the terms of the new deal. Yeah, nothing is fine. Okay, agree with uh, dude, went down that path. Yep, yep, yep. Free cash is fine. Yes, I'm with you. 
Oh, you're saying it's not a fundamental change with the ten year outlook. Uh, well, I think maybe we're gonna have we're gonna go back and forth about def what we mean by fundamental here. You, I, the fund the the risks to the fundamental business model. Sure, by fundamental I mean we also have changing financial statements that have <laughs> been released since then. You know what I mean? Improving financial statements. That's what I meant by the fundamentals. I think that's just a a difference. Uh, we're just using that word differently. May have an actual cost. Yep, yep, yep. It's a cyclical change. Uh, but um, uh, yep, it's a cyclical. You talking about the new console cyclical change? I agree with. We're on the same page, Alex. I, have a, I pretty much agree with everything you just said. Cyclical change, right? The, the new consoles don't save the long term business model, but importantly, it generates adequate free cash flows to potentially reinvent themselves, but also very, very likely avoid breaching any of these types of covenants that would cause them to default. Okay, keep going. Steve, Steve Rizzini, cheers, cheers, cheers. No, 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 JG a bull, but he's doing a great job trying to take the other side. Um, I love this. It's like Fox does sometimes too. This is terrific. Because remember, like if this is the best, this is my point. It's because I've read all, I've, I've read, and I know, I know other folks have who follow GameStop closely. I've read all these articles and I've been very, very unimpressed with them. And um, if, if these are the best, if this is the best that, and JG's just doing his, doing doing their best here to, to, to preach it. But if this if these are the best ones, I'm like I feel I feel good about it. I feel I feel better about the thesis. If if this is what I'm competing with is a potential <laughs> default on some things within 12 months, because I'm like all right. And I'm I'm on board with the long term stuff. Like I said, I, I mean even I'm like I'm uh, I'm increasing my uh, my my probabilities perhaps, but I'm not like totally on board with it just yet but i see tremendous the, what i'm ascribing a high value to is the optionality in particular but that doesn't mean any one of those options ends up crushing it but then you're accounting for the cyclical effect on the business yep 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 just technical description the updates stream mining and efficiency yep 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 Yep, at the time that Ted says at the time the shorts didn't think they would make it to the console refresh. Yep, the, and remember the stores were closed. Like there were there, some of this, some of this, this short stuff was grounded in reality. Like I said, March and April, this is a vastly different. Ah, oh, their stores. I remember thinking your stores are closed. Okay, long term bear these range stock. Yep, yep, yep. Yep. A lot of assumptions. Yep. Last last quarter free cash flow was huge and slamming. Ah, I mean, if the free cash flow was because of the working capital, but even still. Um, looking out for the near term, it was very important that they generated as much as they did. Let's not forget how close they got to default after. The, okay, talked about that. Pain and tack, but not the covenant thesis. Yep, but not the covenant thesis. Yep, that's how I feel. I, I agree with Ted. And looking at deteriorating cash flows, digital consoles, and digital game store closure and count. Yep, he's right about analyzing the fundamentals post console launch. Yep, yep, yep. I see 52 week high and short. That's not the big hedge fund. Yep, I agree. Yeah, Rod, I think people are. I think people. That's people getting the wrong story, as I know. Uh, Rod knows. I, I think people are picking up on the wrong. They're not piecing together right now. I think price action, longer term price action, will 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 show one way or another. Okay, got some. Sorry, I hope I'm not falling way behind. I just want. I saw some people talking about quite a bit. Oh shit, I did kind of fall behind. Oh no, I should maybe I should. Okay. Yep. I agree. Polygon GameStop has guaranteed its existence for this console cycle, but we need to have a transform business itself by the time the cycle. Yeah. I, I agree with that for the most part. I do. Income statement looks like a fellow. Yeah, income statement looks terrible, right? I mean, uh, that's, I think people, and there's a thing where um, a, a lot of investors, uh, PE ratios and stuff, I don't even look at the damn income statement. I mean, I, I rarely look at it. See you. I really enjoyed that. There's never any trolls here, and we can all keep it. I know this is great. There's never any. I, I have we had a, a troll like just really. I, I love the stream. Hey, right, cheers. See you, huh? All right, all right, all right. Ted saying the covenant thesis is delayed. Yeah, no, yep. Personally, love reading as much about the bear thesis as I can. I disagree at this point for the next year, but it helps me in life. I agree. Yep, I'm with cats. You know what I mean? Like we disagree, but I'm like, all right. If this is how they might be thinking about that, I'm like, I feel a little bit better. <laughs> Make your own models. Okay. That's fair. I, I also appreciate. I uh, I like that re rebuttal too because I'll say the same thing. It's like, yeah, make it, make it, make your own models. Bear case. Um... He's doing. If he is Fox and I mean, uh, he do, 
it, a great reply. We don't have Fox, but uh, a great, a great uh, alternative view here, huh? Wells tells people to make models. <laughs> Wells tells people to make models. I, that's what I was going to say. I kind of like that because what was it? Where Fox was saying, try to recreate the model uh, that uh, that $1.50 price tag. I'm like, I'm not making that model. Like, y'all make it. Yeah, I'm not doing that. I know, yeah, Steve, I don't know. I know it's that that level of risk. I agree. The business model, but the, I just, I, that's the thing. I, I'm with you, Steve. From a risk standpoint, that's what's alarming to me. Oh, I know. We still don't know. I don't know. We don't know who they who it is. I haven't been thinking about that too much. You know what I mean? Like I I know people talking about the the. I don't know. <laughs> Let me start drawing straws for Devil's Advocate. I know, yeah, Dusty. Dusty says, we're going to start drawing straws for Devil's Advocate tonight. You're joking, but I love that idea, huh? I thought that was a great discussion. Come on, kid. 20 million is what made America super <laughs> Recreate the model. Recreate the model. <laughs> oh, shit. That's right. Oh, Steve. Oh, Steve's just joining. Hey, Steve. We're, we're going. We got more to the Halloween theme, buddy. We got to bring Steve up to it, huh? Here we go. This is what we're, this is what led, this is what led to these disagreements, Steve. You know what I mean? We, this is, let's try, how do you have a serious conversation about breaching covenants? You know what I mean? Like, it gets out of, it gets out of control. I don't even know if you can hear me right now. Son of a. See, Steve? That's good. We were able to, able to hop on the channel just in time. Oh, see, yeah, I agree with you, Dusty. So, Dusty, this is us. Yeah. Dusty says he's serious. I agree. If, uh, someone has to step in and say, what's the bear thesis for one particular reason? Hey, Arthur, cheers, Arthur. <laughs> um, like we were talking about a couple of weeks ago, maybe it was it was probably Fox who got us talking about it, but um, remember um, um, World War Z, where the, what was it, the uh, the, the 11th man or the, the, the ninth person or whatever it was, they need to disagree. If the whole group agrees, they need to disagree. To just get the discussion going and try to talk everyone out of it, we'll get it, we'll approach it different and try to get creative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it's like it's called a thing. What is it like? The who can argue with an articulate? <laughs> uh, less articulate these days, Steve. Less articulate. What's it called? Like the eleventh man. Oh, 10th man rule. Nah, I don't remember. Whatever. Who cares? Yep. See, Ted says that's what the actual, the best organizations do. Yeah. So if we were trying to avoid echo chamber shit, maybe we got to do that. JG, JG wins the award for tonight. No doubt about it. He went, went ham on it too. Appreciate that. Um... If the Doug Dutch could achieve peak sales at 3.9. You have the smart screen there. Take the opposite side. Score. Yeah, yeah, J -J -J -J, score. <laughs> JG, score. Oh, shit, that's funny. So I better win something. <laughs> you do it. You definitely win, huh? You went with it. And then and then you get the... And then if, and then if, if we're wrong and then it happens, then you still get props even though you're a bull. You know what I mean? If that shit happens, hilarious. Um, oh, yeah. Polygon, I think you mentioned ant antibit therapeutics before. GME vaccine, yeah, someone it was someone's been saying that. Yeah, what's the terminal value? That's a big question. I know Rod's talked about that before.
Yikes. Yowzers. Oh, Canadian microcap biotech. Yeah, so, uh, oh, yeah, so I do think, Rod, I do think the, I think the Bears are answering, I agree. You know what I mean? Is to z a zero terminal value? It just seems extreme, you know? It seems too extreme. It seems too extreme. Just because of this. If this alone, I know, because then, like, uh, um, Again, there's no guarantee they pull it off, but there's just almost too much optionality. You know what I mean? Like terminal value from an optionality standpoint. And can't we all, like, you, you look at some options that are way out of the money on some stocks or something, right? Even if it's like, they still got value. <laughs> you know what I mean? They still got some of these options, like, way out of the money. Good luck. You're not going to get them for free. They have some value, even if it's not likely, blah, blah, blah. That's how I view this. How can it be zero? I just think all these potential opportunities, the importance of the scale and loyalty, like we were mentioning before. And I just think it ain't zero. And that's why I do think I agree with you that uh, the bears are pricing a terminal value of zero. And I'm just like, yo, it's just not, uh, it just, it just doesn't seem likely. It doesn't mean it's necessarily wrong, but. Oh, did you, I posted on Twitter. If you want to pull it out. Okay. Let me just check. Well, let me just look at it. Oh, I got it right here. I didn't realize I had it. Boom. There we go, Rob. Spoke with Gmail. I modeled that at a three. Oh. A three to five percent revenue share. The annual digital margins per per sold will conservatively be about ten dollar per year, plus over a six year life cycle. Assume a twenty percent of a fifty million global. Okay. Uh, X, uh, uh, Rod, X ball. What's X ball? I mean, the whole the whole thesis is is, is we can't take we can't take this seriously. X ball. I don't even know. Oh, I'm kidding. Oh no, I just just does it. Uh, okay, so 50 million global Xbox market by 2024. 100 million per year. Wow. What? 100 million? So it'll be about ten dollars per year. Per year plus over a six year life cycle. Well, some people are saying it's gonna be a short life cycle life cycle. Assume twenty percent of a fifty million global. Wow. Oh mostly forget oh and pre oh in you include pre owned? You include pre owned okay. The industry focus was that on was that on Motley Dusty? Um, oh, it's not including pre-owned. Okay. GME can help make distribution fair. GME can help make distribution fair. Reward members get one each for whatever rare on the side. Crash real clearly. I agree with that. Wow, I mean, a hundred million. I mean, laughable, right? I mean, uh, if, if wow, at the end of twenty twenty four, the ten million consoles, right? Yeah, then you start getting wow. I um. Molly, oh yeah, I didn't. Fit. Is that is this this one? I think I got it up. Ah oh, shit, did I exit it? Right there. Oh yeah, yeah, that's it. I didn't finish it yet. Um, the value is in the out years. Right, 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 right. Uh, I mean, uh, talk about ter talk about terminal value, Uber, huh? This is a. Uh, uh, I, if if you get up, yeah, okay, thanks, Dusty. 
this is where we start to get into what are the specifics of the, of the arrangements. You know what I mean? Like if you're really getting down into it, but from what we know so far and you're getting to a hundred million per year, geez, huh? Even at, we're talking about 50 million a year perpetuity forget about it you're already eating up a good chunk of what the current market cap is even at i mean discounted at a high discount rate and then if it's growing right didn't we factor in some growth uh, even if you did whatever so that's that long that's that long-term thesis that that long-term the like i say it's intact right it's stuff like this is what deteriorates. It kind of eats away at that bear thesis, right? That long-term bear thesis. Um, this yeah, that's right. So at one percent instead of um, what do you say, five percent? Instead of five percent at one percent, we're still taking in tens of millions. In the point being, it's not zero, right? But um, uh, that's what I think. Imagine just a couple of these partnerships, and and Rod here is just saying no. Just 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 price out this one. And then it's not, it's the terminal value isn't zero. But then there's, there's like, is there a shorter term bear thesis? And I think not because of the free cash flows that they'll generate. And then I, uh, I mean, that, that, yeah, I mean, now this partnership is looking increasing, lu lu increasingly lucrative. And then if they have, if they can find a couple of them, you know what I mean? I mean, even if, even if it ain't a hundred, as Uber's saying, even if it ain't a hundred million, like take your, take some really conservative, say 1%. Uh, and, but then, but then if you stack a couple of them, right? That's why I think it's silly to think that this is it. This is it. This is their one revenue stream, and this is it. And that's why this doesn't make any sense. And then I think, yo, because um, you just stack up a couple of them, you're back to the hundred million. If we, and then a hundred million to perpetuity is is quite a bit different, maybe than uh, oh, it's significantly different than what's being priced in. But I even mean the current business model, hundred million in growing. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. So part of why they don't really, well, yeah, th th I agree. Yeah, so see you saying that's part of why they don't need the Sony deal specifically. And 1% we're still, yep. But if they do, it's even bigger percentage-wise, tons more free cash flow. And this is the thing, to, to Rod's point, is like it, what's being priced in is, I agree with this, what's being priced in is zero. It's a terminal value of zero as it stands right now. And that's why I'm confused by this. <laughs> that's why the digital partnership is, big. even though we kind of felt like th these types of things, they've told us, they've warned us these were in the works and, uh, I mean, it hasn't been an opportunity to close, I suppose, but um, how do you tear this apart? If you're a heavy long-term bear, how do you tear this apart? How do you, you know what I mean? If, I, if we're playing devil's advocate, Rod, how do we tear this apart to get to support our long-term bear thesis based on secular decline? Isn't it deteriorating before our eyes? I have a hard time getting there. Either they think that we don't have, they have, uh, we don't have the right information here or drawing the, that's why it was important to get that clarified information from like yourself and, 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 and Justin. The specifics do matter. It's very important. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. So to sal okay, to Salaryman's point, says, but is that new stream enough to make up for a decline pre-owned? And it by itself, perhaps not, because right now the free cash flows I expect GameStop to be generating are quite a bit higher than 100 million, right? So this is what we've been saying. This would be a smaller business, but importantly, it's to perpetuity, right? So when you're valuing GameStop's free cash flows, looking at three, four years, you value them up. To, but 100 million, I don't want to say. To, I mean, can we say to perpetuity? And then it gets, you, you, they're starting to get closer. But importantly, that's why if there's other potential revenue streams, like what Wistink's getting at here, that uh, we can map new value drivers, plural, in concept to fully counter reduce Packard software sales, still to, to fully underwrite the valuation. And so I would say salary to that is like, number one is that, boy, if it were 100 million, if it were, and, and Rod's assumptions were correct, and it were for an extended period of time, and it's not just going to die in three or four years, like what like some people are claiming, even though I don't totally agree about physical this, and I think that's worth, that's, that's worth, that's fairly high when you try to value perpetuity like that, especially if it's growing. Um, but then if you can stack on these other revenue streams, right, seller man? Like if you stack on these other revenue streams and then you're getting to 100, getting to 100, even if these uh, assumptions aren't conservative enough, then you get to 100, get to 200 million, 300 million, and then they're growing. Then we still trade at a, a, a deep discount to what that is. And that's why I think it's very risky to, 
suppose number one that there wouldn't even be high margin longer term revenue streams but number two that there won't be any more because i think uh what happens if there are what does your terminal value look like and if it ain't zero well there's a problem here because if you combine a quite a, a higher terminal value with these free ca with current book value and also what i think the free cash will still generate Maybe I don't know. I, I wish I wish I wish some um, some folks would respond to stuff like like that. Some bearish folks and say and pick it apart. You know what I mean? Wish JG JG. That'd be nice. Seriously, I uh, having a tough time. It's not an insane starting point, right? Which is usually just toss something out as a not. Yep. Even with it, the company might be in the same state. Well, that's the thing. I think salary... Well, okay, I'll keep reading. Let me just get caught up. Okay, Dusty thinks it's low. And according to Dimitri, he thinks it's low too. I'm not so sure. It shows bears are trapped by Microsoft News and acting around. So, so that's possible, Daniel, right? I don't know enough, but if short interest is up and uh, if they're if people and they're, if the microsoft news caught them off guard i yeah me it's 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 conceivable i hear you i don't know enough about it but i'm thinking about that too or a newer larger storage version gets released oh shit. yeah so rod's saying that microsoft destroyed their hopes and dreams you know what i mean they they have they'd have to pick this apart somehow there, there need to be something there's something here they're disagreeing with right what is it gme becomes the disney of gaming calling it now wow see you huh happy friday night people 231 billion count it that is why you'd offer a small You'd offer a smaller partner not bringing this much to table. Yep. They fought back and have been trying to cover the hedge. I know. It's that simple. I know it might be, Rod. You know what I mean? That, that's kind of what's frustrating. I'm like, is it that simple? Is it that simple? And they just got the wrong narrative, and then they it kind of it was unexpected how it unfolded. I know. Uh, that, that, that's what I keep thinking. I'm like, no, it can't be. It's too simple. I don't know. I you know, but I feel like I'm overcomplicating it, which I do sometimes. <laughs> you don't tear it apart; you hide from it. <laughs> Simon has the point: they can't cut costs despite the short lease lives to deliver the cost model. Let me try to follow. That they can't cut costs despite the short lease lives to deliver the cost model. The cost model? I guess could claim only worth like a tenth of a percent. They disagree as a bull, but that's a prey. Bear. Just do that. <laughs> yes, so we talked about this before. Rod says the bear case has embedded a big mismanagement piece, in my opinion. On the other hand, Rod, like stuff like this. <laughs> It's almost like it becomes difficult to mismanage this once it's inked. <laughs> you know what I mean? I agree with you, though. I think what was priced in is uh, the business, the operating business itself, terminal value is zero. But also, in the meantime, this cash that they have and the free cash flow that they might generate, maybe they think they're not going to generate much free cash flow looking out 18 months. You know what I mean? That's what I mean. Like, well, when you, whatever. That they, they think they're going to drop the ball. They're going to mess it up. And that's just where I think, Rod and I, you, Rod, you and I agree here. We're like, oh, I think this is a mistake to think that this is like the past management team who really screwed up. And I know Fox has mentioned that too, kind of tied about, hey, these presentations look similar. But um, I'm not so sure about that. And um, maybe maybe there could we could be wrong there, right? But I think if that's, you know, if that's their rationale, right, that makes me feel better. Because I think uh, it's an okay thing to disagree about. I don't think that that's that's dumb or anything like that I'd be like oh management could mess this up because they could i've been i've been thinking about that the whole 12 months and they haven't so far they still could but i leaned i i don't i more than tilt but i think that they won't and that's what i think though like you, you ain't this deal how do you uh, how are you gonna mess it up here based on prior track record prior yep i think that's messing with people Past management teams, past price action. I think it's messing with people. Definitely, Rod. Oh, okay. 
hey, JG's agreeing with us. I feel like, J Rod, I think we just had a little bit of a, like, I, I'm, JG was sweating. I'm sweating a little bit. Good thing I get this. I'm glad we got to, we're on the same page there. I was, <laughs> hey, Simon Troy, what's up? Simon, what's up? Happy Friday. Put didn't adjust, adjust. But didn't adjust for new management. That's what I think. Yeah, I agree. I think it's clear where they weren't wrong. More clear. I know. I'm thinking that. Sorry, I'm tired. Yet. <laughs> they, <laughs> crushing it, JG. Crushing it. Don't understand why they stay. That's what I. That's what confuses me too. Why? Um. I. That's what I. Like you're saying about they. They. they they're staying wrong, and I'm like. Or are we wrong? You know what I mean? I, I think not. But yeah, that's what confuses me is it's okay to be wrong, but then to not reassess and maybe realize that's what's confusing me. I agree. It's, it's the it's the not only the level of uh, of the interest, but also that it's um, it's I mean, it's, it's increasing. You know what I mean? That's what I'm like, what? Am I missing something? I agree. Arthur, I agree with Arthur. Says I think the reasoning that helped them take it on, take on the position initially when Jimmy traded higher is now working against them. Management change, consoles arrived. And that's what I mean. Like I, I, I think it. I thought it was. It's breaking apart. You know what I mean? But it's rising. Interest is rising. That's right. So I. So I've been thinking about that. As Gat says, after Ryan Cohen, it may have been so fast they've realized too late. I was thinking about that. And then this, and this, look at it. So remember how we were saying how it's never sold off for all that long? It's only been a couple of days. And how I say too, so I've been thinking about this. So how I say track the price action, we got to see what happens, see if the move is validated because it might not be based on subsequent action. You know what I mean? And so even I myself could have been caught off guard on the opposite side. I wasn't as it turned out, but I like, sometimes I like to see stuff happen for a week. Um, and then it popped, and then it's at ten, and then it never really settled down. It like leveled off at ten. It's never really, it's never really let up. You know what I mean? So I, I, I see this. I, uh, it's never really let up. This is why I was thinking about, and I know who got saying this. And it's kind of happened somewhat fast. So for someone like me, I stop losses. You know what I mean? I would have implemented stop losses. To, to avoid to avoid that type of a thing or reassess you know just reassess that's what i mean like some of the some of the what's unfolding here and the news that's being released i'm like oh okay that now it's obvious that uh they're gonna make it to the consoles it's obvious that they're not going bankrupt it's obvious that there's their value add for vendors here they've been talking about it but now it's i mean uh, we need uh, that's what i say i want to see some more partnerships i do And that the terminal value isn't zero, unless we're wrong. <laughs> I don't understand. And then, but and that's just the fundamentals, right? Which is what's most important here. I'm glad we're focused on that. But then the technicals, the technicals and momentum and shit. Confusing. Major mismanagement of resources and poor executors of the bear case at this point. There may be a longer term thesis that they'll blow cash. Or, yeah. But bizarre. Ah, it's definitely, it's definitely, an, it's an integral part of any bear thesis that they're going to mess up. But it's not even just, a, I mean, it's that maybe that they're going to mess up, but also that even if they do a really good job, that they can't. You know what I mean? That, I think it's important not to forget that too, that even if they are all-stars, this is an all-star team, but that they can't establish a, a, a longer-term business model. That's why that Microsoft news is kind of big. Ah. <laughs> you know, right? Likewise, Rod. Likewise, how how long we spent analyzing? Oh, so salary man. So good point. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, wait. Tempted connection. Oh shit. I have all that. Okay. 
uh, trade some digital revenue for some game sales, glass half full or glass half empty. But my point being that the digital revenue um, is, persists. The physical game sales might not. That's the trade-off. That's why in, in, in potentially growing. Know what I mean? That's the, uh, that's the important trade-off because of the multiples that would be applied to that type of a, of, of that type of a revenue stream. They're vastly different, vastly different. Yes, Steve, uh, I would agree that it's possible this ship is pretty clean and scrubbed and maybe surprised to the upside in cash flow margin. Absolutely, I do. I do think that. That's what I thought they've been doing a good job, but no one cared for the past 18 months. They, and I, uh, I think Justin has mentioned this too. Like they, they could start crushing it. I, I, that's what I keep thinking. I think they're going to outperform. I think they're going to beat people's expectations because of the shit they've done for the past 18 months that wasn't particularly sexy. But they were doing what they got to do before these consoles. And I think now maybe the... Maybe the, the, the secular risks counter some of that, maybe, but I don't think so. I don't think so. I still think we see tremendous demand for physical, um, the, the physical, the, the, the main consoles and the physical discs. I still think there's tremendous demand here in late 2020 for that stuff. And so I don't think that the deterioration is, is, is happened as rapidly as people might have been fearing. And I think that the moves they've made in these cuts, uh, I think there's a good chance they surprise to the up. I don't know what expectations are right now, but I just think, uh, I, I'm not going to be surprised by big beats or big or even big free cash flow, big earnings per share. I'm on this. I'm in this camp because I think that there was a lot of the improving inventory turns and cutting costs, closing stores. Again, uh, when it's all been broken apart over the past 12 months, everyone's like, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Whatever. Who cares? Whatever. Because it's not that sexy. No one cares. No, because the secular risks are an overhang, right? And now they're getting to this point where they get into this shit, right? the sexy stuff and they put this whole time they've done all this and they're ready to go so i i'm, I'm on the, i'm in this camp steve and uh i can definitely believe oh yeah i don't know who negotiated them it sounded like they laid off corporate yep Cut, cutting costs Lee scott yeah 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 some of us think the agreement was inked a long time ago yeah we talked about that on the last stream when when was it inked or in then in dimitri's article sony's already inked i don't know <laughs> that's what he says and remember, and like we said, there's a literal quote in here that they've been testing these partnerships, these digital revenue sharing partnerships since December of last year. So that's not current management. Oh, yeah, but I don't think that it was inked with the previous management. I wouldn't agree with that. Yeah, I don't know. So, so, oh, so who was this, Steve or Sally? Sounded like they laid off. Oh, yeah, I'm not on board with this salary. So you think, I can definitely believe Shane Kim negotiated? No, that, too, that's too much time has passed. Too much time has passed. Uh, did, maybe the, the dis discussions had been had, but I don't think so. Or at least got it started. Eh, maybe. Okay, you, you qualified that. The agreement in this is part of management's plan, perhaps. Yep. <laughs> Reggie, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, so it sees that. Are the Bears betting on the new board mismanaging, or are they betting against Blanks of being able to deliver new consoles with no major pushbacks? No, nah, probably not the latter, CU. I, I, real Bear Thesis couldn't bet on a, a delay in the timing of the consoles or anything like that. It would be the former mismanagement and secular risks and so forth. <laughs> yeah, the Phoenix Rising. <laughs> I agree, Steve. So many ways it can go. It, 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 buy back more news. I get there's there's so much. <sighs> I agree, Steve. That's what's perplexing. Only shorts, no briefs. <laughs> what time is it? Oh, it's it's the next day. Who? I mean, when? You can... Oh, we need. We got a new one. New thing. Um, Simon said, but their motto was only short, never brief. Sounds like Roaring Kitty's next movie poster. Which one? Oh, what is it? We got one? The Jean Grey becomes Phoenix in that X-Men movie. Which X-Men movie? When Jean Grey becomes Phoenix. Okay.
I'm always, I'm always, I'm always on the hunt for ideas. Steve Mazzini was that, was that first uh, Avengers one. That was his idea. And now it's kind of planted the seed for some other ones, huh, Steve? If you've seen them, you've got some other ones out there. What? I feel behind. When it comes to reasoning, identity trumps truth. Words of wisdom, Arthur, huh? When it comes to reasoning, identity trumps truth. Hmm. I like that. Is that a famous quote? I like it. It's good. When it comes to reasoning. Cheers to that, Arthur. Cheers to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree, Steve. Those the larger funds, they can just they can just live here for a while. Hey, GameStop Ray. Happy Friday. Or happy Saturday. Depending on where you are. Physical friend says boxes, not briefs. Small smells. Okay, let me get caught up. Winter cover and summer income. Oh, yeah, okay, so part of the tough run-up is a new management team. Okay, bottom round one. Yep, 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 bonds are pricing in bankruptcy. I do remember seeing that shit. We talked about that earlier today, didn't we? New CEO return ran up the stand seven. He didn't even write. Market action with Jimmy is very strange. Hmm. Jimmy, fun to consider. Tough did similar things to Jimmy, like restructure did. Yep. Bonds ain't. Yeah, I mean, it's inked. Is it mean? Is it worth? Is, is it a big enough partnership? Is it the same as the what's inked? You know what I mean? I, I don't disagree with you, Rod, but I'm like, what is it comprised of? Oh yeah, so CU kind of says that. I don't think it has to do directly with the consoles. I think they'd have announced. Yeah, I mean, I don't know why. If there is one, why they wouldn't have. But um, <laughs> Steve. So this is what it's like when Roy Kitty gets fired out of the chat. Usually I listen the next day, so I always laugh when people are getting at <laughs> Oh, Steve, experience it in first hand. Oh, shit. Oh, Steve, I, I'm liking Discovery. I'm liking, I meant, to, I should mention this while you're here. I didn't, I didn't add it to the Roy Kitty board all, but I feel like I might. And I, I tell you what, I do it. I do it on you tossing it out. It's the only thing is like, um, it's kind of a big market cap, right? I don't know how the upside is somewhat limited in my mind, but I feel like it's a I feel it's like it's pretty confident in the double, uh, no no time frame. So I'll probably I'm thinking, and I only did it based on you, based on the Malone there, and then those free cash flows. It's obviously trading cheap, right? It's just a question of how sustainable those revenues, but especially if they can grow. But I'm like, man, that's good enough for me. But uh, oh, I, I probably still have it. Do I still have it up? No, I probably closed out. Should mention that. But I'm like, damn, these numbers look like it's 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 obviously cheap, but but I just go for those deep value stocks. You know what I mean? Uh, maybe uh, maybe a small position get, just to get it in the portfolio. We're on kitty portfolio. Oh, okay. The third one. I, I only think there's one X-Men. with. Okay, only one X-Men with Phoenix. Okay. So I, I agree with this. See, uh, Ron, uh, I agree. There's a massive amount of um, uh, of retail investors. I so GameStop is a household name. That's what I I keep coming at this from a risk perspective. See, you that GameStop is a household name. I mean, and there's heavy short interest. It gets people talk about that stuff. Michael Barry's involved. People talk about that. Reggie's involved. They know video gamers know Reggie. They love Reggie. 
and um and like now the chart's looking good like people talk about this stuff so i agree with you see i always thought that from a risk standpoint if if you're like short or something that you need to pay heed to this given what has kind of unfolded in the market like you've seen shit gone i've, I've seen these characteristics kind of catch people's attention before so i'm with you on that front see you Yo, yeah, well, Steve, you like you like the the movie bars? Thank you, I appreciate that. Vegas twenty twenty one. Yeah, I mean, if this thing's cranks, right, Rod? I mean, if this thing cranks, forget about it. As much ignorance as I think we may have as much ignorance as sheer pure conviction out there, maybe. Must have been in the room, so I don't remember the other. Seeing Ryan Cohen and Michael Berry on a movie poster is amazing. <laughs> oh, thanks, Steve. I mean, they're ridiculous, right? Well, we gotta have some fun for, while we're while we're along for this ride, right? Next two gotta be your favorite. Yep. Are we getting the GME? Yeah, GME tattoo. <laughs> Yeah, you get to see Barry's portfolio too. I know, yeah. Well, let's see. I know, so Rod asking about Monday, right? Usually I don't care, but uh, now I'm like, oh, let me just try to pick up, to kind of read what's out there this weekend, kind of what people are talking about, like I did last week. What did it do on Monday? Did it do anything on Monday? And uh, just a little bit, I guess. Not much. Right? I mean, this daily stuff, right? It's just when you're doing these short-term predictions, this is the type of stuff you look at because this is what suits people's people. Sorry. So I would have to say I tilt bullish rod, but that is very, that's like like 51% uh, sure. <laughs> he is? Barry's in discount rate? Wow. Oh, a call. Yeah, he, I think, yeah, for a call. Okay. Wait, for a call, right? Is there more? Let me see. Oh, shit. Oh. I'm in. See, for a play like this, for a play like this, this is good enough for me. And, and if, now, if I wanted to go super heavy, I'd have to dig in, but this is definitely, and that's the thing, it's just kind of big, but I'm not totally opposed to, uh, to the big ones like i don't i have uh western digital is always a just like it is for bari but like I, i'll deal in western digital i've dealt in this many times over the past 10 years it's been big winners for me and uh so like like a name like this like when it gets to a certain price it's just a it's just an automatic buy for me and um that's the thing if you track and have a long-term track record you, like some of these just automatic buys automatic sells like you don't even have to think about it much a stock like discovery is one that i would put in this haven't followed it too closely but i've already liked what i've seen so far and uh, that's good enough for me. I, I did miss or forgot that Bari was in it. Thanks for the reminder, Steve. I got it up. You see what I mean? Like, where, where's this earnings? Like, it's trading at, uh, it was like uh, almost four bucks in earnings in 2019 and 2020. <laughs> Oh, she's trailing to. Oh, yeah, no, fiscal year. Oh, fiscal year. Wait, these numbers look off. What, what, what's going on? Oh, I got to do something. Something's up. Something's up. Oh, oh okay. I got to fix something. What is this? D6? D6? There we go. Sometimes the 
where I get the data, they change some of their labels sometimes. I go, there we go, that's much better, that's much better. Okay, so not quite as cheap. That was just because I was factoring on some quarters. So three bucks, look at that, three bucks last year, through last year, two bucks this year on 20 bucks. Malone's in, Bari's in, Mazzini's in. Solid revenues, right? Off a little bit, I like. I mean, I kind of like that from an opportunity perspective. Simple free cash flow, I assume, is just on par. Yep, yep, yep. And these are adjusted for uh, unadjusted. You're up to like maybe four or five bucks. Oh yeah, I'm, I, I like this. Was this a dividend or something? Is that messed up because of that? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I like it for a double. Uh, but no time frame, you know what I mean? That's why it's not like, uh, it doesn't seem like a... Gross margin's kind of improving. Oh, it's improving. I was looking at the, this decline, looking out this far. What's the average doing? All right, kind of stabilizing a bit. Book value in this case might be a little bit meaningful. Leverage though. I don't think that's, I think that's a different discovery. Oh, got it. Oh, so I see it's leverage, right? Look at these. Look at these premiums. Trading on 135. Look, I mean, it's leveraged, but not scary leveraged. Plus, it's $10 million market cap. It's really going to be an issue for a company like this. It's really just a question of whether they can execute. And then you see, and I don't know, I mean, I, I uh, in some, in management you trust or in Malone you trust in this case, you know what I mean? I don't have any experience with, uh, how do they actually de describe their business? Media company, just a media company, U.S. networks, I mean, it's just network, just a network company, okay. I didn't know if they did something else. I mean, and, and I know these channels, right? I mean, I watch these channels. Ooh. HGT, they own these channels? Animal Planet, Food Network, HGTV? They own, they, Steve, do they own all those these channels outright? Are these theirs? Holy hell.
see anything? You see me? Am I back? <laughs> I don't see me. If you see me, let me know. I see the screen spinning still. I, I just tried to mix it up. I tried to click a different scene just to see if I could go. Am I back? Am I talking to you? I'm back? I'm not really back, am I? I am? Holy shit. Wait a second. If I'm back, what am I doing right now? What am I doing? Damn. Whoa. Okay. I, th I was thinking maybe... I was thinking because I kept on talking. I kept on talking last time. I thought maybe you were seeing me like delayed like 20 minutes or something. How the heck? I can't see me. I'm spinning on the screen right now. I'm uh, like I, I, I see me looking at the Yahoo page for. Uh, oh, I can't believe I'm back. So my um, what I, I'm back. I know. Look at that. What I what I just tried to do. I have no idea what's going on. It says Excel connection, but I just tossed in the different scene, the kitty video, just to mix it up. I'm like, I gotta do something here just to mess with the stream, you know what I mean? Apparently that worked. Whoa, that's weird, huh? I know. I like I like y'all talking about the conspiracy theories. <laughs> I'm like, yo, did someone say something? I'm like, did did we did someone piss off like this? Talk about the YouTube, or I'm like, oh damn, what's going? And then I'm like, is this a new uh, new record for the length? Maybe you can only stream for a certain length of time, and then YouTube kicks you out. I'm like, I didn't think that was the case. Anyway, so, <laughs> as I said in the chat, <laughs> but I <coughs> I started doing I I started doing the, the research of discovery, and then I did it for like two minutes. I wasn't paying attention. And then I'm like, anyway, the the the, sh my sh the short takeaway, Steve, was like, uh, I think I'll probably add it to the portfolio. There's a lot of stuff that I like. And then, uh, then I look back, and then everyone was gone. I'm like, damn, I really just bored the shit out of everybody. <laughs> I'm like, damn. I'm like, oh, shit, no one cares about Discovery. They don't care about that Food Network. What else was that? I closed everything out now. And I was dying laughing. Oh, man, that's funny. Oh, shit, I probably missed some chat here. Oh, damn, that's funny. We said, well, back up to 23. Though. I saw it get down to like 8, 9, huh? I wonder if, uh, if there's alerts or something like that. We're... Damn, yeah, it's so weird. I wonder what happened. Let me get this back up here. And then I was talking, then I was answering, so let me just... Let me just... <laughs> Did I miss anyone's comments there? Uh, similarity console. Okay, talk about similarity consoles and y'all. Yep. Our styles are really similar, so I thought, yeah, it's a little bit big. So yeah, I saw you start wasn't a great uh, Vic write up on Disca just came out for member. Okay. I'm getting the Reggie tweet framed. Oh, what's that one? Similar dynamics to GME where it's unlocked. Oh yeah, where it's unlocked. It looks like that way, Steve. That's good enough for me. I. I like if I don't know how much you saw on um, I was talking about it, but it looks like a, I feel uh, it looks like a double. I feel pretty confident about that. Just on my quick take on those fundamentals. I mean, now I'm talking to you, Rod. You, I mean, uh, excuse me. Uh, you said that like you said that like ten minutes ago. You know what I mean? Okay, All right, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna keep going. I just wanted to see those other comments and. Uh, it must have been those spreadsheets that I opened. It slowed stuff down. Oh, shit. I was way behind. Oh, shit. What am I doing over here trying to do? Who's trying to do research at this late hour, huh? What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Oh, damn. I was way behind. Oh, shit.
Big partners with the cable company. Oh, okay. Great management team. Lots of history with those guys. Big partners with the cable company. Six, six, six. JG, WDC is a classic box trade. Easy money. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I agree with you there, JG. I agree with that. I love that stock. Um, that's why I want G me to get into a more PC gaming. Yeah, we have own their content. Own their content and not trying to go head to head with scripted content. So hopefully they are like, yeah, I like that. This is Steve. Uh, this is my. This is it. This this is the full analysis. Right? It sounds crazy, but I mean, I suppose if I really wanted to go into it heavy, I'd probably do some more research. But I, uh, honestly, with a, a ten billion dollar size company, I uh, my research is very, very. I mean, it's embarrassingly simple. <laughs> I uh, people <laughs> people got to see right through my analysis. It's like super simple. Like what you've just said, what I just saw. I don't, and again, I don't know if what I the research that I was doing got telegraphed through, but um, it's real simple. And I. I just my quick take is I like it for a double. I um, not a recommendation for everyone, right? Just educational, but that was my analysis. How did people not pick up WC? They're one of the largest jobs. Yeah, it, it it it's in favor and then it's out of favor. It's a classic. It's I just you just ride the wave. Number one content and content for women in a bunch of niche spaces. Good strategy. I like it. This is I like this, and I'm not an expert on this area. Have a means to play a blue rule. Do you play an if so? Do you primarily use it? Buy Mac with the SEO. Maybe this will get this be my second article so I can get you thinking past the double. Oh shit, really? All right. Yeah. That's my quick right. I didn't dig in deep. I'm just looking at the fundamentals. I think, all right, I like this. And then there's always triple potential. I, I, much more than that, it would need to grow. If it gets growing again, like at, at a pretty solid clip, then, I mean, then this is a, it looks like compounder potential, right, Steve? I mean, uh, again, I'm 15 minutes behind here. <laughs> I'm talking to you like we're right up to speed. I just saw a whole bunch of comments. I just... Uh, hey, Dr. Zellis, Miles. Hey, cheers, Miles. Welcome to the stream. I apologize for your initial experience with the <laughs> It's feel like as soon as you got on it, it broke. The stream broke. I've seen your comments on uh, Seeking Off, though. They have deck long-term debt. Yep, high, it looks like uh, Malone is genius in that way. He is, yep. Yeah. Only is Blu-ray, high miles, bless you. They own all their content. Well, okay, so you did see. Maybe you did see me doing that. Yeah, okay. Now we clarify. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They are launching direct to consumer and are not distributing to others, so they have untapped potential. They are also global. All right, I like this. I didn't look to see if there were any Seeking Alpha articles out there already, Steve. Maybe there are. Uh, you would know. I haven't looked yet. Yeah. Original creator of Discover Channel left to make a streaming service called Curiosity Stream. Oh, okay. Okay, and then the stream crashed. Okay, my bad. Okay. My, my wife cut off the internet. <laughs> Jesus, she's almost certainly asleep by now. Maybe she's tuning in. Hi, honey. <laughs> I mean, it's going to be funny if she just pops in and she starts talking in the chat, right? I mean, I'm going to die of laughing if she does. Shit. Complacency amidst asymmetry. Working title for the GME case study. Ronald. So <laughs> the bear said me again. <laughs> Oh, was a gr oh, you saw a green screen. Okay. Damn, what the hell was that? Hope the streams didn't get him. Beep, boop, 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 boop. Imagine if I came back and I was just doing beep, bopping, boop, bopping, booping, beeping all over the place. Bari had my internet throttled. <laughs> So we didn't analyze one of his investments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The discovery investment. Then my damn, my daughter just tried to digital. Well, she better be asleep. Know what I mean? Crash landed. Great to you as always. Cheers, insurance. Cheers. You're probably gone now, but. Uh... Oh, 
Oh, I could have streamed from my phone. I don't know if I have that set up. Revolt against 100%. Oh, so, so we were down to seven. So this is like the GameStop stock. You know what I mean? We got down to like four, five, six, and then <laughs> right back up. There you go. Six, six, six. tried to join wanted to give a live address <laughs> it's like like uh like a v frendetta where he takes over the stream you imagine he's like <laughs> and then barry just starts talking you ever see that um remember that um oh it's like that famous what do you even call it it was like a prank where they took over cbs or something it was like he was wearing a crazy mask and a crazy voice or something it's like called something like a famous prank and no one ever figured out like how that happened oh that's probably too obscure i don't know if anyone knows that maybe someone will Oh, talking about the potential piece? Okay. Hey, blessed. <laughs> Welcome, blessed. <laughs> Happy Friday. Oh, cheers, cheers, Miles. Yeah, welcome, welcome. Oh, great to have you, great to have you. I've seen some of your comments on Seeking Alpha. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm always liking them. Happy to have you. He's way behind. Where did he go? Did he go back? I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. I think I'm back. I just wanted to, I, I missed some of the, I was looking for, I was at, while I was doing the discovery research, I was asking, <laughs> I was asking Mazzini for some, uh, for some, some of the thoughts on it as I was going. I wanted to go see his answers. Then I was like, ah, oh, just keep on scrolling, just see. Okay. Whew. Oh, you got it. Oh, oh, there you go. Thank you, JG. Is that it? No, that's not it, is it? No, that's not what I'm thinking of. Chuck Swirsky? Oh, the Max Headroom. Thank you. Yes, the Max Headroom. That's it. Google the Max Headroom incident. Yes, thank you. That's exactly what it was. That's what I was thinking of. Maybe Max is trying to take over the stream. <laughs> oh, shit. Um, see, we'll hear the chat. Well, yeah, well, you actually just answered. Did, I don't know if you, did you see me, hear my ask my questions? Cause I, I just kind of, I just closed everything now. I'm, I'm almost afraid to reopen them, Steve. Maybe, uh, but I did on the fundamentals, like the, everything was looking good. I saw the revenues, they were still growing. Uh, I'm learning some free cash flow bases. It looks like they might be generating three to five dollars in free cash flow. Uh, but then in the then they're leveraged and stuff. But they, what else was it? What else? The gross margin has been increasing the past couple of years, and book value might be okay for a company like this. I see it's trading right at book value, but um, and it's been growing though. And then what else did I pick up on? Um, and, but then the, the leverage, right? But I, then I, I don't know if you saw, but I pulled up the bonds on Finra, and they're all trading significantly above par. So leverage isn't really a concern for me, even though it's heav heavily leveraged. Um, so then it's just like a matter of execution. But if you got um, um, Malone, Bari, and like yourself tossing it out here being like, and then I just saw, I just pulled up the content. You saw me do that. I saw that's where it froze on me. Just seeing those channels, I, those channel, I, I can see the value of those types of channels. It's not necessarily, like I said, sexy, like HBO or something, but I like that type of an angle. And then the chart looks good. That's good enough for me. It's like embarrassingly simple uh, how I think. Uh, so that's the thing. So I usually, so I'll see like a double, right? And if, I, if I'm looking to deploy the capital, 
then I'll, I'll put it in, right? But then if I'm like getting interested in it, maybe I'll dig deeper. And like you said, it's it's more than a two bag, right? Then I'll try to dig and see, could this be a three bagger? Could this be a four bagger? But I usually get that first position just to get in. Um, but yeah. Most of it is out there. I haven't seen good seeking alpha girls. I saw, oh, I did see some of that Malone CNBC interview that you're talking about. I didn't watch the whole thing yet, but I, I watched like the first couple minutes. I was very impressed with him talking about that stuff. And I did see him talking about how like Netflix would succeed, Disney would succeed. Then I followed the public presentations. I was just kidding about getting you to see the three to five X, but is one of the few companies I could write about. Yeah, no, I still like what I I mean, that's the thing. I, what I would also do is, to, is back out and look at the space, look at all the other companies. What did I, What was it again? Like I'll pull up and go through the whole industry and look at just all their charts and see how that stacks up against it. Um, just for a quick take, a quick assessment, take the pulse. Asymm you think it's an asymmetrical opportunity, Steve? Yeah, write that article. You think If you're thinking it's much more than a two-bag, I'd be curious about that. Again, Malone, I, and Malone was buying at 50% at 50 higher. Oh, I did see that, JG. You said it was a, a good uh, Vic article. on. Uh, just came. I, I hadn't seen that, no. I know GMA. See you going at the blockchain again. But the direct to consumer is the near term catalyst. Sometime the direct to consumer is the near sometime next year. Okay. Then use a specific phrase. Compelling. <laughs> Can I try to open it up? Um, was there anything else that stood out to me? Oh, I did see operating cash flow was increasing too. Uh, operating cash flow margin. Like the, I, I, the rolling 12 months, I'm seeing 24%, 27%. Okay. Glad you're okay and you battled the shorts in the matrix. We have a new kitty here. In front of us. Cheers, Steve. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Have a nice weekend. Have a nice weekend. Great having you on. Thanks for sharing your thoughts on uh, Discovery too. Help me just quickly do my analysis in two minutes. You know what I mean? You'd look at the M&A they did. Ah, okay. Yeah, I haven't. Obviously, I haven't seen the M&A. Okay. Uh, but I, like I see it, it, it shows right here. So t t is there a big, what was the big acquisition in 2018? I see it right here. In fact, it's the only acquisition I see besides maybe 2013. I'll look. I'll look. But that's, I, I can see it right there. I always get the name wrong. Boom. 1345. 1345 per share. Express. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. They get the the spelling bee there. Express scripts. Prescriptions. Uh, okay. I think I know what you're talking. About. Something like that. Okay. I'll look into it. Thank you. I'll look into it. You're rolling. Script something. Oh yeah yeah yeah. It's the um. Yeah, script the, the Scripps National Spelling Bee and all that shit. Scripps E W Scripps Company. Got it. E W Scripps Company. Thank you, Steve. Yeah, E W Scripps. There you go. They own food. Oh, so they oh they're the ones who own. Oh, I like those were two of the ones that stood out to me when I was going through the Yahoo profile. E W Scripps had other non scripted. Okay. So non-scripted, hey, hey, Steve, could you talk to uh, Malone, see if we get the Roaring Kitty stream? Is Discovery interested in the Roaring Kitty stream? If this is this is non-scripted, you 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 probably wouldn't, you probably find this hard to believe, but the Roaring Kitty stream is uh, non-scripted. There's no script here. I know it kind of looks like it, but uh, you have to take my word for it. So if you could reach out to Malone, Steve Mazzini, and just maybe get the get the dialogue going, let's just see what happens. We'll get on it. Okay, thank you.
<laughs> to, and just connect us with Bari, right? Because we're connected via Bari and GameStop. Malone will he'll get it. He'll understand. Movie poster equals high quality. <laughs> You're in the Matrix now. They'll be reaching out. Yeah. But before that, I, I wasn't. But now I am after you saw that, that glitch. Is there a glitch in the Matrix? Oh, shit. It's a, okay. Longest stream. It's the longest stream. There you go. Six hours. Do we just keep going at this point? Right? T till tomorrow? Should we just go till Monday? We can, we can, we can, in real time, analyze the sentiment that we're seeing this weekend and talk about it, right? I was all green. All right. Later, Steve. Have a nice weekend. <laughs> Great chatting with you. Power to the players. In, done, battery, something. Did he clarify? I've given my final hint. <laughs> Are you still dropping hints on what you wrote? <laughs> oh, William, this is a riot. Is there a hint? GME comes out with the EV. GME EV. So we've been joking about that, William. People on the stream have been talking. <laughs> Where's Hugo? Is Hugo gone? Uh, where uh, GME has some sort of EV. <laughs> I mean, this is ridiculous. Word by word? Close read it and think big, and there you go. Close read. Two things are about to happen. One of those things will affect the next balance sheet. This was the comment I think he's talking about. <laughs> what the hell's going on huh where's this last hint i have given my final hint i hope y'all put it together gme comes out with the ev i don't mention tesla gme comes out with the ev <laughs> think of every word and how something and how something like the word can bring a positive to the optics. Okay. He's talking about, okay. But not EV. Probably not EV. But, I mean, isn't, it, isn't, it, isn't it crypto? That's what we talk about, right? Is it, weren't we talking about how GME might be able to leverage some sort of... And CU was talking about that earlier today. That's what I was thinking. GME comes out with an EV. Too late for this shit. <laughs> Let B be better. <laughs> GME comes out. Okay, I'm just going to say GME comes out with something. And then you said EV. Invest in hot electric vehicle. I mean, but you don't mean that, right? I don't know. Seems like one of those one of those riddle type things. You know what I mean? It's like right staring you right in the face, William, huh? You know what I mean? This is like an hour. This is like an hour two riddle, William. <laughs> it's like I, it's, <laughs> I don't know about hour six or hour seven. Hour seven? Oh shit. I know Tesla Arcade is already a thing. Now I'm just confused. Alright, alright, that makes all of us. I mean now you got us interested in this Thursday article. No doubt about that. You can also pre order a game. E V has ability to play, I think. What? You can also pre-order a game. The EV has ability to play. Is this like... 
EV, VR. <laughs> oh man. Wait, did we say it's not gonna impact? I mean, uh, I mean, it's expect value gambling. Mario Kart. Oh. Oh. Oh, I like that. Yeah, related to Mario Kart, maybe. The EV has ability to play. I think. Oh, okay. Okay. Because you might be. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we can stop guessing, William. We just, we thought you, I thought you wanted us to guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll keep an eye out for it. Is, wait, uh, William. Electric Man. Is GameStop mentioned, is it about GameStop? This is my one question. Is it about GameStop? Is, like, the article about GameStop? And if not, is GameStop mentioned in it? That's all. Like, because we'll, we'll, my question: Will we? Are we going to come across it organically? That's my question. Yes. Okay. 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 I should have just asked one question at a time. Okay. So maybe it's. Let me. Can I ask? I screwed up the question. Is the article about GameStop? <laughs> yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. We'll come across it. Right? You, we're going to see it coming. You, you, you do the, the dollar sign GME, Twitter. We'll come across that shit, right? There's only so many articles that get... There's only so many, like, bullish articles that get, that get published by, like, uh, media outside of Seeking Alpha or something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, guessing the price. Uh, it's a surprise for... So please don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is exciting, huh? Someone on the stream writing an article about a company we're talking about here? This is dope. Now I'm kind of, I'm excited to see it. Congra First of all, congrats, William, huh? Congratulations, even though we haven't, um, haven't seen it yet, but, um, <laughs> yeah. Been here since seven people, no reason to leave. <laughs> oh, damn, I know. Oh, Oh, Miles, Miles, Miles. Welcome to the welcome to the GME chat. <laughs> you better read quick. You better read quick, Miles. Oh, boy. Oh, shit. <laughs> you ain't seen shit yet. <laughs> well, no, that's not true. We did just see a whole bunch. All right, that's pretty good. Oh, dude. Miles, congrats. Oh, no, Miles, I was making a joke, by the way. I, I can never keep up. I never keep up with the chat, and by the time I get to, like, read in the comments, there's nothing there. <laughs> by the time I get there, it, it, there's nothing left. So, uh, and I, I have to learn my lesson where I got to try to keep up, but I still can't do it. Ooh, two bottles of wine. Cheers to Miles, huh? Crushing it. After someone's wedding? Sick. Post a post um post wedding that's a that, that's a when it's that when you're just like getting after it at a wedding you know what I mean just having a good time if you have fun if if it's like people you like and stuff people like good your friends I mean I mean your friends having a good time and uh, it's always a fun night how long is it right up I will answer best I can been here since the start okay Gats you out I think I'm out for we'll be rolling soon we'll be rolling soon. Later, Gats. Have a nice weekend. Have a nice weekend. Cheers, cheers, cheers. The GME SPAC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any more?
more questions. Oh, we're still okay. I'm gonna finish that up. What's this one? That's that. That's that. I don't want to read that. Oh no, my cigar. Oh no. My cigar butt. Don't <laughs> you like it? Yeah. Rod, you out too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I will we'll get bumped. We already, we've already broken the record. We got the record. We 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 did it tonight. We we almost didn't. We, it was real close. It got real close. Got extended validation. Monday will be upon us soon enough. Everyone, catch up on your sleep. Now we've kind of ruined it. Going going to bed. So go well wherever y'all from, right? So don't watch the price action this weekend. But let's see what happens Monday. Do you know what I mean? I'll probably post some. I'll probably post some shit this weekend post some of this stuff you know what i mean i mean this chart looks like too too compelling you know maybe i'll post an update to the one that i posted up last last weekend with just the updated graphics and stuff like it just even looks more bullish than the last one i posted you know what i mean oh yeah yeah yeah. i'll do yeah i'll, re I'll retweet it i'll probably uh if i don't do it tonight if i don't maybe i'll do it tonight maybe it makes sense to do it tomorrow Let me make a note of that. Hey, uh, Rod, no one responded to the la uh, No one responded to the uh, the other one. You know what I mean? Like I was hoping, like people would like even disagree with some of these. No one really chimed in. Um, that's the thing. Like uh, his model of the Microsoft. In the, the Microsoft partnership, GameStop Microsoft partnership, how, how uh, the, the financial benefits to GameStop, and then he's got a new model that I'll, I'll retweet it tomorrow. But um, it's on his oh, it's on his Twitter. If you look up his Twitter, um, but just putting some numbers to it, you know what I mean? Like just tossing something out and hoping people disagree with it just so we can pick it apart. Just posting a range, yeah. Like we even know where there's certain areas where people could disagree, and then Rod's like, "Yeah, well, even if it's at one percent, you're still at ten, twenty, thirty million, and that that's what we're trying to get at. Like even that is kind of like kind of breaks certain elements of that longer term bear thesis. Where I'm just like, ah, okay, but then, yeah, not not enough people talking out about it. You know what I mean? Whatever. We'll try again tomorrow with that one. Try to get engagement from some of the bigger observers. Yeah, absolutely. I think no one's penciling through it. I, I don't think anyone's penciling through it. You know what I mean? I, which is too, which is whatever for us. It's it's like supporting that breaking of the longer term bear thesis, but no, no one else is. No, I just post. I've looked at that in some detail. Rod and I chatted it last week. Oh, okay. You already saw it. Okay. Saying 100 million margin. Oh, yeah, pull it up. I got it. Hundred million of margin by um, ten dollars per year off ten million of fifty million market. Fifty million more consoles. Twenty percent of that goes to GameStop. Assuming three to five percent. Oh, this was posted. Oh, I didn't see this. Oh, is he tw is he tweeting is he tweeting this one? Is it four three eight? Oh yeah, okay. Annually at that point, right? No depletion curves, just simple. How could GME not have reported it if yeah if material? That's what I mean. Maybe it's not material. Are we talk are you talking about? Uh, I mean, I, I, I don't think you have to, I, 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 I guess I question the material nature of it, right? You know what I mean? That uh, could just be a different type of a partnership. Also, when was the, well, I don't know. They were said they were, te uh, Ted, they said they were testing this. Um, they said they were testing these revenue sharing concepts starting in late 2019. Now, maybe because it's testing that that's not as meaningful, but I think some of this stuff has been in motion already. 
Um, but as far as like a Sony, but now we've now announced Microsoft, so I don't know about, I don't know. I look, I think it's three year plus. Oh, there you go, see you. Oh, is that what William's talking about? Tesla? Playing the video game? It can't be, can it? Because he said he didn't mention Tesla. Elon has nothing to do with it. I'll squash that, okay. And the reason this is relevant, he says, by end of 2024 is because we're, we've been discussed by saying that the longer-term bear thesis is still intact, um, by just saying that terminal value isn't zero kind of um, hurts, uh, I don't know, maybe breaks is too strong, but Puts a damper on it. <laughs> Games are open ending. Dramatically alter everything that's sterile. Oh. Escape is it escape velocity? Which can be downloaded. You'll see it. <laughs> Will you? <laughs> well, we're going to find that thing. We're going to find that thing. It's the internet. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fine. Okay. All right. Congrats, everybody. Cheers to everybody. I somehow kept this little... I somehow kept... A good thing I had a second one today, huh? Uh, Help me power through. That's my spinach. Ooh, nothing left, is there? No, that's everything. EV to grid. Um, all right, well, everyone have a nice weekend. Catch up on our sleep like we always try to do. And then uh, we'll watch the price action Monday. Who knows? Yeah, it auto-deleted. That was a weird one, huh? It auto-deleted. Good night. Oh, insurance was still here. Cheers, 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 insurance. You have a nice night. Have a good weekend. Have a good weekend. We have it's been a weird stream, William. Uh, there's weird stuff happening tonight. Uh, we, uh, uh, Dusty, you have a great weekend too. For uh, I'm still I'm still spinning on my stream here. I can't believe that this is still going. So definitely a weird. Oh, where it's. Oh, it still says. Oh, six hours and twenty minutes. There you go. Damn. Um. We still got two. <laughs> Hey William, we still got two more streams to try to guess. We try to guess what this article is about. Cheers, Arthur. Have a nice weekend. Have a nice weekend. Nice having you on. I agree with the. Oh, I like that quote that you said too. Okay. All right, everybody. Have a nice week. Oh, let me get this queued up. Let me get this queued up. Am I doing that one? Let me do a different one. Okay, I'll do this one. All right, have a nice weekend, everybody. Peace.